Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm looking for a brush. Um, for which one? Um, to see if maybe it's over here. No, no. No? A round, soft, a very old, round, soft, natural hair one that I have. Uh huh. And I um, don't we're, know where it is, but it's. Uh, is it maybe. Was, not right here. Were you cleaning it? No, we're good. We're good. Okay. I think we're good. I think we are. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, good. My voice has entered the chat. Yeah. Um, how are you? I'm good. Good? How Everything are you? good? Everything really good. How are oh, you? Oh, I'm very happy. Uh, good, happy that we could um we could do the um the shipping of seven pieces. Yes. That were uh, a little backed uh up. Yes. Uh I'm happy that we were able to get that um sort it out yeah so so yeah i'm happy me happy too. about that me too me too yes uh, a little bit cold or today cold? not not a good day yeah i had to put i, I was on a t-shirt was wearing a t-shirt but now i'm wearing like a a hoodie because yeah it's a little colder yeah it is so it daniel is. era coke hero daniel liar coke Daniel Liar. Well, I don't Lita. like that. No, I'm tra I'm translating Lita into liar, like the uh, instrument. Liar. Not, not that you're a liar. You're anything but a liar. I'm a say. terrible liar. So you are, yeah, because well, because you have like a um, good moral, um, like fundamentals, um, but also because you're a horrible liar, <laughs> you don't lie. Yeah. You, no, you but just... I was going to say that I know a lot of people that don't lie, but if they had to, mm. they're like super good liars. Oh, yes. I am a terrible liar. Yeah. Um, si yes. Un poquito, Perfect. Um, yeah, you're terrible. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So we're going we're gonna to try and paint this today. I have a feeling that tomorrow we'll do second session on this. Oh. Yeah. I mean, not retouching things that I've already painted. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe we can leave that open. Um, but more so... Mm, more so, I just think that there's a ton of things that... Um, that are a little too complex to, to um, solve. I mean, at least for me. In, in just one session today. Mm -hmm. So... Or in one session, you know, of the ones that we usually do. Yes. So what I'm going to try to do today is some of this. There's going to be some uh, changes of the drawing mm -hmm. because I don't like some of the... Um, I like the eyes. I like where the mouth is. I like the nose, but it's too high up. So I have to move that nose down. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. And I didn't did not like how this cheekbone is working. Mm -hmm. I really don't like that. So I got to change that drawing. And I, I don't like that there's a dark value there. Last night when I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, this doesn't work. This doesn't work for me. Really? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very funny how while like, I think at the drawing stage, it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But then when you start to like uh, flesh it, it out, yeah, yeah. And it has to work as a volume. I mean, yeah. not to say that, uh, and drawing at the Disney. drawing stage, it wasn't working as a three-dimensional portrait, but but the volume, the 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 three-dimensional quality of it, um, is far more evident when you when you start working it tonally. And um, I didn't like it. I, I saw some things that maybe were good because you didn't have to really think about them in the drawing, but yeah. once you start to you know, put some some meat into that that uh, drawing, then a few things just don't quite make sense. Mm -hmm. So I know myself, and if I don't change those things, I'm never going to be kind of satisfied with uh, with the painting. So, and I also think that it's good to maybe people that uh, join us and have never done like a drawing, underpainting, and painting. It's cool that they see that you are it's not like you're 
mapping something, right? And then you're just like coloring inside it, but it's always decisions, decisions. Yes. Like changing, adjusting. So it's not like I'm gonna like I'm gonna know all my plan when I do the drawing, and then I'm just gonna color it because I don't think that's uh uh no not a good way, but that's not. It's not my way. Your way. Yeah, exactly. it's not. I always want to feel like I can, um, you know, maybe based on Capris because I can be a capricious painter. So it may be a whim, but also maybe because I find that, that there can be um, a more expressive um, kind of avenue to explore with something. Yeah. I always want to, instead of cage myself into my painting, feel like, I'm always going to have options. Always. I want options. Always. Like if I'm a quarterback, I need to have five receivers. Always. Mm -hmm. I need to have that. So, um, so yeah. So, so ideally, let's, let's also be honest. Ideally, at this stage, you wouldn't be doing the changes that I'm going to do mm -hmm. because it's kind of dumb. What you want is when you do the drawing, don't go for like, I was going for very specific You know, I went for that, the modeling of that nose, which is nice, but I went for it prematurely. Like, what does it matter if a nose is nice if it's too low, if it's too high in this case? Like, I need to lower it up to here, I feel, mm -hmm. and push it like tiny bit to the right. But what does it matter if it's a beautiful nose, if it's too high, if it's a bit high up and to the left? It just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I also, this is also a way that I remind myself, like, come on, you know better. Don't get caught up in those things. And it's almost like it doesn't matter what level you are. Like, these are traps that are always there for you. Always. Mm -hmm. They are never going to disappear. Oh. So would you mind getting that maybe? Thank you, Lindita. Yeah, I'm see if I can get... Oh, you have to like scooch over or we can just let it ring. You sure? Me neither. Me neither. Anyways. Um, so, I should know better. I should know better because these are, these are always things that are going to be present every single time that you are in any moment uh, during the uh, development of a painting. They're always going to be like, um, you know, uh, um, sparkling little gems that are asking for your attention. And we have to be mature enough as artists to know that, yeah, I shouldn't go for that right now. I really should wait a little bit. And I don't know, you know, maybe we could blame it on, on the fact that I'm doing something for video, but not really, because I have to be far more responsible than that with my own painting. But um, I got caught up in, in just doing, you know, little bits of, of modeling when I shouldn't have done that. So let's move that not with mark making right now let's try to move it while we're painting because i think we can also do that and the way i went about let me see what i can use for this that's too small maybe i mean i'm not going to use big brushes for this but we can start with this but um the way i'm going to start is i'm going to put like this kind of like scrub almost like scumble this general mass of light. Was it something uh, important? They needed the paper. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, but they gave Thank me you. a name that I had no idea who. Oh, maybe the daughter. Okay. No, the son. Oh, so well, like, there you go. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, but we're fine. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, Lindita. No, I don't know. Don't worry, don't worry. Lindita Divine. Kakiro uh, Divine. Oh. So we're going to mass in that light, scumble in those uh, light uh, kind of tones, mass in that shadow. And the reason I say scumble or kind of scrub that color is because if I'm doing this, and I don't know if you could hear it, like, maybe? Maybe I could lower yours, but remember, no, 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 don't look. talk. We could do this. This, this is, people are going to hear this. Let me see. I'm going to use the... Oh, no, no, I'm 100% sure they can hear that. So that's what, that's what, uh, God, this arm is going to break. It's about to break, I feel. Um, the microphone. Oh, yeah, microphone not my arm. arm. Yeah. And, if, this it, and arm. If, if one is about to break, let's hope it's the uh, left. Um, so 
it sounds it should sound like that. Well, it, it should in, in the painting that I'm going to make, because I don't want to put so much paint in there that now I'm covering up all my drawing. If you kind of lightly scumble some paint on top of this, you're going to be able to see your drawing underneath. It may not be super clear for you guys on video. Hopefully it is. But trust me, me that's like close to my painting, I could be closer also. Let's let's be honest here. I could be a lot closer, but you know, because of how we're recording, I do have to keep some distance between um uh, uh the the uh, painting and 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 myself. So um but if I was if I was, you know, pretty close to the painting, I could tell where all these marks are underneath some of that paint. So we're going to do that. We're going to start by massing in some of that shadow, massing in some of that light, and we're going to use that mass in stage, that massing stage to uh, shift the drawing just a tiny bit. So we're going to use both the shadow mass to help us do that and the light mass to help us do that. So let's start with that. And same thing as um, with Danny's painting last week. We're going we're gonna to work with a four-color palette. So titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, because I don't know if you guys can see that because no. it's up top. It doesn't matter. Tiny bits of it. So but... titanium white, yellow ochre is going to be here. Cad red is going to be here. And ivory black is going to be here. Although, you know, I'm having issues with ivory black. So I you're love gonna black. going to change it for raw umber maybe? No, no, I can't because I can't get like my super cools that my... Like um, raw and blue? Yeah, I was thinking about that. So I was thinking of, of using my whole palette here instead of using this guy because this guy has some issues drying. Mm -hmm. Ivory black is delicious black. It's amazing, gorgeous, velvety. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. But the color dries like molasses. I mean, this thing takes a long time to dry. Mm -hmm. And the the fact that the paper was um, uh, wasn't primed, was just raw, helped dry some of that uh, black a little yeah, bit quicker. Of course, yeah. But now that we don't, now that we've sealed the paper, this thing is just way too stubborn. I've been looking at your paint and just like touching it very lightly. And I can get, I actually get paint sort of separated. Like stains in your Well, not fingers? even stains. You get like pigment. Mm -hmm. I have some of that pigment in my fingers. Oh, so yeah. if I if I want to varnish that that painting or give it like a, another coat, um, that black, all the all that little kind of soot of, of black would just pick up and then would ruin the rest of the painting. So I probably have to wait another week just to be safe with your painting mm -hmm. to to even attempt to um, put some varnish uh, yeah. on top. Um, so, I mean, honestly, those are real oil drying times. So the thing is, I've gotten so impatient, sadly, because I use um, I use raw paper and I use a fast drying white mm -hmm. that I want my paintings dry the next day. Like it's crazy. I know I'm being like, it's it's too it's too much. It's and like we're also too exaggerated. Used to that for the shipping time. That's the thing. Also, like people, yeah. you know, we always try to remind people, hey, you bought something that has just been painted. Yeah, out of the oven. Yeah, it literally. Yeah. That cookie is fresh. <laughs> yeah. So you need to like put it down and wait for it. You know, wait for it to cool down a little bit. So yeah. uh, before you eat it. So, yeah. Usually it takes. Um, it would take, if I had to be safe, it would probably be wise to leave some of these paintings to dry fully for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two weeks before I even attempt to put something on top so that I can, you know, bring some of the colors out again. Um, but yeah, but we, we are working so, we were talking about that so uh, yesterday. We, we have uh, this bad habit of just being super efficient. Yeah. And honestly, painting is anything but efficient. So so um, I would just say for the people that would be interested maybe in purchasing some of these paintings um, or the person that purchased uh, your painting uh, mm -hmm. a couple days ago, uh, just be a tiny bit patient. I don't want to ruin the painting for you because, you know, I want to ship it. So I don't I, I'm going to apply like uh, something on top that's going to make some of that uh, paint lift. They're so, the, the paint that is there is so, I think, beautifully placed. I don't think I did a beautiful job, but I think it's a, it works really nicely in the painting mm -hmm. that it would be, you know, to ruin a painting at the varnishing stage 
and it's happened to all of us just because we're impatient yeah. it's one of the most no. annoying things in the world like you really do feel like an idiot for do yeah. for rushing so anyways so i'm going to go for my mass uh shadow mass first and then i'm going to work into my um light mass and i'm not going to use any medium now so both of these are going to be very very lightly painted um so and I have decided now, now that I picked my black here, I have decided to to use the uh, four color one. So let's okay. see how we do. Okay. Uh, so let's say hi. We should say hi. Yes. <laughs> Marcelo Peralta. Oh, Who's very saying, nice. Hi, Mar Danny. Marcelo. Who's saying hi, Danny and Nicolas? Hi, Chad. Hey, Marcelo. Hey, Marcelo. Happy to have you. Marcelo. Here. Marcelo. Mar Mar? No. Yeah, I think so. There's a there's a weird R. In um, in Portuguese, because I, I know carioca say Rio, Rio. They Mar say it like that. No, Marcelo. No. No, that's my marshmallow. Marzello. You're saying marshmallow. Marcelo. Mar well, Marcelo. Mar 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 I don't know. I no, don't even Mar know. You I like? Don't know. Well, it's, oui, oui. it's Rio, so I don't know. I don't think I'm wrong regarding Marcello. the uh, Rio, Rio. Um, but. Marcelo, let's let's say it in Spanish. Marcelo can um, can correct us and uh, teach us about how uh, you would go about saying yeah. yeah. Emery Borch. Either Marcelo or uh, Mario Alberto Leon. Who, <laughs> I don't know if Mario Alberto Leon is here. He always lurks. Like if I would have to describe him as something in this world, a lurker. So let's make a test. Maybe. To see. Yeah, if maybe. Mario is a real, a real lurker. lurker. <laughs> <laughs> so if Mario is here, please let us know with one emoji. No words, just an emoji. Yeah, don't bother. Emery Borch uh -huh. was saying hello. Hello. Hey, Emery, how are you? Javier Ugarte Espinosa. Mm, dice, Javier. Hola, Dani, Nico y todos. Gran desafío para hoy, jeje. El desafío a ser valiente. Mario mandó un, un <risa> emoji de dab. Entonces, sí. Ma Mario Alberto eh, León Bonilla. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo pronunciaría usted en español? Mándenos como la fonética. Pues que me lo... Ay, yo no tengo mi celular. Escrita. No, que nos mande como la fonética ahí en un comentario. De cómo diría él Marcelo, Marcelo. Peralta en... No, solo Marcelo, Marcelo, no, no, no lo y compliquemos. No, Peralta, ¿cómo dirías tú? Peralta, Peralta. 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 No. Yo diría Peralta. Pero, Peralta. Ahora, ¿cómo lo diría Mario? Mario que es un hombre de mundo, conocedor, viajero. Pero creo que a Mario le acaba de dar Marcelo una pista. Uy... Pero no importa, no, Mario es, un tipo, Mario es un tipo honesto. ¿Te la leo, Nicolás? Sí, sí, sí. Mario va a responder como Mario va a responder. Él es, yo, yo creo que él no tiene un, un hueso de deshonesto. Dice Marcelo, In the region I live, our accent has a very heavy R. Oh. Marcelo, Marcelo no. Peralta. How do you, Pera, what Peralta. do you understand as a heavy Marcelo, R, Marcelo? Because for R... Marcelo... No, well, that not... would be a very heavy R for us Marcelo Spanish speakers. Per... No, but per, it would be double R. Yeah. To be like a For us, it would be Marcelo R. Peralta. No, but that would be double R again. Because R and C could be R C. But how do you say a, a strong R without changing it into a double R? No, because in Marcelo, it makes sense. Because it's how? followed by a letter. Yeah, but how do you say it like again? Marcelo. Mar? Marcelo. That's a regular R and for no, us. No, Marcelo. Marcelo. Okay, that sounds like a double R to me. No, you have to educate your oh, language um, Language ear, ear, please. My language ear? Marcelo. Marcelo. Peralta. Peralta. You're just describing that the <laughs> pair is too up high. <laughs> uh, Mario. Yeah. Dice, la R suena oh. como una JG, así como lo decía Nicolás. Marcelo. Río, 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 Río. Y Marcelo. Rio. 
And Marcelo was saying, I can send an audio if you want it. Don't know how to explain in writing. So yeah, please do uh, to my phone and I can go for it because I don't have it here. Yeah, go for it. Go go for your phone, Danny. Yeah, but let me say hi. Because okay. I mean, Marcelo has to do the audio. The audio. So let's say hi and then I'll go for it. Yes. Javi Hav mm. was saying, Buenas tardes. Really looking forward to this next session. Hey, Javi Hav. Uh, what do we say, Nicolás, to have you have? Happy to have you here. Happy to have you here, Javi. Rodrigo Ramu. What? Romeo. Romeo Santos. Rodrigo Romeo. Santos. Was saying, hey guys. Ha. And ha. I was thinking you were patient yesterday. Oh, God, no. Um, dice Javier Ugarte Espinosa. Dani, hoy veo tu pelo más rojizo o es idea mía. Eh, a verla. Está igual, de pronto es porque está en una moña, pero es que creo también que a, a esta cámara le pasa algo con como todo. el white balance, la con saturación, todo. con todo, cada vez que cambio el color de mi ropa. Sí, no, esa, esta, Entonces, esta, eh, esta sí. webcam que tenemos es una chichiguita terrible. Es la que, verdad. Mira, míralo ahí, míralo ahí, Nicolás. Si te está viendo, te sale, es como... Ah, sí. Se me ve... Pero te estaba diciendo que me gusta muchísimo cómo te ves hoy. Muchas gracias. Sí, te ves súper bonito. La verdad, eh, tenía el pelo, no me lo podía acomodar, estaba horroroso. Entonces... Pero a mí me, me hice... gusta, tú sabes que a mí me gusta mucho, eso es como muy de latina. Como de cogerse el pelo así, como apretado. Como y después como una mon... ponytail. Sí, a mí me gusta. Me gusta y A se mí te también ve... me parece Se te ve súper bien. Muchas la gracias. Te ves súper, súper bonito. Muchas gracias, Nico. Eh, so, Cutie Sketch was saying hola. Hola, Cutie Sketch. Eh, Cody Winicky was saying hello, OPL. Hey, Cody. Hey, Cody. Did you finish the painting? Painting is done. Uh, the devil is out of the bottle. Rodrigo. Romeo was saying, I'm Brazilian. It depends on the accent. It could be uh, Marcelo, mm -hmm. but not Peralta. Mm -hmm. Peralta, like you guys say in Spanish, yeah, would be most correct. Okay. Marcelo, if you're from Rio. Mm, Marcelo. But they Marcelo. say P-E, capital R. Peral Peralta. So Peralta. 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 I think it's closer so I'm gonna to go our R. My phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm going to put uh, Marcelo's voice note in the microphone. And I'm also super excited because Marcelo's voice. The first voice. time to, yeah. Ooh, voice reveal. Ah! Okay, so I'm kind of moving. I'm still blindly fishing for that nose, for the position of that nose. So I, I did end up putting more opaque paint down than I should be putting at this moment. Uh, but I'm doing it because I know that I was off. So I can't correct something um, that was off just by being hesitant. So I have to put some paint down just to find it. Um, we'll see. If I'm, if I'm way too off, I'll try to, you know, We have the whole painting to try to find it again. So, 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 Mar Marcelo. Well, I don't know if we, we can. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, different Jesus. Different voice notes. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, let's try. I'm sorry. I'm just. Kidding. But I don't know if he would want everyone to listen to them. So oh, maybe. Something. Yeah, I know you're hitting everything. You. I mean, I did something. To the uh, camera. Like, no, it would be impossible. I mean, it's like one chance in a million that that happens. Okay. I detached. Uh huh. The attached, like you say. Yeah. The microphone. Yeah. But the um, little sponge on top was in place. I have no idea. L you have to you see can, the video. Yeah, it was you have like, to tell boop. me later. This one, esta. Yeah. So, the mic went down yeah. and the sponge was there, oh, there just like go. laying there, which nice. is crazy because. It's not like attached. It was so. hovering. It was flying. Uh, okay. So Ma Marcelo or Marcelo or mm -hmm. Marcelo 
who sang vo voice reveal. Ha ha ha, you're making me blush. Joking. It's okay to play the audio. Okay, there we so, go. <clears throat> Why are you clearing your throat? <laughs> uh, so, so I'm gonna. It's a first one. Marcelo said something. Then another voice note. Then he wrote something. Wrote something. Okay, just play it. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank I'm like, you. Thank you for the intro. Marcelo Peralta. Marcelo Peralta. Marcelo. Mar. Mar, Mar Marcelo, Marcelo, not Mar. Ah. Marcelo, Marcelo. Marcelo Peralta. Mm. Oh, so it's more similar to Spanish. Well, Marcelo Peralta. Like softer, like there's a softness to there. To yeah, that. but it's not Marcelo. No, that no, sounds no, no, that's more very, that's more very French, carioca. I'm sorry. No, carioca, carioca. No, because, but when you were saying Marcelo, you were like. Well. The, the, going I, it's crazy. not my fault. No, it's not my fault that that's like a, a French sounding R, yeah. but it's closer to what they like. That is closer. That R, that kind of Frenchy R, is closer to their R than our R in, yeah. in, uh, for cariocas. So now Marcelo said also about the use of, yeah. uh, the one that we use on top of the N, what? la ñ. La oh, okay. Curvita? Yeah, okay. It says. But the, them is N H O. N H. Wait. Feijão, feijões. Okay, what was that? So, feijão, feijões. Es que feijões? Está comiendo feijões? No, I think it's frijoles. <laughs> feijões? Because uh, they were explaining us. Feijão. Oh, see, yeah. So, the sound of the. Because that. That was a question you did some days ago yeah. to Marcelo too. Okay. He was like, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well. And? Oh, he sounds nicer than that Joao usually. Joao Ruas. Oh, Ruas. yeah, he's the artist. Ruas. 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 But he went with I, Ru. I also, Ruas. He went with Ru there, but not for the maybe Mar because of Marcelo. The, maybe because of the region or also because it's a... Uh, Starting with an air, R. Oh. I'm sorry, <laughs> which air. is different. I am the one who's airing. Rio, here. but per, peralta. Oh, not starting, but with a vowel afterwards. Mm. Oh. I would say starting because, for R example, pera, ra, ra. I mean, oh. it's like in Spanish. If you have only one R in the middle of two vocals, it's cara. Vowels. What did I say? Vocals. <laughs> I'm sorry, vowels. No, it's okay, it's okay. Just so that people cara. get. Cara. And if you're starting with an R, it sounds like a double R. Raton. It's never raton. Well, so I when you're raton. starting with it, raton it sounds... Mike. Okay. No, but I mean, I think you get what I'm trying to say. Of course, like, you're right. You're 100% right. Maybe Rio. So, no? Ruas. Ruas, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, look, Rodrigo... Mar Marcelo. Marcelo. Rodrigo Romeo was saying, yeah, Danny got it right with the cara example. Perfect. So I think it's just like in Spanish, in that case. Um, Joao Ruas. And Marcelo has a very kind voice. Very gentle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Marcelo was saying, that heavy R is mostly on the region I live in. It's kind of considered a country accent. Oh, mm. country boy. Um, country boy Peralta. Uh, Ricard, or Ricard, <laughs> was saying hi, guys. Hey, Ricard, how are you? Um, Gabriel González dice hello, chicos. No sé si puedo estar mucho rato, pero aprovecho para escucharles y desearles todo lo bonito. Uy, muchas ah, gracias, muchas lo mismo. Ga gracias, Gabriel. El ¿Y momentico. qué va a hacer Gabriel? Bueno, mentiras, yo toda chismosa. Sí, muchas pero si nos quiere contar qué va a hacer Gabriel. Que no puede estar. Eh, sí. Si no, no pasa nada. Sí, si de toda. pronto, de pronto estoy preguntando pues no, mucho. La verdad. Le he inventado una disculpa a mi mamá, pero bueno. Eh, Cody Winicky was saying, I did finish it. I did finish it. Yes. I don't have any social media, but I posted on the Discord if anyone wants to see. Oh, we have to check it out. Yes. Nicolás. 
um tani was saying hey guys about to eat some rice and veggies nice. and then draw a little very good that sounds very nice what veggies uh tani because i'm thinking about like salted no like pan pan sauteed pan fried veggies sauteed you could say or pan fried veggies there we go and um rice yeah so very good. good so good so good we should have that tomorrow yes you up for it always yes um let's see so rodrigo romeo or mm -hmm. rodrigo romeo maybe mm -hmm. Or Rodrigo Romeo. There you go. Now we need an audio of Rodrigo. Romeo Santos. Who's saying, the R changes depending on the region. Mm. I live in the South and our R is very similar to your Spanish R. So, Rodrigo Romeo. There we go. Mm. Solo Priest was saying, hola, tiempo para mi español lesson. Como, como dice lesson? Como se dice lesson? Como dice Sí, dice como dice, listen. That's a little Italian, a little... Uh, lección. Lección. Clase. Yeah, so lesson would be lección. Yeah. Um, let's see. So let's check um, Cody's painting. Yeah, please. Can you get uh, into the uh, Discord through your phone? Yes. Oh, great. Thing is that I never know how to get in. Share, share your final art, maybe? Yeah, I think that would be it. Or whips, if there's like a progress one. Let's see. Ooh, there's very cool things. Ha <laughs> You want to share, uh, Danny, with everyone or no? Oh, very cool. Very cool. I like it, Cody. Look. Nice. Let me see it. Can I see closer? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I like the sky, all the clouds pointing at the character. Yeah. Like framing, yeah, yeah almost yeah. framing the character. Yeah, well, more than framing, I would say it's like pointing at. I would say framing. Yeah, you think? I I don't know why I define it a little bit different. I would say that there's there are shapes that point at, st at stuff, and there are shapes that frame stuff, like enclose things. So I mean, I no, I don't know. I think of them a little bit differently, but that's that's fine. That's me. ¿Cómo es que se dice? Very potato. Nice. No, ¿cómo es que se dice? Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato, exactly. Danny's always right -o. No. Always. Nicola's always trying to uh, go with the contra contrary of Danny's sayings. Yeah, and it's yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that <laughs> stuff, Danny. Um, so the priest was saying grassy. So, gracias. Um, Elaine Shukri was saying good morning, Nicolas and Danny and OPL. Elaine, you're... Elaine, you're, um, yeah. Your Renoleta is on, finally on, on its the way. way. Yes. It's going uh, to take this that morning. trip um, across the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to go to Australia. What is, um, I'm guessing, what is the farthest point? That's what I was going to say. What is the farthest point? Because, I mean, this is like complete geography and, and geometry. For this point from what? From, the, from like, if we were going to send something here, what is the farthest point to which we could send it? And I guess it would depend if we would take the um, Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. But <gasps> um, I found a very cool page web page yeah it's, it's called, called what is the farthest, farthest city. point dot com farthest city farthest city from where you are so it says no farthest way. farthest point from bogota colombia oh no way i love that that's yeah, what i was that's thinking why of. i was saying Excellent. i love it oh, i love the internet internet is so messed up yeah 
I mean, the world is on fire. We are horrible. We are a terrible species. But we are so amazing. So it says it's divided in two ca ca categories. 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 categories yeah. One, it says for the cities, population 100K plus. And another, for the cities, population 1 million people plus. Oh, no. I need to know a livable place. It doesn't matter if there's, there's a million so, people. So, Bandar Lampung, Indonesia. Okay. Have we sent to Indonesia? I, I, I think, think I, we have. I think, I think, yeah. I think we have. Yeah. I don't know if to Bandar Lampung. Not, not there but, exactly, but we have sent to Indonesia. But this is very cool. Uh, so we're, you know, we're close with Australia thinking that that is the, one of the farthest trips that our paintings are always going to do. So it says, yes. estimated population, blah, 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 blah. no, so this is from Bogota. And what would be the biggest city? Wait, it says, remember the farthest point is likely to be in the ocean somewhere. Right. So when considering which point is the farthest away, you need to really look at cities. We provided information from the farthest cities with populations of 100,000 and a million people, as well as all capital cities and countries that are the farthest away. Perfect. So, so what would be the biggest, the over a million uh, city? Tangerang, Indonesia. Okay, so it's going to be Indonesia for yeah. sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we have for the population 100K plus, yeah. It's one, two, three, four, five uh, places, and they're all cities from Indonesia. Indonesia? Yeah. Okay. There Perfect. is a uh, population, one million plus. Uh, population, what? Population, one million plus, and okay. it's one, two, three, four, five cities in Indonesia, too. And it says, uh, furthest capital cities. Yeah. Jakarta. Okay. Indonesia. I think we I think we've sent to Jakarta, to yeah. Jakarta, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Number two. It's number two of the capital cities. Yeah. It would be Flying Fish Cove in Christmas Island. Okay. Uh number three, Singapore. I have to say Singapore. I don't know Christmas I don't know where Christmas Island is. Mm. Like off the Philippines, maybe? Australian external uh, it, oh, territory. It, oh, it's Australian. Yeah. Well, I mean, look. Where is it? In the middle look. of nowhere? So, Christmas like Island National dog. Park. It looks like Chile. Yeah. <laughs> but look. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's so way it's, up there. Yeah. So, it's part of Australia, but it's... So much closer, uh, closer to, to Jakarta, yeah, like to Indonesia. Yeah, exactly. So much closer. And it's uh, like our San Andres. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number four, it says Kuala Lumpur, okay. Malaysia. We've sent to we, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And number one, two, three, four, five, West Island, Cocos, <gasps> Killing Island. Oh, we need to send anything there. To Cocos, it's my yeah. island. But, you know, I was super happy when we sent to Kuala Lumpur, and this is going to be lame, but no. I remember that when I was at school, yeah. we read a book yeah. that was of a monster from Kuala Lumpur. Mm, it was I called Kuala book. Lumpur. Yeah. I want to see. Libro. Mm. I don't know this. I don't see it, but I'm a hundred percent sure. Oh no, I'm I'm I trust you. Mm, maybe I even have it in uh my parents' house. You have it to have it? No, I'm trying. Try. You have it to have it? You have well, yeah, I that? couldn't do it. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I was gonna do a happy have. Well. Where is it? Now I want to know the house. name of the book. I have to ask my school friends because <laughs> it was the na like the name was like I rem uh, so let's see I remember it was like a do you remember the the grade you read it in 
like second grade. Okay, so it's like a it's a young kids no it's a kids book or first grade. Yeah, it was tiny. And uh, I remember. Would you say it's like a children's book? It was or? a children's book. Oh, okay. But it's not like so. It's not an illustrated children's book, but it's literature for children. There we go. Yeah. And I remember there was a monster mm -hmm. in a house of a kid, and he, the monster, was terrible. Mm. So he was like uh, scratching the um, a kale monster from kale. Hmm, interesting. Was saying Elaine Shukri. Yeah, I have to find the book, the name of the book. So the monster was like always doing like uh, pilatunas. How do you say that? Um. Uh, how do you say that? Let's see. Google. Travesuras, pilatunas. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I you probably say the word, and I'm like, oh yeah, but mm, antics. Yeah, antics could be okay. And uh, I don't remember very good if the kid was afraid of the monster mm -hmm. or he befriended the monster. Mm -hmm. And the monster's name was Kuala Lumpur. That's very cool. And I remember after that, for, when are, in geography, was there a reason for the monster's name? I don't know. I, I don't remember. I mean, I was like seven years old. But um, I remember after that, it was funny because in geography yeah, or like in science or something, because I think I didn't have geography at that age. Yeah, I'm pretty but sure. But like maybe one year after that, mm -hmm. so one grade after, um, a teacher was like, and this is Kuala Lumpur. And we were like, oh! <gasps> What? So that was super cool because they knew that we were reading that in Spanish and they would connect it yeah. to that. So for me, it was like mind blowing. Yeah. Where the monst where the monsters come from. Yeah. Uh, Elaine Shukri was saying, you must share one day, Danny, as I'm very curious. I have only learned about toils, which are, hmm, I'm not sure if this is appropriate. It's typical Kampung ghost stories. Hmm. Toils? I don't know. Now I want to know. Because the monsters I'm talking about are not real monsters in uh, Kuala Lumpur. But, uh, I mean, it was a kid's book. But now I want to know. What's that? You were concerned that, that they are not real monsters? No, no, no. Because, I mean, look, this is what uh, Elaine was talking about. Oh, those are like so, uh, like actually terrifying. Yeah, that looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, I'm I, I'm just um, or like a shrunken head. Again, I'm making parallels to the only things I know. So. Yeah, but this one was more like the. Um, yeah, what sort Tasmanian of Tasmanian devil, did... but like the character. Okay. That we saw on TV, so it was yeah. like what, a. What sort of stories like do you read animal? when you're little, Elaine? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Australia. No, I let's, want to let's know. Let's be honest. It's Australia. What's that, Elaine? <laughs> Elaine is saying, because I love that after that, she said, sorry. No, uh, no, no. What were they called again? No, so they are uh, dead. They're dead? Fetus. Oh, woof. Yeah, so this is not the kind of... Yeah. Yeah, that's no. So mine was a uh, children's book. Yeah, yeah, Elaine. This is like Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah. You went like uh, really dark. But what culture was this? I think it's it says here in Indonesia and Malay folklore. Wow, I mean it's amazing. That's yeah. that's culture. That's history. So. Do you think they still do that? It'd be amazing. Like some of the, uh, I guess, more traditional, like if there are tribes that still do that. Well, and it's what I was reading. Yeah. According to this, they are used for uh, black magic. 
Ooh, see? So they did look like uh, voodoo stuff. Oof. Yeah. No, the one that yeah, was thank illustrated... You. Thank you for that, Elaine. <laughs> thank you. The one that was drawn in um, the book I read, I don't know why I remember it was like fluffy and orange. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I remember. Yeah, so Maybe, not yeah. a black magic fetus, Elaine. <laughs> Elaine said, sorry, ha, 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 Malaysia. I still hear stories that people practice this. So every day we learn something. Yeah. I had no idea about that. Um, Margo Delgado dice, hola. Hello, no me sonó Margo. la campanita. Margo, ¿por qué? Estoy, tra estoy ¿A pensando si a mí me sonó. No, no sé, yo lindita. creo que a mí no. ¿Qué pasa, YouTube? ¿Qué pasa, Margo? ¿Qué pasa, Margo? No. ¿Qué pasa, YouTube? Que no. No nos avisó. So now I want to know, uh, did you guys uh, got the notification that we were streaming? I just, I want to know if it's working of, or if something's happening with YouTube. Or actually I didn't see, because, because that first moment that I was, uh, that I was, that, that you, when you started, I was looking for the brush. So maybe, maybe I did, but I didn't see it. Maybe I, I did get the uh, notification, but I didn't see it. So let's see. Um, Lollipop Strawberry was saying hello, everyone. Hey, Lollipop Strawberry. <coughs> How are you? I like that it's Lollipop Strawberry and not Strawberry Lollipop. I like Lollipop that. Strawberry. Yeah. And also it's lolly, but L-O-L-L-I-E-E. -E. Okay, there we go. I-E, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I thought it was E-E. -E. Uh, Kakeiro. Mm, who is that? Was saying, hello, hello, como van? Hello, Kakeiro. Is it raining over Men. there, Kakeiro? Because I think it's going to rain here. Like in five minutes. It, it already did? No, but again. I mean, look at the sky. No, but it, it, it rained already for like a little bit. Yeah, I heard. So I don't think... Because it was darker a couple of minutes ago. So I think it already rained and we're going to... That's that's all the rain that we're going to get. Belts mm -hmm. who's saying, Hola, Dan Nicolás. Dan Nicolás. Mm -hmm. And chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Belt. How are mm -hmm. you? Um... Gabriel González dice, literalmente voy a pedir otra caja de Prismacolor Very Thin. Espero estén aquí en una semana. El perro me comió algunos colores del anterior Ay. y ya también los he gastado otros. ¡Qué perro! <risa> Ay, divino. ¿Tú has visto eso, esa... eso fue como en Facebook de pronto? No, como, que sea, no. como que hacían... Pu no, 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 pero hace mucho tiempo. Que hacían publicaciones con muchas imágenes, como recopilación de cosas. Y había una de unos perritos que les ponían unos carteles enfrente por haber hecho cosas. No, nunca. Y entonces uno era como... Eh, que se comió los crayones. O sea, el perrito salía así todo regañado y decía que se comió los crayones. <risa> entonces que... Pues ahora... Le estaba saliendo de colores. Ah, el popó. Sí, 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 pero el perrito salía así como... Sí, había otro que era pobrecito. ¿Tú has visto cuando los perritos se los... tratan de comer como una abeja? Los pican las abejas. Ay, sí. no. Sí, había otro así. Bueno, así aprenden. Pues, o oh, no. Ah, no. Entonces, sí. como, ay, me dolió. Sí, los ¡Abeja! Una abeja y mm, sí. Otra. Y al otro día están como, esta de pronto no pica. No, el perro es un, una pelota. Eh, Gabriel González dice, ¿cómo los encuentro en Discord? Entonces, eh, ¿quieres tú contestar, Coquín? Sí, el Discord es de, digamos, la comunidad de las personas que están aquí acompañándonos. Uh -huh. No es propiamente nuestro, no lo manejamos nosotros. Sí, no lo, no lo creamos ni no, lo No lo administramos manejamos. nosotros, uh -huh. pero lo administra una persona de aquí como de... Comunidad OPL, que es muy chévere. Uh -huh. eh, 
Y es un sitio como bonito para que, pues no sé, ahí nos contaba Liad que pues se conoce gente de la que puede estar chateando acá, comparten las pinturas, es como chévere, entonces... Liad también avisa cuándo sí. vamos a estar en vivo. Sí, él es muy amable. Yo a veces también aviso. Eh, entonces no sé si lo quieres, tú tienes ahí el link, ¿te sí, acuerdas? Sí, me de... toca meterme acá a tu correo. Tranquila. A ver... No hay nada que ocultar, ¡eso no! <risa> Ay, Dios santo. No, mi pobre mouse, yo sale más cascado mi computador cuando no, lo usas tú. No, claro que todo no. Todo el tiempo. No. Yo un cariño le tengo a mi compu. Yo también. Mi herramienta de trabajo. Ay, yo también le trabajé tengo. Trabajé el resto por tratar de conseguirlo. Ay, no me hagas sentir mal que lo también traje es mi herramienta. Estados, de... lo, lo mandé sí. pedir. Sí, lo traje pieza por pieza. Sí, mis antepasados. Sí, construí cada pieza. Mm. Eh, acá está el link, Gabriel. Porque es que no, creo que hay que, es que yo no sé mucho de Discord, pero creo que hay que como meterse al link porque no se encuentra por el nombre, algo así. Sí, sí, por el link. Es que es privado, el grupo. Ay, sí, bueno. o todos los grupos son privados. No. ¿Te aburrimos, lindita? No, o... no, no. No, es que tengo como frío, como hambre, como... Pero si acabamos de almorzar. Pues ¿no? sí, pero que como con un huequito ahí para algo, no sé qué. Mm -mm. Eh, so Cody was saying I saw the notification Elaine Shukri was saying I saw the notification too Noel se dice saludos A mí no me llegó la notificación tampoco Y una carita triste Pero Noelio está Noelio, tú Noelio ya está, es, está Acá en Bogotá Sí, pero es, es pichó la, pan, la, la campanita La pancanita La campana o sea, antes sí le llegaba la notificación y hoy no llegó. Sí, porque no, él de pronto está como... Ah, toca... Ah, esa es la campana. Eso es lo que siempre dice. Eso sería yo. Uh. <coughs> Let's see. Um, where was I? Liad was saying hello. Hey, Liad. Hey, Liad, how are you? And Liad was saying, I was napping, but I think I got a notification on my phone, but missed it. I notified the Discord as soon as I got up and saw it. Thank you, Liad. Thank you, thank you so oh much. Oh, my God. We we don't even let Liad have, like, a good nap. Yeah, he was like, oh, no, I have to. Jesus Christ. I have to let the Discord know. Yeah. Everyone run. <laughs> Catherine was saying, hello, everyone. I love, I love how the face of your niece comes to life. Uh, hey, Catherine. How are you? Cacaito dice, está que llueve acá también. Sí. Está que llueve a cántaros. Oye, estoy... No, linda, pero... No sé qué está pasando, Vamos, creo que me va a tocar ir por agua fría. Y echarte en la cara. ¿Será que debería tomarme un macho o no es buena idea? Pues yo creo que después, si quieres. Salt loves bread. Ok, sure. Yes. It rained recently here. And where are you, Salt? I want to know. Salt loves bread. S Z, perdón, A L C K T. Oh, Zach. Zalkt, no, okay. Z A L. Yeah. C K T. Oh no, I have no idea with that. Zalkt. Okay. Loves bread. So I want to know where they are. It's like Bogota. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Black Frederick was saying, hola, I'm doing an oil painting workshop this week. First time ever mixing colors today and we did it for six hours. No. I gotta say, I have a newfound appreciation for your painting abilities, Nicolás. Oh, thank you. My palette kind of looked like a Saharan ice cream parlor at oh. the end of the day. Okay. Oh, for <laughs> like, I'm guessing flesh tones maybe? I mean... Um, so who, who was the, uh, can Workshop I ask? Workshop with, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was saying, yeah. <laughs> thank you, uh, for the uh, permission, <laughs> yeah, Jamie. Yeah, go ahead and ask, please. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> could we, can we know who, who the instructor, uh, was? Yes. Or where the workshop <laughs> was? Can we? Thank you, Danny, for the uh, quick response. You're welcome. Um, so Belts was saying MVP Liat for the Discord. Oh, he's, he's huge. Mm. Berica 
was saying hello everyone my first time catching you catching you live after the two week break hey berica yeah long time no see what are you up to very happy that you're back yeah um let's see if maybe i missed a comment uh Noel dice, sí, siempre me llega la notificación, pero hoy no. Volví a tocar la campana por si sí las moscas. Me ha pasado con otros canales. Mm, muchas so, gracias, Noel. Sí, but maybe it's, I mean, it's weird because it's like, it's notifying some people, some people not. Because remember last time it didn't, I didn't get a notification because I didn't. Yeah, I mean, it's, I wonder about these things. It's just. I'm I'm sure this is not like uh like all worked out. Or they try things constantly and then it kind of breaks. Mm. So I'm gonna go for a little bit of water. Okay. And I'll be back. Oof. So it's all me? No Just I'm like for one minute, but yeah. Yeah, right. Less. Um So let me see. So I'm I'm uh, more comfortable with the uh, position of the nose now. I think it makes a little more sense with the uh, position of the head, also with the position of the eyes. the The nose isn't quite uh, worked out yet, so we still have a ways to go in in trying to model uh, these little moments. But at least it's um, you know it's round. It's a as a volume. I think it works, which is a good thing. You know, we've been painting for maybe, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes uh, at most. So I, I think for for that amount of time, I would say that it's, um, it's good that we already have like a sense of three-dimensionality. So we know what that means is that we know that the uh, decisions we're making in terms of... Um, our light mass, the decisions that we we have taken in terms of um, uh, giving like a nice general sense to our shadow mass, they are working out. Like they are doing their job. And that's a good thing. When they don't do their job, you know, this, this portrait would never turn. So, so you have a good uh, yeah. internal clock. What? No. You have a good internal clock. Why is that? We've been here for 57 minutes. So, okay, and painted about for about hour. 40. Yeah, no, but you were talking about an hour. So, uh, of painting? You didn't say that? Because no. I was trying to listen to you. You were saying for an hour to be no, no, no. painting here, it's good to. No, 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 no less. Because we talked a little bit in the beginning, mm -hmm. but um, I'm guessing we've been painting, painting for a little bit less. Johnny Matatiao was saying hello, everyone. Hey, Johnny. Last name that we love, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's weird that I don't see the book that I was talking about. It's okay. I mean... N well, not for my... Mind? Yeah. For your peace of mind? For my memories. I mean, was it a great book? I think it was Or good. it's just a book that you read, so you just want to... No, because I read it when I was six years. Right. So it's not like... It's like, oh, yeah, it's a super good recommendation. No. Well, I used to read uh, Richard Scarry's books mm -hmm. when I was little. And they have to be the coolest books ever. Yeah, well, but not it's read, not that read. I want to... To like, just say the name. I just remember it was like it's part of my childhood, right? So I remember it as part of my childhood. But then I googled Kuala Lumpur, yeah, libro infantil, and yeah. nothing. No, but you're gonna get like books from nothing. there that are children's books. I think that's your googling. You do have um, a weakness, Danny. You're so 
<laughs> efficient doing so many things. I have to say, I Google faster than you or more efficiently than you. We should put that to test one day, but I, I have a feeling that I'm, uh, I'm a little bit better at that. You get too complicated with this, you, the way you search. Maybe. Um, no, este no es. El monstruo de las pesadillas? No sé. That could be it. Maybe. Pero nadie dice Kuala Lumpur. And you're a hundred percent certain. Cien por ciento Kuala Lumpur. That it was... Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Like, a, that's the thing I remember about that book. So. Uh, I'm gonna let the tab with the farthest CD. Do you remember what the page? monster looked like? Do you have an idea what no, the monster looked like? Because I don't know. I said orange. Yeah. But now I don't know why I'm thinking that the kid didn't see the monster. Okay, that's a big difference. So right maybe... There. No, no, no. Because maybe I'm mixing it with another monster. Okay, that's... Yeah, that's also big. So... Hmm. Hmm. You yeah, I, look for it? I tried, but I couldn't no, no, find no. anything like, I could, super quickly. I could do it if I ask my school friends. Uh, let's see. Uh, I would love it if everyone was like, what? No. We no, never no. read that. What are you talking about? Trini Roy Key. Okay, Roy Keen. I mean, so again, great. I'm sorry. Legend. But I, um, I remember that. And I remember another book that yeah. was called La Magia del Amor. Oh, my God. What Which is was that? really good. No, it was really good. I liked it. La Magia. What is that? Del Amor. I think, no, and it, I think it's a very nice You're saying no book. so many times that I don't understand. No, because it's, I think there were two kids. Two kids? Yeah. In this your one. class? No, no. This is the book. So it's like. The story of two different kids. Like a relationship. No. Because no. one is talking about how he lost his grandparent, I think. Okay. And wanted to be like in a circus or something. His After losing his grandparents? He always wanted to do that. Okay. And when he's in the graveyard visiting his grandparent, he m meets her. Maybe they what become friends. Uh, sketching. Oh, she's kind of dark and creepy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I remember kid, I read that when I was like, you know, uh, you know the kid that always sketches at a graveyard. No. <laughs> so no red uh, flags. Red flags, Timmy. So I remember I read that also as yeah. a kid, and I liked it. Did you ever question why was she? Sketching, no. or it's like, oh, she's just dark. No, because I had eight. Much, eight so years? For me, it was just a good book. I think, if I'm being 100% honest, I think Fer would like it. I'm going to see if I to, have it. No, we don't need to give Fer any more like, reasons to be uh, theatrical. Mm -mm. No, no, because no the learnings of the book are very nice. I remember it's like, it's good because they're talking about when you lose someone. Mm -hmm. And like all that process, okay. which at that age, I've never been talked about in that depth, maybe. So it was good that I could approach that in a book. So okay. maybe it's like a super light book. And could you remind us to your age? Maybe eight. Really? Like second grade? Mm. Or first grade? That's no, first or maybe, grade. Maybe let's say 10. Okay. Let's that stretch makes it a little, little more ten. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was like an assignment at school. This one on the Kuala Lumpur. One, two. Okay. Um, ¿Qué se llama el otro? You keep calling it Kuala Lumpur, and I don't know if this is going to be one of those Danny stories that no, keeps... No, no. Uh, There's no Danny stories that keeps... Transforming. Keep, no. 
¿Cuál era este otro? Trying to remember another book? Yeah. <laughs> Again, all of these sound kind of terrible. Este. I remember I also read a book called mm -hmm. De por qué a Franz le dolió el estómago. Okay. Yeah. That look, sounds like a children's book. Yeah, this one. Okay. And why did he no, uh, have, have a no stomachache? No? no, I don't remember. Uh, but very yeah. sad that you remember the book and the title is very specific don't remember anything about the book no because with that one I was maybe seven okay, you did a lot of reading when you were seven in my school we had to do yeah. a lot of um, reading yeah yeah but I think it was good because it was like really interesting books for the age yeah so I was into kids sketching them. in graveyards. And it was good because sometimes when I was um, little, I remember they asked if maybe our parents could read with us. Yeah. Or someone could read with us. Yeah. So it was nice. Like I have very good and nice memories about that. So you remember your parents reading that with you? Yeah. Like the one of uh, Franz. De por qué a Franz le dolió el estómago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Trini Roy, Qui, did, did, they, did they make the voices? Sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. I'm pretty good at doing voices when I read with uh, Fed or when I read with Samu. Yeah. Sometimes I remember uh, in the assignments, they would say, uh, read with your parents, but you have to read two lines or you have to read this character. So oh, yeah. So it was like... Don't let your parents exactly, read everything. Exactly, exactly. And I was the kind of annoying kid that was like no i, I want don't to believe read. it and the problem is that a kid reads so slowly oh yeah welcome to my world so my mom was like two pages in two minutes yeah no in two minutes two pages in 30 seconds and i was like half of a page in six hours so uh, but I think I wanted to read because my sister was very... Your sister's like, a genius. Yeah, so, so I was she, like, she was probably I also reading want to like read. in the uterus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I also want to read. And maybe my mom was like, okay, here we go. Here we go, Danny. Trini Roy Key, Reyes, who's yeah. saying, beautiful painting. I love that you show your palette. Thank you. Uh... Margo Delgado dice, sorry si ya lo preguntaron, pero ¿cuál es la paleta de hoy? And Trini Roy Key Reyes was saying, someone is asking what is the title of today's palette. The, uh, the title of, uh, well, or, or what today's palette is. Yeah. So no, very, very traditional. So um, titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, and no, that's not it. No, Ivory down. black. Yeah. So Margo, eh, esa es la paleta de hoy. Blanco de titanio, amarillo ocre. Rojo Cadmio y Negro Marfil. Eh, Trini Roy Key Reyes was saying someone... I ah, know already that. The yes. portrait is so true to the picture. Another nice chair. Uh, shout out to your host. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. But I, I think I'm not... I wouldn't say I'm the host. But thank you. Thank you, thank you, Trini. The hostess with the mostest. Uh... Let's see. Uh, Cody Winicky was saying, my parents saved all of our chil childhood books. And now that I have kids of my own, they gave me all the old favorites. So now we have all these cool old kids books. So what are, the some... old, what are the old favorites, Cody, for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have some that I, that I kept in my parents' house. I don't think we have, so we I, used to have a ton also in my mother's house. I don't know if there's, the, all of them are there anymore. You know what happens no. maybe with you that now there's grandsons? Yeah. So it's like, no, 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 taken. we have to open space for them. Yeah. Because her house, your mom's house, 
feels pretty much like a place where the kids, like the grand grandchildren, it's like they can be so happy there. It's like a place thought for them. Yeah. Because she has like adapt all her house for kids to be so happy there. Well, that was our house. We were five, so yeah. five kids. So. Yeah, but you were kids, but then you grew up. But then it went back to that stage of like a house that a kid would love. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, Ricardo de la Fuente was saying, hey guys, hi. Hey Ricardo, how are you? Julia Tovar. Who is that? Dice, hola a todos. Dani, me encanta tu pinta y trenza hoy. Muchas gracias, Julia. La verdad estaba diciendo que es que el pelo lo tenía horroroso hoy. Entonces decidí hacerme algo así como todo lamido para que no se viera que estaba terrible. Pero gracias, Julia. Eh, y el resto de mi pinta que no se ve está muy... Tengo este chaleco que es como oversized y tengo unas botas altas que son como... Sí, son botas altas, no. Como botas... Eh... No sé, me estás preguntando a mí, lindita. Las que tienen el bolsillito al lado. O sea, no. se ven como todas chunkies, como... Mm -mm. No sé, es chévere. Siento que estoy como para una película de, de zombies. Mm. Como que voy a salir con esa pinta y tengo como municiones en las botas. Mm -hmm. y... Sí, y comida en estos eh, Muy bolsillos. específico eso. Sí. Eh, JLFC Fire MC. Yeah. Uh, instead of reading rainbow, reading warm bow. I don't get it. ¿Lo entendiste? No, not really. No. Rainbow? Maybe he, they can explain it. A little bit better for us. Mm. Ricardo de la Fuente was mm -hmm. saying uh, greetings from Mexico. Hola, Ricardo. Hola, Ricardo. So, let's not assume that Ricardo knows Spanish, but I'm maybe gonna he assume does. It. I'm going to assume. I, I want to be wrong about this, but I know I'm not. Julia dice, sí, para mí te ves un poco Jedi. Mm. Parezco Jedi con esta pinta, Nicolás. Eh, te ves muy bonita. No sé, no sé si parezcas Jedi, <risa> pero, pero te ves muy bonita. Gracias. Eh, Rati Hesti Ning Ningsi, who's saying hello everyone. Hey Rati, how are you? Uh, Ricardo de la Fuente was saying, haha, I'm very Mexican, so yes, Spanish is perfectly fine. Claro. ¿De dónde? ¿De México? Well, they were saying greetings from MX, but I don't know Ah, el DF. Yeah. DF. Belén. ¿Dónde, ¿De dónde es la Belén? Del DF. No, no estoy preguntando de dónde es la Belén, estoy diciendo de dónde es ah, la Ah, no, pero Belén. no, lo dijiste muy más a pregunta. ¿De dónde es la Belén? Y tú, del DF. <risa> Así, ¿no? Y se respeta. Uh, Ricardo was saying, I'm from Veracruz, but live in uh, Ciudad de México. Veracruzano. Elaine Shukri was saying, I was listening to your podcast, Nicolás, with John Dalton, and it is very entertaining, enlightening, oh. and just insightful when it comes to education in art. Oh, thank you. And very long. You forgot that. It's very, very long. Is it three hours? It's more than more? that. More? Four hours? I want to see More than that. Yeah, that time was crazy for you. I remember you were like, no, I have to, I'm going to record this um, podcast. And then we would have lunch. And I was like, okay. And then you were like going and going. And then you stopped for lunch, was it? I think so. But it was like 20 minute lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and then you went there. Six hours, Nicolás. I know, it's vintage me. I know, it's terrible. Well, I wouldn't even say vintage. I mean, that that's how I think much you, I talk. Yeah, I don't think that's vintage. That's just you. Uh, that's what it means to say, like, vintage me. Really? Yeah, it's like saying, you know, that's that's good old me. Mm, Margo Delgado dice, 
El libro que recuerdo de cuando era pequeña es un libro ilustrado que se llamaba La ratita presumida, pero lo perdí. Y una carita como... Triste. Ay, Margo, suena muy, tri... suena muy tierno. A ver, yo lo busco. Pues era presumida la ratita. La ratita presumida. O sea, ahí hay una lección de vida para la ratita. Eh... Sí, porque veo una versión muy... Muy 2010, mira esto. No, es fatal esa ilustración. Sí. Horrible. Nicolás. No tiene nada de qué ser presumida esa ratita, la verdad. <risa> pero, eh, pero se ve muy lindo. ¿Tú tienes algún libro así que te acuerdes, aparte de los que estabas diciendo? Eh, ¿Yo? Sí. ¿De cuando muy chiquito? Como, o que te pusieran a leer en el colegio, porque es que de muy chiquito... Buah, en el colegio un montón, ¿no? pero estoy pensando en libros de que, que tenía que leer muy, muy chiquito. Wow. Eh... Hmm. Algo así muy chiquito. Hmm, hmm, hmm. No sé, déjame, pienso mientras voy pintando. No sé si Cacaíto se acuerda, no es un libro, pero eran unos libros para colorear. Eh, ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Pandra? No, ¿sí? ¿Pandra? No sé por qué creo que se llamaban Pandra, pero me suena que si sí eran Pandra, eran increíbles, o sea, tenían como, pues de pronto eran 30 páginas, pero en mi cabeza eran como 500 páginas para colorear, era muy chévere. Eh... Yo crecí con una cosa que se llamaba Calquitos, que creo que te la he comentado. Ah, sí me la has mostrado. La verdad, muy chévere. No, pues era los Yo sería calquitos. feliz con los calquitos. Los, cas los calquitos, creo que... Creo que yo soy artista por los calquitos. O sea, yo de verdad... <risa> o dentro... sea, destronaste decir que era por tu mamá, Nicolás, y dijiste que por los calquitos ahora. O sea, mi mamá tiene ganado el hecho de que me crió, y eso es relativamente Pensé importante. Pensé que ibas a decir que me compró los calquitos. Y me los compraba en la fila en el supermercado en, Car en Carulla, en la caja antes de que uno fuera a pagar ahí ponían los calquitos entonces era como uf, o sea pero los calquitos era para mí era como 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 el espacio donde uno podía desatar así su imaginación o sea era así de grande el, 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 el que uno pudiera como inventarse los mundos de esos calquitos. Era increíble, increíble. Y eran super, era algo súper sencillo. O sea, uno siempre tenía un fondo, había un fondo. Y en, en letra Z, por si de pronto alguien tiene como mi edad y, y me estoy... <risa> en letra Z. Es que es la única manera de describirlo. Sí, en sí, letra Z... Me acuerdo cuando tú me dijiste a mí, yo decía, ¿en qué? Sí, no, 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 yo a ti te estaba hablando como... <ríe> letra Z. Hola, vengo del pasado. Y en letra Z... Sí. Eh, en letra Z había dibujitos, entonces eh, uno podía comprar, en esa época pues era muy... Pues digamos, no, no, no era uno muy respetuoso de culturas, entonces uno compraba de... de Todo lado. Digamos. No, como de, de, de indios, entonces uno ponía como a todos los indios así peleando, o sea, te estoy diciendo cómo eran, eso no, no, entonces era casi como algo, como el llanero solitario o algo así, eh, y entonces eh, uno hacía como todas sus escenas, o había unos como de soldados, entonces uno los ponía ahí como, estaban en distintas poses, entonces tú los rayabas y se pasaban, en, en el sitio en donde tú querías. Entonces uno literalmente estaba construyendo así como... O sea, universos. letra Z es como un transfer para el que no... Letra Z es como un transfer, sí. Que era un papelito, un papel como ¿Pergaminudo? calcante, un papel, sí, como, perga, como pergamino. Y, y uno tenía que rayar encima y uno rayaba era con un lápiz. Y entonces se transfería esa letra. O sea, pues, como un transfer, como Sí, yo sí, dije, se, se transfería esa letra porque normalmente eran letras. Al, a, a donde uno estuviera escribiendo eh, o lo que uno estuviera marcando porque eso creo que lo usaban era mucho como para marcar cosas para tipografía, uh -huh. me acuerdo que encontré cuando tú me dijiste sí, sí, sí e incluso, e incluso de pronto eso dije sí, sí e incluso e incluso de pronto me estoy acordando mal pero creo que para una entrega de la universidad 
una amiga mía llevó eh, un transfer así. Pueden ser. La tipografía. El, la, el, el, las letricas de letra C son muy, muy arte, son como muy arte sí, vintage. Sí, sí. Entonces, eso uno entiende porque a la gente le gustaría el resto. Además, se pueden desbaratar cuando uno las, las pasa porque son como. Imagínate como tatuajes del de, de heladito. No, yo me acuerdo. O sea, es que yo vi a mi amiga usándolos. Sí, entonces hay veces no salen muy bien y se quiebran. Entonces, sí. puede, para arte sería maravilloso. O sea, tiene toda la. Toda la capacidad de ser algo súper expresivo para arte. Oye, y Cacaito no me respondió y yo quedé con la duda. Cacaito, acuérdate que trabaja, mi amor. Acuérdate que <ríe> no, Cacaito. nosotros somos muy afortunados que la gente a veces dice, oigan, estoy trabajando y medio los voy a escuchar, pero pues, no, Cacaito, por favor, acuérdense por favor, siempre que estoy saber trabajando. Si era Pandra, esto es súper importante. Te voy a escribir a mi hermana que también debe estar trabajando. No, por eso, lindita. Toca ser más, más respetuosos, más conscientes. A ver, se llamaban Pandra. Es que creo que era Pandra. No. ¿O cómo era? No, ahora Pandra era el monstruo del libro. No, te lo juro que ese es Kuala Lumpur, ese sí me acuerdo. Eh, Julia Tovar dice, jajaja, ja, ja, voy a preguntarle aquí al ochentero de la casa sobre los calquitos. Por favor. Tiene que, su, su esposo y yo que somos eh, contemporáneos, tiene que acordarse de eso. Si no, me va a sentir mal. Camila Ogerman, so Camille Ogerman. Camila se debe acordar de los calquitos. Aunque los calquitos yo no sé si eran eh, populares ¿Quién sabe si en, había en Argentina. Argentina sí. lo, Pero... que, lo que pasa, lo que tiende <risa> a pasar aquí sí, en, el, en, el norte, en el norte suramericano uh -huh. no necesariamente pasa en el sur. Entonces, yo sé que gente en Perú y en Ecuador se acuerda 100% de los calquitos, pero, pero de pronto eh, Doña Camila no. Camila. Camila. Dice, hi, me está fallando la campanita. Hoy pasó algo, ¿Sí ves? Camila. ¿Sí, ves? sí, 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 Camila, porque si sí nos estaban diciendo que hubo gente a la que no le sonó la campanita. No sé por qué. Pero bueno, de, o sea... ¿Ya estamos acá? No, yo digo, no, no sé por qué, pero tampoco sabría qué hacer. No, nada, no podemos... Porque, no, porque creo que está... es como algo que está... Es, es YouTube. Por fuera de... Sí, sí, sí. Es YouTube, eso no... Eh, y Camila dice, sí, sí, en mi casa había letra Z. O sea que sí había letra Z en Argentina. Letra Z yo creo que sí era muy, muy popular. Eh... Ah, pero calquitos. no sé si los calquitos. Ah, pero es que espérate a ver, porque quién... O sea, a veces el problema es que los... Camila. Eh, no. Ah. Es que los... No digas eso, Lina. Camila Lo... es maravillosa. Nicolás, que los pasaban con... Los eh, importaban con otro nombre. Pero sí, calquitos es la marca. Calquitos era como el producto. A ver este, calquitos. Voy a poner una imagen. Calquitos. Sí, eran como indios y vaqueros, o sea, era no, este puro, es de... puro ochentas, o sea, no, no pretendan que fuera algo muy sencillo. Era con K, alquitos, mira, calquitos. Uf, mi reino por un calquito sin hacer, uy, pero yo no sé si lo haría. Ay. O sea, si tú, por ejemplo, me regalaras un calquito de Navidad. Ajá. Yo creo que yo lo guardo. Yo no sé si soy capaz de hacerlo. ¿Y si te regalo dos? Hago uno. A ver, espérate. Y vendo el otro. Eh... Sí, es que deben ser además carísimos ahora si se consiguen. Yo no... ¿Sin hacer? Uf, sí. Debe ser una locura. Debe haber alguien loco que tiene por ahí como calquitos del 84. A ver, estos... Eran los calquitos. Para que Camila nos diga si sí tuvo o no. Niñez. A ver. Eh... Cody Winicky was saying, Lon Po Po is the one that stands out in my mind the most. It's like Chinese little red riding hood. 
And the artist is awesome. Also, Tyron, The Horrible, and Dangerous Dan were both good. Haha. <laughs> so let's Google Lon Popo. Yeah, let me see that. Because I did the um, your traditional, a lot of Dr. Seuss, I remember when I was little. Oh, but this looks beautiful. Oh, come on. That's like really good. Yeah. No. That's not the books I have. No, no. I, we're talking <laughs> like... Look, look at this. I mean, this is beautiful. Yeah, no, no, no. That's like, that's like Chinese watercolors there. Yeah, like beautiful. Really nice watercolor. So, um... Yeah, and here I am saying Richard Scarry and uh, Dr. Seuss. Mm. Camila Ogorman dice, sí, sí, también había calquitos. Ooh. Y unas caras riéndose. Mm. Elaine Shukri. Yeah. Who's saying... Uh, yes, it is long, but really good. But interesting question... Too, about your definition of art mm, regarding the podcast with John Dalton and Elaine was saying art question yes please I love that people yeah it's, good. Like, it's like I'm come gonna, on let's... I'm gonna introduce art to the conversation yeah let's let's get back on on you know what this is supposed to be please so art question yes how do you keep the look of hair texture visible when you paint oh geez is that when an underpainting provides the darker values without having to paint in it? To paint it? To paint it in? Okay, I need like um, a re... <laughs> so, yeah, re how do you re keep the look of hair texture visible when uh -huh. you paint? Is that when an underpainting provides the darker values without having to paint it in? Um, But then I would ask, do you think I'm doing that? Because I don't know if... if you're saying it because you think I'm doing that with this painting. Because I don't know if it reads as hair right now. I'm curious to know if it reads as hair, as like volume um, to you right now. But I don't know if I am... I've seen people that are so, so much better than me at, at depicting hair. Because um, I usually tend to make it... Um, I sacrifice the sort of lushness of hair to to be able to say it through paint. So, um, yeah, maybe I'm not I'm not the best at that. But I guess that yeah, right. If if you if you do think it um, it is configuring something that feels successful right now. It may be because, yeah, there's an underdrawing and then th there's an underpainting. And even though there's not much painting on top of, of what we're doing, there's still all that there's still all that hard work that we did uh, visible to um, to the eye right now. So so, yes, so probably all those decisions that are kind of covered, you know, they're still doing their job. So I would say that's that's it. Um, Cody Winicky was saying, I liked Richard Scary and Dr. Seuss too. Oh, I used to but love them. Lon Popo was special. No, that looks amazing. Yeah. That looks really amazing. Julia Tovar. Yeah. Dice, apenas llegué, Dani estaba hablando de Franz. A mí también me tocó. Franz tiene problemas de amor. A ver, yo busco ese. Pues el que tú decías, Franz, no sabe sí, por qué se... De por qué a Franz le dolió el estómago, sí, pero... Sí. Ah, ah, Julia, es que me acabo de, me acaba de hacer acordar Julia. Uh -huh. Esto era súper chévere porque... Uf, Franz tenía muchos problemas. Franz, no, 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 mira. Era Franz iba creciendo como uno oh. iba creciendo, entonces había distintos ah, libros para la Franz edad para de sexto, uno. Franz para séptimo. Y todas eran las preguntas. Mira, entonces, el que yo te digo de, de por qué... El que se llamaba de porque a Franz le dolió el estómago. Mira cómo era Franz. Chiquitito, ahí vi, ahí vi la portada, sí, sí yo me acuerdo. Luego va creciendo. Mm. Yo me acuerdo uno donde tenía fractura de un pie. Acá. Las enfermedades de Franz. Mm. Entonces hay nuevas historias de Franz en la escuela. Franz se mete en problemas de amor. ¿Las enfermedades de Franz? Sí. 
Las vacaciones de Franz. Bueno, lo de las enfermedades de Franz me preocupa un poco. O eh... sea, que sean tantas como para decir que son las, pues, o sea, no digo que un niño no pueda tener esas enfermedades, esa cantidad de enfermedades, pero pues lo siento mucho por Franz. Sí, bueno. Mm. Sí, sí, Julia. Me acabé de acordar que era una serie de varios sí, libros. Sí, eh, Franz sufría. Julia dice, oh, Dani, sí, yo no sabía eso. ¿Qué, Julia? O sea, Julia solo leyó a Franz adulto. Yo leía a Franz chiquitín. Eh, Emilio Sorni dice, hola a todos, buenas tardes, ¿qué comieron? Hoy Nicolás comió huevitos. Sí, unos huevos con revueltos. queso. Sí, muy rico. Y yo comí eh, caldo de costilla. Sí, para mí el huevo es la mejor comida del planeta. Tenías antojo. Tenía antojo de huevos porque tenemos aquí una, una canasta de huevos que estaba sin eh, estaba toda como olvidadita. No, no, no digas eso porque... Nunca que estaba no estoy diciendo mentiras, por favor. Si aquí nos encantan los huevos. Eh, entonces me hice unos huevitos deliciosos. ¿Y toda... Yo? Toda hora, todo momento es apropiado para unos huevos. Y yo quería eh, caldo de costilla, que es una cosa deliciosa. ¿Qué comió Emilio? Uh, Elaine Shukri was saying... Oh, you know what I read? What, what did you read? Sorry, I hit the camera. Um, I think my favorite books when I was a kid were... And I th I'm saying kid, so I'm saying maybe 10 years old, 10, 11, 12 years old, maybe from 10 or 9, 9 to 12, I'm going to say, let's say, uh, choose your own adventure books. Choose your own adventure books? Yes. I adore In English? Them. I mean, yeah, choose your own adventure. No, like, no, no, but did you there was read, a particular, read them in English? There was a particular collection that I, I remember in the... Uh, In the computer that I used to have. Or maybe it's still in... Oh, no. So no, no we ones? lost that. Yes, that's the collection. Those were incredible. Wow. And my mother look. used to buy... Like, I used to have, I don't know, 30 of them. I used to have tons of them. My mother used to just uh, get me those books whenever they came out. I adored them. Adored them. They were incredible to me. Because the book, depending on, on the choices you would make, Danny, mm -hmm. the book could Change. either be, you know, like 20 pages long or mm -hmm. it could be two pages long because you made a stupid mistake and you died. Oh, but that's cool because then you would have different opportunities for yeah. the same book. And you know what I used to do? All the, all the possibilities? Well... That's what I would do. I would just put my finger on the page that... Because you would have to go to page... Like you were on page two and it would tell you, go to page 84. Oh, so you would like, do What? it from the back to... No, no, no. I used to like keep my finger on the page where I was making the decisions. Mm -hmm. And then I used to try to see... I used to read everything because mm -hmm. I was horrified of making the wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. So I would always go back. Oh, well, that's cute. Well, that's But how... that's kind of sad. That no, you that's how... like no. afraid of... Oh. What like making, making decisions is is like one of oh, the? Oh, that's what I'm afraid of as an adult. Oh yeah, you would have never gone past like <laughs> you know page one yeah. in these books. Um, no, no, no. This is this is what uh, games that are you know th that are like video games mm -hmm. that are constructed based on like depending on what you answer and who you befriend, your story is going to be you know, in good games, dramatically different from somebody else's. And people have, like, decision paralysis, like, when they play these games because they don't want to make the bad decision. Mm -hmm. They just don't. And uh, for a lot of people, they'll just... Um, they'll save right before they have to make the decision. And then they'll go back. If they don't like it, they'll go back and try to, like, make the opposite decision. Like, they just want... There's a lot of people that just want like a good ending or like what is the best ending? What do I have to do to get the best story out of this? And I used to be a little like that 
particularly with games, mm -hmm. like with uh, role-playing games, RPGs. Yeah. Uh, but now I've gotten better. Now I've gotten better. Like, for example, there was a character in um, Elden Ring that it has been recurring, you know, throughout all the games. All the games. Like, he's always there. Like, a variation of him is always there. Uh, he was even, like, beastly in, in one of the uh, games that was not, like, a Souls game. Um, but he's always there. So, for the people that know, I'm talking about uh, Patches. So, Patches is always... Always betrays you. Always. Mm -hmm. like, that's like the one thing you learn when you deal with patches is that he's always, always patches? in it. Patches. Like, like patch? Like a, yeah, like a patch. A lot of patch? Patches? Like you would patch up anything. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I wanted to understand the name. Yeah. So, so in this, in, in Elden Ring, it's horrible because, I mean, spoilers, but not really. Suddenly, one of the bosses that you fight at the beginning is Patches. You know, he has, he has like a boss bar at the bottom. You're spoiling it for Rosalind. I don't know if Rosalind's here, but oh, remember Rosalind was playing. Yeah, played. Rosalind. Oh, well, she probably... If, if she's played for like two hours, I think she's seen Patches. I, I have a feeling she's seen Patches by now. So, because I did this very early into the game. I don't know... I don't remember exactly how long... Um, it takes you to get to uh, no patches to get to that place where patches is at. But uh, I think it's fairly quickly. And the damn thing, you know, you, you go into a cave and patches is in there and you get like a boss bar. You know, you get that mm -hmm. that bar in the bottom that I tells you. I remember you told me. Yeah, and that I've... bar in the bottom that tells you this is a boss. You're supposed to fight a boss. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, we're, you know, I was like, this is awesome. They're finally letting us beat the crap out of Patches because he's been so annoying and he's betrayed you for so long in all these like other games. Mm -hmm. Now you can beat the crap out of him. So I was like, yes. And halfway through the fight, like you're kicking his butt. I remember that. Yeah. He goes like, no, no, sorry. No, I surrender. And I'm like, yeah, right. You surrender because I know Patches. And I'm like, yeah, right, you surrender. So I keep hitting. I, I hit him once more and I killed him. Mm -hmm. And you were not supposed to kill him. I mean, you can, if you kill him, that's totally fine. Like, but you he drops could get this something thing. or. Well, that's the thing. I love armor sets. Yeah. Like for me, uh, part of um, Elden Ring or, or like Soul series is like the fashion souls mm -hmm. the fact Ooh. that you yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the so only only time fashion, in my life into elden only fashion. time in my life that i'm into fashion is playing like elden soul series fashion, games. Yeah, yeah yeah if there's like a cool armor set like that's what gets me going um my own clothes forget it but the most boring thing in the world um, not. but if i if i could dress in armor sets like that oh nice you could I could. I would look like a like a freak. But yes, I could. No, you would look like someone that's dressed in, in armor, armor suit. sets. Yes. Sets, suits. So freaky. Um, but I killed him and then I, I couldn't get uh, his armor set. You couldn't revive him. Like the game would let you revive um, other NPCs. Uh, you go and like atone for your sins and you have to pay a bunch of money, but they would let you, but not with patches. Not with patches. So just one chance. So you had, yes, yes, yes. You had one chance to do that. So I killed him and it's uh, terrible. So I am okay with that now. And the thing with Elden Ring is like, you don't go back to like another save because the game is just constantly saving your state. So you can't say, oh, I messed up. Let me start this over again. Mm -hmm. It's no. not like you can unplug the PlayStation. In. No, it already saved the fact that you killed uh, Patches. Because I remember when I played in the um, Super Nintendo. Yeah. I would, I know this is not how you're supposed to do, but I would eject the cassette. Okay. That's, if I missed. That's terrible. I know. That probably ruins the. Uh, no, it was good. The cartridges. quite a bit and I was a kid so oh god <laughs> um, a ver. I would love if maybe um, Liet yeah. who's also playing Elden Ring was like wait what you're not supposed to kill 
no, no. You, you, I mean, he gives you like a chance to say, spare my life. But the thing is, I heard him say that, but I was like, yeah, right, Patches. Yeah, right. I, I know what you're up to. He's always betraying you, always. So, so no, no, I was like, yeah. I, no I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, sure, I'll let you live. And, you know, next thing is like, he, he just, you turn his, your back uh, to him and then he's like swinging away again. So no. So I was like, no, 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 no. And was the armor cool? Well, it was very heavy. It's one of those, it's mm. one of the heaviest, it's one of the best armor sets uh, in the sense that you're like a super tanky, but it's very, very heavy. Mm. So but the thing is, my character, I've spec them so you can wear heavy sets, heavy armor sets. You can't? You can. Oh, you can. So I could have okay. worn that one, and it oh. looks super cool. Oh. Yeah, I know. And I don't know, I, but it's the dumb thing that I have, like, you know, 50 armor sets. But this one, it's probably because I don't have it that I think, but, like, grass is always greener. I think that that's the coolest one, even though it is damn cool. But anyways shame i mean i have other cool ones but i guess mm, no el c uh -huh. dice me encanta ese plano vertical encima de la ceja cody winicky was saying nika's blood lost is insatiable in elden ring ha 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 um you have to And i mean you you have to marcelo peralta was saying my patches is still alive and pulling tricks on me i know Belt said, haha, I think I remember I used to switch off my computer during the old football manager games if my team was losing a match. Oh, look at you. <laughs> I, would... I have never done that. Never. Never. I would I'm do that, loser. but not playing with someone else. I would do that with my Super Nintendo if I wanted to achieve something. And also maybe in the PlayStation. Oh, my God. But your per console. No, but like, PlayStation One, so you couldn't play with someone else. That was not well. I, I'm not sure. No, I don't know what the first console for. Um, well, you could play with someone else if they were in the room. Yeah, I'm trying to but, think what the first console for multiplayer was. No, because again, multiplayer you could. Yeah, not not, not like couch co-op, but like you know, dial-up yeah. multiplayer, or like uh, LAN parties or something. His dial up, mi amor. Dial up is the. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know that, but I thought that was called internet. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. But it was at, at that moment, it was dial up. So I remember, I remember that the uh, Dreamcast would have a, uh, the ability to hook up to your dial up to play multiplayer games. But I'm wondering if that was the first one, first console. So I don't know. I couldn't do that. Because according to this, the first home console with built-in internet connection yeah. was the Apple Pippin. Okay, but that's way 1996. Old. Yeah, that's old. That's uh, older than... Well, however... Yeah. So, 1996, and it says, however, its 599 price tag kept it from effectively competing with other internet gaming options. In 1996, it, it was, was 599. Yeah. yeah, that's expensive. I mean, consoles and games have never ever been cheap. No, but 599 in 1996. Ah, uh, I think you'd be surprised. 96. Um, so that was SNES times. Dollar equivalents. No, that was N64 times. How was how much was an N sixty four? Probably like three hundred bucks. I feel. Mm. Nintendo sixty four. So it would be yeah. Uh, the Apple Pippin to today's dollar. Yeah. It would be one thousand one hundred fourteen dollars. Yeah, that's like a gaming PC. That's very expensive. Yes. Because it says um, by comparison, the Sega. Saturn. Saturn, yeah. And its separately sold Netlink device combined cost much less than 400 Which still. 
Yeah. Very uh, bougie. Yeah, that but time. that's like early internet days. So if you wanted to have that, you know, who who was able to have that, really? Not many people, for yeah. sure. Host based host based networks. Yeah. Mm. No, but this I mean nineteen seventy one are panet. Okay, but we, we don't want to go that far back. Uh so it says from 1993 to 1995. Okay, so that's uh, SNES and it says, N64 yeah, through days. the early to mid 90s, Sega, Nintendo, and Atari tried to push online gaming forward. What they found was that internet was expensive and Very. not quite fast enough. Yeah, this process began as early as as early as 1993. Uh, During the same year, the first pay-to-play service over the internet is released. Mm -hmm. uh, the release was Avalon Mod, no, which no was idea. a multiplayer RPG. Mm, yeah, I have no idea, but in my PlayStation 1, I did not play with someone else. Just with my sister, if she was there, or oh, my cousins. Oh, that, that day was... That, those days were couch co-op. Yeah. It was the best, I feel. Um, That's still the best way to play a game, I feel. Yeah. I like it. like that. I like it like this. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I was going to really commit. It's like a... I was gonna really, really commit, I don't and, know, I, and commit then I thought, to oh, it's gonna be, it's that. gonna be super loud. <laughs> uh, a ver, Julia. Was Julia. Saying, Las enfermedades de Franz también las leí. I love bullies. Ha ha ha. Decía en su yeso. I love bullies. Uy, yo no me acuerdo de eso, pero, pero suena algo muy que podría ser de Franz. Sabes quién se acuerda mucho de Franz? Yo creo, mi hermana. Mucho. ¿La uh, quieres llamar al trabajo e interrumpir no, el día pues de ella? No, escribí, no me, no me respondió si era Pandra. No, pues es como haciendo una presentación. Pues sí, pero esto es importante, Nati. Um, so, Elaine Shukri was saying, The hair texture in the painting is what I'm referring to on the left side of her face. It feels like it's coming through. Yes, yes. So I do, I do feel it has to do with prior decisions, um, but also with um, the fact that we're massing in like a tone that's like, like a more generalized tone. And there are like slow, like there are subtle variations there that can give you a hint as to, as to how it's going to start to behave as a volume. So maybe the addition of all those things is what's making it feel like it works. Mm, Ana Azuela dice, hola, mm -hmm. me atrasé hola. esta semana, pero ya estoy al día. Escucharlos es un poquito como ir a terapia. Ah, es que ay, qué bonito. Sí, es que algún día grabarán algún curso tipo doméstica. Creo que tendrían muchísimo éxito. Cariños desde MX. Pero Ana... Mm. Yo creo que lo chévere es que eh, no hay necesidad de ya grabar. tenemos, exacto, ya tenemos el equivalente, o sea, no sé si el equivalente al curso, pero pues tenemos aquí el espacio para compartir eh, con cada uno de ustedes. Y tenemos eh, todos los videos pregrabados o tenemos las transmisiones, entonces ahí hay para elegir si uno quiere solo escuchar o escuchar e interactuar o escuchar y ver los comentarios e interactuar entonces sí, pero muchas gracias refiere... por eso tan tan bonito que dice Ana 
De pronto lo que se refiere, Ana, es como algo más estructurado que parezca como una clase. Ah, pero también... De pronto el próximo año se pronto vienen... Eh, el próximo año... Se vienen cositas, dirías tú. Sí, pero no... Di a ver, digamos desde ya, no es un curso doméstica. No. Pero sería un curso Our Painted Lives con una duración eh, muy chévere. Es un workshop más largo. Entonces sería más como un curso, más que un workshop. Sí. Eh, el próximo año. Solo vamos a decir eso. Yo no sé de qué estás hablando, la verdad. No hemos hablado de esto. No hemos hablado de esto. Entonces, yo no sé por qué a ti te encanta. Sí, sobre todo. A yo. ti te fascina. Yo sí es Cuando que... no sabemos si hemos discutido algo. Te pongo acá. Como decir... Sobre todo tú eres el que siempre empieza... A ti te encanta... Es como antes Adelantarte de grabar. a todas las cosas que no hemos hecho. <risa> antes, de antes de transmitir, es como... Bueno, no vayamos a hablar de eso todavía. Y tú eres... Hola, les voy a contar que... Esa voz de siempre, idiota que siempre. tengo yo en tu cabeza <risa> es impresionante. Marcelo Peralta was saying... I played with calquitos as a kid also. Awesome. There was a brand of butter... That add them to their package oh, to would've... make kids force their parents to buy that brand. Maybe that's why I was like obese. Maybe it came with the butter. So you you were like I was the butter baby. <laughs> mm. Elaine Shukri was saying, I, "I love the way you can paint something without having to go into so much detail. I feel like I can't let go of details in portraits." Yeah, understanding what it means to do uh, something that's detailed is also very important because many times we feel that there's more information in a detail than the one that it actually is there. Like we almost like um, impose an amount of information that's not quite there, but we believe it's there. Um, you know, perfect, perfect... Uh, Perfect example of this is Velázquez. You know, when you look at a Velázquez painting and if you're able to see them in real life, you're going to be shocked, uh, uh, you know, of how many decisions that seem to be complex. I mean, they are fundamentally highly complex, but he's such a genius that he resolves them always in like the simplest of ways. So his painting without trying to be Um, academic is teaching you, you know, hey, you you can, you know, kill yourself trying to uh, describe, you know, this instance of the body. But you, if if you are intelligent, you can also find very creative ways of saying that, you know, that part of the body, whatever it is that you're trying to paint without... Um, so much hard work like the hard work comes from being intelligent about it but it doesn't come from um from just hours and hours of painting so yeah velasquez is just that's why he's probably probably for many best painter ever for me he's my he's probably my top if i had to make like a, an objective list of ba best painters ever he's for sure top five But um, he's not my favorite painter ever. He's not whom I believe to be best painter ever. Mm. A ver. That goes to Rembrandt, if you're wondering. Um. Let's see. What are you looking for? Comments? Comment and subscribe. No, I was just uh, finishing the um, thumbnail. Like, okay. I was doing like a um, mm, screenshot. Yeah. To put it as a thumbnail. So, uh, Ana Azuela dice, claro, pero es que nunca es suficiente. Jaja. <laughs> Qué emoción lo que comentan del proyecto secreto. Amo cómo va quedando la transición de la frente al pómulo. Ah, gracias. Dani, ¿cuál era tu juego favorito de PlayStation 1? Uy, ¿tú tendrías uno tú? Es que Play 1, es que esa época yo me ah, fui... Ah, tú te fuiste. Sí, yo Bueno, me... yo tenía... Bueno, mentiras, no te dejé hablar, cuéntame. No, 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 no. 
No, si quieres ahorita, ahorita eh, contesto yo, pero dale, dale tú, por favor. No, 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 cuenta. No, por favor, Ay, si por me vas a interrumpir toda la vida, pues dale, pásame <ríe> por encima, atropella. Cuente, cuente, a ver. Eh, no, yo no jugaba Play 1, porque es que ahí estaba estudiando, me ha ido a estudiar y yo tristemente eh, no tuve una época en que, en que dejé de jugar y por eso de pronto juego tanto hoy en día porque... Eh, como que, no sé por qué, no, no le paré bolas, no cuidé a Nicolás en esa época, no cuidé a Nicolás, entonces... Pues lo pudiste cuidar No cuidé a Nicolás. No lo cuidaste en mm. eh, Gamer Nicolás. No cuidé a Nicolás, las. entonces se me, se me desapareció, estaba como muy ansioso por crecer yo, yo creo, entonces... Yo cuando volví a jugar ya era el Play 3. Me tocó como... O sea, yo no había jugado con, con cámara por muchísimos años. Entonces me volví un 8 cuando tuve que volver a coger un control y volver a tratar de... Y, y tratar de entender cómo manejar una cámara. Eh, pero entonces no, Play 1 no tengo como muchas memorias. Yo después compré, después cuando pude dije, ay, me voy a comprar uno como pirateado, como... Flasheado uh -huh. para, para jugar como juegos. Y yo no me acuerdo que jugué, si te soy sincero. Mm, no sé. Jugué. No, no sé. No, es que no, no tengo memoria. De pronto, como Kingdom Hearts o algo así jugaba. O no sé. Es que no me acuerdo, la verdad. Yo iba a decir que en la época en la que había un Play 1, creo que yo ya he contado esto, pero en mi casa había el Super Nintendo y el Play 1. Y cuando llegó el Play 1, ese se fue para el cuarto de mi hermana. Mm. Entonces, el Super Nintendo se quedó en mi cuarto. Yo soy cuatro años menor que mi hermana. Y yo podía jugar en el Play 1, pero jugaba más en el Super Nintendo que estaba en mi cuarto. Pero me acuerdo que jugábamos mucho eh, Superstar Soccer con mi hermana. Superstar Soccer. Sí, era chévere. Lo máximo. Algo que jugábamos que... Eso fue un poco más adelante, pero tengo que decir que, o sea, sí me acuerdo como de tardes chéveres y mi prima que está acá en el chat. Okay, bueno, right. no sé si esté trabajando. Está, está trabajando, mi amor. dejemos trabajar a la gente, bueno. <risa> pero respetemos si de a la gente. Está y se acuerda, eh, nosotros jugábamos mucho como juegos de, nosotros le decíamos tapete, pero pues como Dance Dance Revolution. Yo y nunca jugué eso. Era lo máximo, o sea, ay, pucha, me pegué contra el micrófono. Nos jugábamos, nos jugábamos, nos podíamos durar, no sé, o sea, desde antes del almuerzo hasta las nueve de la noche que ya se tenían que ir mis primos jugando y era lo máximo. Tanto jugarlo con el control, que me acuerdo que eran los cuatro botones y uno espichaba con este, este, este y este, entonces así y con el tapete, que era lo máximo, a mí me encantaba. Eh, me acuerdo de Crash Bandicoot Ah, Crash era chévere sí. Crash, sí, sí. sí. Eh, Me acuerdo, no sé por qué mucho De un juego que se llamaba Spyro Sí, el del dragoncito sí. Spyro the Dragon Eso todo es como de la mm, misma época De Rare me No, acuerdo... bueno, Crash es eh, Naughty Dog A ver, pero... yo quiero mirar juegos A ver, PS1 Popular Games. Bueno, que yo creo que yo no compraba lo que eran los Popular Games. Sí, Metal Gear, no, nunca lo jugué. Castlevania, no, tampoco. Gran Turismo, tampoco. Tony Hawk, yo lo tenía, era en el, en el Game Boy Advance. Y era lo máximo. Eh, el de Crash, que era de carreras, también era muy chévere. Mm. Se lo jugamos. Ese lo jugamos, sí. Pero la versión nueva. Sí. Y tengo que decir que... Tú mucho mejor que yo. <ríe> sí. En Crash. Tú eres muy bueno. Yo eh... puedo jugar Mario Kart. Yo, yo también soy puedo bueno jugar... en Mario Kart. Yo también soy bueno yo en Mario Yo debo decir que... Bueno, los no dos no como... somos unos genios. No, no como el... Acuérdate, el esposo de Julia. Como nos contó Julia. Sí. Es como... Nivel 100. Nosotros somos buenos. Punto. No somos nivel experto, pero somos muy buenos, yo diría. 
O sea, bueno, para mí es como si la gente... Si le por ejemplo, si uno gente. está en una, eh, con unos amigos y dicen, ay, vengan, juguemos Mario Kart, que tienen aquí Mario Kart. O sea, uno gana. Yo sí. ganaría carreras 100%. Sí. Estoy seguro que Yo ganaría también. carreras. Pero pues no... Pero pues yo creo que nunca hemos jugado en línea porque yo no. creo que en línea uno ya dice, ay, no, me, no nos jodan. Sí, no somos buenos nivel en línea. Nivel mundial, sí. Sí, pero somos buenos nivel... Casero. Sí, visita familiar. Sí, sí. Eh, no, estoy viendo juegos como famosos. Pues bueno, pero es que eh, Metal Gear y, y Castlevania ya con ya esos ya... No, 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 esos yo no los jugué, por eso estoy diciendo. No, pero que digo que son muy conocidos, ¿sí me entiendes? Como que esos son ¡Ah! legendarios. Este, uy, no me acordaba este, de este. Uy, no, es que lo acabo de ver. Ape Escape. Ape Escape. ¡Ah! Wow. ¿Tú sabes que se puede jugar ahorita? Sí. Sí, porque uy, qué loco. Play, Play sacó como... Un servicio sí. que te deja jugar como juegos así viejos. Uh -huh. Y había mucha gente muy emocionada de volver a jugar Ape Escape. Uy, es como, lo acabo de ver. ¿Y te acordaste? Y me, o sea, sí. Mi cerebro fue como, ¡Oh, ese. Y el nombre, todo. Es sí. de rescatar eh, miquitos. Eh, me acuerdo como los niveles de los, o sea, acabo de ver como los coquitos, como tu, 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 los coquitos que tú tenías al lado. No sé, es en que la me pantalla, está mira. como yo. Espera. Es que sí. yo no, la verdad, yo lo jugué como, pero mira, no sé. O sea, yo sé de ese juego, creo que como um, satelitalmente. Mira estos. Como eso, supongo, la vida. Como una galleta, sí. Los coquitos. No, esos creo que eran los del poder. Uy, la verdad, no me acuerdo nada. Pero mmm, voy a decir que, como no estaba en mi cuarto, entonces no lo jugaba yo sola casi, sino siempre con mi hermana o con alguien. Mm. Entonces, lo ¿no te que tocaba más... mucho? No, sí, me... o sea, lo podía jugar porque mi hermana me decía, no, pues entra y juega. Pero, pues, eh, no lo hacía mucho. O sea, si entraba a jugar, entraba a jugar con ella. Entonces, tengo que decir que de mis favoritos, eh, por los recuerdos con mis primos. No, pero aquí ya. Es los de tapete. Comenzó a berrear. <ríe> eh, sí. Hmm. Eh, Camille O'Gorman dice, no sé qué será esa sorpresa del año que viene, pero anotada no, no, no. ya <risa> no, 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 eh, temper expectations <risa> pero so, anotada to ya acá yeah, so we are, because we're talking a little bit about um, our uh, hope that next year we can offer courses so Um, maybe two a year, two a year, um, and maybe they are uh, ten weeks long or something like that, nine, ten weeks long, mm -hmm. which is usually, you know, we don't want to do anything that is um, too different from what people, from the experience that people that do courses uh, are used to doing. So it would be ten weeks, um, uh, maybe... Uh, one day or two days a week uh, during those 10 weeks. And um, yeah, and they, they, they will be about very specific uh, painting like themes. And it, it's going to be uh, part theory. Uh, there's going to be, you know, studio moment where we all work. There's going to be homework. So like a proper class. Um, And that, that sounds like super exciting to us, but we don't want to um, get ahead of ourselves. So yes. we know that that's something that we want to work towards, but we also know that there's so much stuff that we need to do from, you know, before all of that uh, this year that, that we need to focus on the stuff that we are doing right now that needs to be done. And when we're done with that, we will... Oh, no, but wait, because Elaine was saying... Uh, online, and then they said, oh, I heard you say studio, and a sad face. No, no so this it's is all be online. online. Yeah. Like, what I mean by studio is, um, you know, if you do a course, it could just be, um, you know, hey, everyone, and it's a big, it's a big uh, virtual classroom where I start talking, and just all of you listen, 
and then I give out like um, uh, some homework and that's it. And we don't really work, but we just we're just there to um, watch a presentation that I've put together and uh, and then that's it. That There's a lot of people that do classes like that. But I think that the one for, I mean, for sure, the one that we would do would be everyone working at the same time. And I would be working, trying to do the um, exercises that I would want everyone to also do. Yeah, but online. online. Yeah, so, so it is online. It's not, it, would, it wouldn't be a huge class because I don't like enormous classes. Um, so we're thinking something along the line of, um, you know, maybe 10 people. Yeah, we're 12 still, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we have all the details, we're going to yeah, let you know. We're spitballing here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is just like an idea of how it's going to be. Yeah, but I think that, you know, specifics we're, we haven't worked out. Um, but for sure, the, um, the fact that we want a smaller class, because, you know, when you offer these classes, the truth is you can make them very very affordable or somewhat affordable. Um, let's be super respectful to um, to people that, or let's acknowledge that that uh, what is affordable for some people is Doesn't very hard work for, for other either, people, yeah. yes. So it let's say it would be in accordance to what um, um, people usually charge for these, uh, for these sort of courses. Um, that would be the pricing. But you could make bank if you choose to say no un unlimited people and um you know i will just do this this sort of um i wonder if that's how you say it like magisterial class you know like as if you were going into harvard and it's a auditorium where 300 people could sit in and the teacher just you know never acknowledges who the uh, students are but just gives the same class to every single one of those people um I think that um, that's okay. And if you want to make good money and if you find that um, you've worked really hard to, to, you know, to, to garner such an audience that would give you, you know, that money, then, yeah, then that's fine. But I think uh, both Danny and I feel that um, it's not. We like something that feels smaller, uh, And that way, when you tell people, let's check homeworks or let's check, you know, the exercise that we were going to do for this week, um, you can actually, when you talk to people or when you share their work, the people that are attending these courses, they really feel like they've gotten the attention they deserve. They really feel that their work is getting the attention they deserve. They really feel like, okay, this is what I paid for. Like, it makes sense that I paid for this and that I'm getting, like, this, you know, very um, kind of particular attention to what I'm doing. I like to do stuff like that. That That's the sole reason I enjoy doing um, physical workshops all over this world, this beautiful planet, is the fact that you can travel, but you're, you know, traveling is great, but traveling is always just this... Thing that you do in order to meet, you know, new people and people that are wonderful artists and they have incredible intentions and um, they they have had incredible experiences through painting. So um, it's always about people, always, always about people for me. And um, and I wouldn't change that for the world. I, I would never, ever, ever, ever change that, you know. If given the chance to just say, hey, you can make a little more money if you just open it up even more, um, I wouldn't do that. I felt uncomfortable. I'll be honest with you guys. I felt uncomfortable um, with, a little uncomfortable, I'm going to say, with the one that I'm going to do in August. Because it was an, um, it's a, a class that, um, it's a three-day course that we're going to do on color. Um, but it was, uh, posed, it, it was proposed to me as something that is far more accessible and it's far more open to, you know, a lot of people. The, um, I mean, you, you get an idea of how different it is when you realize that it's 
three hour long sessions each day. So it's really like a nine hour session, which, you know, when I do um, daily, uh, when I do five day workshops, a nine hour session can easily be one day. Like mm. in Rome, if we were painting and then walking and having talks about paintings, that a nine hour day was just a day, just yeah. a regular day. Days were could go even longer if we wanted to. So, um, so yeah, so it's a little different, but there's going to be 30 people in, in that one. And I feel like w when they told me that they could open it up to 30 people, I was like, I don't know if I'm, you know, if this is cool. And because it is uh, more affordable, I'm not getting, you know, it's not as if I'm getting like, oh my God, it's 30 people. You're going to get a ton of money. Not really, to be honest, not really. I get paid better when I do, you know, other five-day yeah. workshops. Yeah. So I get paid far, far better. That's what I'm trying to say. So so it's not as if the 30 people make up for, for that. So, um. Yeah, so we don't want to betray, even though we, like, specifics still have to be worked out. I think we both, Danny and I, know that there is, the, the human experience cannot be um, sort of betrayed. You cannot yeah. just say, hey, we're going to make this accessible, but because it's accessible and we're going to open up this to people, then our purpose just suddenly changed to making a ton of money. And um, I don't think that that's how you do it. I think that the way you do it is you try to propose to people, hey, I'm going to open this up. It's going to be a course. Um, I'm going to, you know, uh, give you very kind of like personal attention and you're going to be part of, of this group. So we're all going to be sharing our work. Um, and I think I've always believed that if you want to then keep, if you want to keep doing that in the future, what you have to do, the one thing that you have to do when you're given the chance to do something maybe new that you haven't tried or when somebody opens their, their doors to, to you and they give you a possibility to teach, the one thing that you have to do, and I can honestly give you this, give you guys uh, this as a bit of advice, having taught for many, many, many years, is never look ahead. Like Concentrate on the job that you have right in front of you and try to do the best damn job that you can. Like the best job that you can. That is your responsibility right then and there. It's to those people, and they could be four people, there could be 20 people, it doesn't matter. Like that is your, you know, those are the people that wanted to be there, that paid to be there, so you should respect the people that are there and just give them the best workshop, that the best workshop experience that you could ever give to those people. And if you do that well, other doors are going to begin to open. But never look ahead. Always think, no, this is what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to do the best that I can right now. So I, I don't think we're going to ever betray that. I think that that's very much in um, uh, both Danny's and, and my own personality. And yeah. um, and like the DNA of our project. Yeah, and we, I think we've done that with our painted lives. I think we do that as a couple. Like we, we, there are certain things that we will never ever betray or sacrifice. It doesn't matter if there's more money in it somehow, or if I don't know. We we just we just know what the things that we believe in, and how far we're willing to go for certain things. So, so that that is going to be that's that's the plan um it is going to be different than the sort of things that we do but it's um uh, it's super exciting so it may open up like other um chances to interact with people but we also don't want to be like hey our painted lives is kind of over because now we're doing personalized stuff no i don't that's the other thing like we would never sacrifice what we've um constructed yeah, yeah what we've built with our painted lives um and it would be very sad to say hey guys now we're charging for classes so i'm sorry but it's all private now so thank you enjoy the videos that we have done no that's not cool i mean we could do that there's many people that do that um but let's say we don't want to do it like that yeah well, that's we not still us. want to have i'm sure that's totally fine for other people i would life. never yeah i would never try to say hey those people that don't do this they're they're not cool 
no, that's how a lot of people make their living. So I'm not here to just say, hey, that's, you know, these people are so not cool because they're not giving you everything for free. No, come on. Like, people have to make a living. We understand that. Yeah. And also, I mean, if we're being honest, we have the selling point of the paintings. Yes. But if we didn't have that, we would have to uh, find a way of getting an income in a different way. Oh, yeah. As soon as, you know, this is all good right now because it works. Like, all the gears are turning um, really well. And it feels like a like a sort of like a well-oiled machine because all those little, you know, things that, that we have um, sort of put together so that this machine just runs well are working. But if at some point, you know, people are like, hey, it's too expensive. Like buying your paintings is too expensive. We're not going to buy them anymore. Or, hey, no, you got boring. Like, you know, we liked you when you were doing... Um, more like riskier stuff but now you're just painting the same painting all over again so i'm sorry we don't yeah we moved on um there's a million reasons why people move on a million and they're all justified i feel uh you can never take people for granted that that's the other thing mm -hmm. you always have to be grateful every time i think every time we we do a video and we realize that there's people there yeah. it's, it's always exciting it's like hey people showed up and it's always people nervous. showed up i mean oh. i'm always nervous at the beginning always. i'm like someone gonna join us yeah are we gonna have to talk like ourselves <laughs> yeah uh throughout this whole session and the same thing when uh the paintings go up for sale oh i always feel like oh this is never gonna sell and like, we're always like crazy. genuinely very very grateful when they sell Always. Because that's the reason why we can be here. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully we can keep the little machine going. This little steamboat that we've built, we can keep it kind of chugging along. But we don't take it for granted. Like, again, if you take your eye off the ball, that's not cool. That's, that's not how it works. Um, you always have to, like, nurture it and take care of it and realize why it works. Um, and if if some of the reasons of why it works are the ways in which you interact with people and how close you can be to people, then never betray that. Never, ever betray that. Doesn't matter how good you get, how important you get, how famous you get. Like if that's what got you there, never betray that. That's what people are going to remember you by and that's what people are going to love you if if they... You know, I'm thinking of people that I, I um, enjoy and that have always remained approachable. Mm. And I look up to those people because I'm like, yes, you see, you can, you know, you can be successful in, you know, in your own personal projects, but it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, turn into an, a different human being. Yeah, once like you get, close your doors as soon as you yeah, once you get to reach your, somewhere. Exactly. Like, once you reach those, whatever results you had, kind of set for yourself whatever objectives if you reach them and say okay we're done now it's like hands off now i don't like it it's too many people no 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 like you can you can control those things so that you're always going to be faithful to the things that brought you to that place so yeah um emilio sorni was saying any chance for a workshop in mexico city hehe <laughs> so the thing is emilio Um, bueno, eh, re responde en español porque es para sí. algo de México. Pero, Emilio, la realidad es que pues nosotros no somos los que, los que coordinamos. Planeamos ni coordinamos. No, exacto. normalmente siempre hay personas organizadoras de esos talleres. Que invitan a Nicolás. Que tienen ya como audiencias o, si me entiende, que tienen como eh, de pronto un taller de arte o una, educación, o una institución como, como educativa en las artes. Cosas así que ya tienen como el espacio, ya tienen las personas y, y esas personas son las que se contactan con nosotros y nos dicen, oiga, queremos ofrecer un taller con usted, cuánto, cuánto cobran, eh, cómo sería um, la logística, cuántos días serían. Toca, por ejemplo, a nosotros nos pagan el tiquete, eh, la estadía uh -huh. y los días que uno trabaje el taller. Uh -huh. Entonces, de pronto por, hay, hay personas que hay veces dicen, ay, quer queremos que vengan acá. Nosotros les pagamos el tiquete y la estadía. 
Y yo digo, pues es muy bonito, o sea, es un gesto muy bonito, pero créanme que uno de etiquetes y estadía nunca podría vivir. Mm. O sea, uno tiene que devolverse y el recibo de la luz está ahí, el recibo del agua está ahí sin pagar. Claro, porque la igual, pensión como... de mis hijos del colegio toca pagarla. Y como esta es nuestra fuente de ingresos, sí, entonces... pues el estar allá hace que no estemos acá tampoco. Entonces eh, no estaríamos exacto. produciendo en ningún eh, lugar. La, el, como el ingreso que necesitaríamos para lo que dices, para pagar el, los gastos del apartamento, nuestra comida, el colegio de Samuy Fer, la comida de Samuy Fer, todo, o sea... Sí, entonces, eso hay veces es muy bonito y uno no quiere sentirse como malagradecido eh, cuando uno lo, lo invitan, pero uno también tiene que decir, gracias, pero es que este es mi trabajo. Y hay sitios que de pronto no como que no dimensionan que ese es el trabajo de uno. Uh -huh. Pero normalmente en los talleres que damos, pues siempre es, eso es lo que se entiende, ¿no? Que uno va, uno va a dar un taller, uno se tiene que quedar en algún sitio para dar un taller. A mí algunas veces me han dicho, oiga, ¿le molestaría quedarse con, con estos artistas? O sea, yo me he quedado con artistas en Londres, me quedé dos veces en casas de artistas eh, y nunca me ha afectado, nunca, nunca me ha afectado. O sea, siempre he sentido que es, es, o sea, con tal de que uno tenga como un espacio y un poquito de privacidad y uno pueda como llegar a un sitio a descansar después de haber trabajado todo el día, uh -huh. yo siempre pienso, no, eso está perfecto, o sea, yo no tengo que estar ni, no, no tienen que estar ni preocupados por mí, ni sacarme a comer todos los días, ni nada, sino más bien lo único que necesito es como un espacio para que yo pueda llegar y, descansa, y descansar sí. hasta el otro día. Eh, entonces, ni siquiera es como de, de que lo pongan a uno en un Airbnb súper bonito o en un hotel o... No, na, eso no importa. Nada de eso importa honestamente. Pero pues sí que, que la gente se dé cuenta que ese es el trabajo de uno. Sí, y digamos que la acomodación puede ser obviamente mucho más flexible, pero pues lo que tú decías, o sea, el hecho de que es tu trabajo es lo que no es flexible porque pues si no no sería rentable para nosotros sí. ir si eso no nos representara trabajo. Exacto, es que en últimas es trabajo, o sea, Exacto. seguramente, por ejemplo, las personas que están ofreciendo esos talleres le están cobrando a otras personas. Claro, porque también es su trabajo. Exacto, entonces ahí es donde uno tiene que decir, bueno, pero es que aquí trabajamos es todos. Entonces, mmm, pero todo eso para decir que, uy, o sea, a mí me fascina México, es precioso. No, y cualquier lugar que... Sí, en este caso, pues, o sea... que nos contactaran, sí. No, yo no he ido a México, digamos. Sí, es muy lindo, es una ciudad... Y super, así o como sea, estaba la... emocionada por comer en Italia, estaría... Taquitos al pastor. Pero elotes, pero... Mm. Día y noche, o sea... <risa> sí. No, 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 no. Sí, eh, en... Sí, es... México es increíble. <risa> Te preocupaste me maré, me maré. por mi... No, sí, ya te vi. Sí, porque de nuevo, ¿tú te asustaste? No, ¿tú te reíste cuando mm. yo dije dos gelatos al día? Mm. Desde acá. Sí. Ya estando allá ya no te daba risa. Porque eran tres. <risa> porque eran tres. Sí. Porque te diste cuenta que era verdad, pero yo no sé, mi amor, o sea... No, no, no. Si en seis yo... años no... No, te has y, dado no, cuenta no, no. Que... y tampoco lo hagamos sonar como no. A ver, Dani, come lo que se le da la gana, o sea... Ah, no. Yo nunca me no, meto y con obviamente, lo que Dani A ver, come. estamos molestando y yo tampoco me metería nunca con lo que tú comes. O sea, es solo chistoso porque es que era como que mi estómago para gelato era distinto a mi estómago de comida. Entonces yo podía decir estoy repleta, pero mi cerebro y mi corazón eran como... Uy, pero es que estamos en Roma y hay gelato, gelato. Entonces mi estómago hacía como... Y abría el espacio... Perfecto para una, dos o tres eh, bolas de gelato. Eh, Julia dice, ¿y eres buena para el picante, Dani? Eh, soy buena para el picante, pero, o sea, soy una colombiana que es aguanta el picante. Porque es que yo creo que es muy distinto uno decir, soy bueno para el picante estando en México. No, pues o sea, yo creo que... Ahí sería pésima para el picante. Eh, me acuerdo una vez que mi hermana, una amiga de mi hermana vino y fuimos a comer alitas. 
y ella pidió unas alitas como con la salsa más más picante y le dijeron no pero es súper picante ella vivía en Nuevo México y ella no sí yo me las puedo comer que no es México pero bueno pues eh... Nuevo México no sí no 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 no, México, no. Pero... no 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 pues para la, para pero come esto. seguramente mucha comida mexicana digamos pues ella le llegaron las alitas y dijo no pero no están picantes y nosotros, ay, debe ser que no te las pusieron picante. Y ella, no, en serio, pruébenlas. Mi hermana y yo probamos. Mi boca era de acá a acá. O sea, se me hinchó la boca terrible. Mi hermana no podía hablar. Le trajeron leche a mi hermana. <risa> no, patético. Y ella como, no, pues sí, de pronto es que estoy acostumbrada a otro, a otro picante. Pero es que mi hermana me decía que ella específicamente era como... O, o sea, fan del picante, pero picante de comerse chiles así enteros y no. Entonces, si ese es ser Fua. bueno para el picante, yo Qué no pena. soy buena para el picante. Pero me gusta. Pero en su medida, ¿eh? como más o menos. Yo no, yo soy pésimo. Pero creo que poco a poco has empezado no. como... A... No, pero digamos... Mi blancura, eh, <risa> mi blancura es, es en todo. ¿Sí? O sea, me comporto como un eh, estereotipo de hombre blanco, rosadito. Pero... Que eh... si me arriman un plato de picante, estoy, me pongo a sudar sin saber por qué. No, pero yo creo que... A ver, cuando yo empecé a salir contigo, yo creo que tú ni siquiera te abrías a la posibilidad de, no sé, una hamburguesa con pollo picante. Ni siquiera. Y ahora te gusta. O sea, siento que has como subido un poquito tu nivel de picante. Pero pero no deja de ser patético. No, de nuevo, no estoy diciendo que eres bueno para el picante. Estoy mm. diciendo que dentro de lo que es tu cuerpo, has subido un poquito la tolerancia al picante. Patético. ¿A Julia le gusta el picante? Uh, cuando estábamos hablando de eh, lo de doméstica. No, cuando Ana Azuela preguntó por lo de doméstica. Eh... Camila Ogorman dice, no, no hay forma de que doméstica sea un éxito para ningún profesor. Y una carita llorando, riéndose. Ay, Camila. Camila, qué Sí, ese ha sido, Camila, sin que tengas que decir nada para que no te pongamos en ninguna posición incómoda. Pero eh, eh, siempre ha sido mi, mi, mi cuestionamiento a, hacia doméstica que... Que pues los creadores, o sea, y yo sé que las producciones de estos eh, cursos pues son mucho más complejas de lo que uno cree y ellos tienen también equipos de producción que ayudan para hacer esos videos, entonces pues ellos obviamente también ponen mucho de, de su parte eh, eh, para poder eh, ejecutar estos videos, eh, pero la realidad es que los videos no existirían si no fuera por los artistas que están uh -huh. haciendo el trabajo. Eh, y por las personas que de pronto ya conocen a esos artistas y entonces cuando uno dice bueno, si, si el artista es como la variable fundamental en este ejercicio pues seguramente eh, están siendo reconocidos y remunerados eh, generosamente por ese trabajo porque no tienen por qué serlo no tiene por qué no, no serlo, serlo, perdón. Sí. Eh, y, pues, anecdóticamente, lo que yo, pues, me he dado cuenta es que, es que el, obviamente, eh, por el volumen de, de videos que se ofrecen en doméstica, pues, quien gana es quien los ofrece, mm. no, quien, no necesariamente quien los hace. Y pues a, a mí eso me, me, pues no sé, me duele un resto porque mm. yo siempre estaré, yo, yo creo que la relac esas relaciones laborales son súper importantes, pero pues yo siempre voy a estar del lado de los artistas, mm. siempre. O sea, siempre voy a proteger a mi, a mi compañero artista, siempre, sí. siempre. Entonces me duele un poco cuando... Esos ejercicios pueden ser exitosos, pero solo, son, solo terminan siendo, o son aparentemente exitosos, pero cuando uno pues se pone a, 
a buscar un poquitico más profundo, uno se da cuenta que son exitosos es para una parte. De una de las dos partes que están involucradas. Entonces... Uh, Peter Smeekens was saying, I absolutely love the Marathon Podcast. Feel free to tune into Vintage Nicolas anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, that's a little too much. I felt weird that day that I was like, oh my God, people are going to just absolutely hate this. Like, oh, but I remember I... you told me that you were talking uh, with John that there was a long podcast at that moment, like someone had the record, maybe like three hours. And I was like, and you were like, oh, I could, I could do more. And you two just, kept going yeah the, and going the cool thing going. is that it never <laughs> felt forced the no. fact that we kept going never it really didn't feel at all forced it was just we were having a good time talking mm -hmm. so it would have been one of those things that um you meet someone and they're super cool and you're just hanging out at a bar and you realize that you've been talking and talking and talking and having beer after beer after beer yeah for tons of hours and you're like oh my god it's like three in the morning or oh my god it's like four in the morning yeah. and and we didn't even realize it because we've been having like a cool conversation honestly for me jokes aside it just felt like that it just felt like somebody who was very open to to talking and um and i enjoy talking so julia tovar dice <coughs> perdón <laughs> creo que respuesta muy parecida a la tuya dani Acá me sentía medio pro y cuando fui a México, patética. No aguantaba nada. Sí, yo, es que por eso hice la aclaración, porque yo creo que ese sería mi caso. Leslie Cavazos Garduño. ¿Gavazos Garduño? Uh -huh, dice, hola, van a dejar los dibujitos de la pared de atrás. Me gusta mucho que están ahí como pequeños testigos. Mi hermana me regañó, mi hermana me dijo que los tenía que dejar. Oye, además estoy yo con mi saco... En el puente peatonal. No, 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 este, mira, no. Aquí, mira. arrastrando. De pronto dejamos a la, a la Dani... A la Dani acalorada. A la Dani menopáusica. Ay, sí. Ay. Ay. Es que es muy tiernito. Además es chiquitico como yo, me encanta. Me encanta. Ay. Ay. Eh, a ver... Um, Arsen Art was saying, hello, can I use your pillow keeper painting as a reference in order to make a 3D model just for personal use? And I will mention you, of course. Pillow. Oh, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, let's collab. And uh, if you 3D print that, dude, let's make some uh, statues. Hell yeah. Uh, Agustina Caruso. Dice, hola Nico y Dani, qué precioso siempre verlos pintar y charlar por acá. Muchas gracias por todo el contenido, contenido y el trabajo arduo. Ay, muchas gracias, Agustina. ¿Qué dice la Agus? Agus, cuéntenos cómo le fue. Agustina estuvo en la Academia de Repping. ¿Sí? Sí, hizo un curso veranero. Yo ahí todo Uy. chismoso, estaba pendiente. Spill the tea. Agus. Agus, cuéntenos cómo le fue, por favor. Ay, sí, qué chévere. Se veía re chévere. Allá hay gente muy talentosa. O sea, yo sé, yo sé que es súper sensible hablar de Rusia en este momento y uno entiende todo eso. Uno entiende por qué. Pero yo siempre diré que una cosa es un gobierno y otra cosa es la gente. Y una cosa es un gobierno, un gobierno que dura, pues ojalá no sea un gobierno que se instale y se convierta como en una... Eh, en, un presidente que se vuelve un dictador, que tristemente eso es lo que tiene Rusia, pero, pero uno siempre quiere que eventualmente, pues, como que la gente tenga un, el gobierno que se merece. Pero lo que, lo que yo siempre, más allá de, de lo que esté pasando ahora, que pues son unos, unos crímenes terribles, pero más allá, de nuevo, y, y el único culpable de todo eso es un gobierno... Eh, más allá de eso, cuando pienso en la gente, la historia de la gente, la cultura, es, o sea, Rusia tiene, tiene una historia fascinante. Y, y no, no sería, eh, al menos en mi caso, yo tendría un poquitico como de distancia 
y, y digo, soy eh, muy crítico de estos aspectos de ese gobierno, pero de la gente y de su historia siempre voy a celebrar la, la, las maravillas que han hecho. Y en Rusia la música, la pintura, el teatro, la danza, o sea, ellos, ellos son grandes en la humanidad, en eso. En la humanidad, es que al final todos somos uno. Y, y eso yo nunca lo, lo, lo descartaría por más de que haya un momento súper difícil eh, por el que esté pasando un, un, um, un país. Entonces, se me hace bonito que, que dentro de... De toda, de toda esta tragedia que está sucediendo, uno puede acordarse que el arte está por encima de todo eso, que el arte como que llegue, sale a la superficie y, y puede vivir eh, a pesar de, de, de esa maldad que puede como, no sé, que puede proyectar un ser humano y lo puede llevar a hacer cosas tan terribles como las que están pasando. Entonces, Agus, chévere que haya ido allá, allá fue... Una exalumna mía, ella pasó, si no estoy mal, Natalia estuvo allá hmm, como año y medio de pronto, o, o de pronto hasta dos años. Pero pues cuéntenos si, si puede, la Agus, ¿cómo le fue? Mm, Margo, cuando yo estaba hablando del libro de A Franz le dolía el estómago, sí dice... Soy del equipo, Franz. A mí me dolía la barriga cuando tenía que ir al colegio. Hmm. ¿Sabes quién también? Al Samu. Sí, iba a decir. Samu se le estaba convirtiendo en una, en un dolor recurrente, curiosamente, cuando había algún, algún examen. examen. <risa> Ay, Samuel. Se levantaba como, no puedo del estómago, no puedo. Sí, no me puedo mover. No puedo. Yo, tran yo tranquilo, Samu, te vas a sentir mejor ahorita, no te preocupes. Te vas a sentir métete mejor a la ducha. mientras respondes del examen. Sí, yo métete a la ducha. Y después me daba cuenta, a la semana siguiente me daba cuenta que traía la mala nota del examen de ese día. Y yo, ah, no, este es el estómago. Esa era la razón del estómago. Eh, Tom Jordan. Tom Tom. Tom Tom Jordan. Yeah. Tom, saying... Tom 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 Tom. I, that was really difficult, but I tried That's it. That's the one that... Uh, I, I'm sorry. Dan, My... you're hitting everything today. <laughs> no, I'm not hitting the camera. I'm just like no, trying to... I see the statues move, the lamps oh. <laughs> move, because everything is connected to the desk. No, it's because the I have to be... Like, my chair has to be touching the desk. No, don't tell so me. So I oh. don't touch the mm -hmm. tripod. Don't tell me. So... Mm. And I'm trying to... Yeah, how does that find... feel? A place. Mm. Welcome to my world for the last three years. What? Well, that's how oh, I. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, how yeah. I work. Yeah. What? No, because I said. Thank you for the acknowledgement. Trying, no, no, no. But I said. Oh I'm my trying God. to find my place, I knew it. and I you know. were like, I'm, "Welcome I'm invisible. to my life." I'm invisible here. I You're know. never invisible. I. I was the one invisible, and people thought that uh, you made you it were up. Inventing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's this Danny. Danny. Danny mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah, yeah, so this Danny that we see in like stock photos. <laughs> um okay, so uh Thumb was yeah. saying, have either of you played any of the Elder Scrolls games? No. So no, I haven't. Have you, Thumb? No, me neither, uh Tom. Thumb. I'm not um I tried to play the uh I guess the last one. I tried. I hated the combat, though. I really did, because I am I'm a souls born person, so I just can't deal with combat that doesn't feel like cool combat. And um, yeah, Skyrim felt like oof. I don't know. I just can't deal with that. Mm, Camille O'Gorman. Oh. Dice viene espectacular la pintura. Ahí va, cara, ahí va, lento. Una cara con la boca abierta. Lento, lento. Eh, Liad was saying, okay, I'm back. I had a work meeting. Nicolás and Dani. Yes, When Leah. you're in Texas for the Kickstarter book, would you be open to doing a fan meetup at a museum or something? Yes, but... Yeah, so we would have to... As soon uh, as we're done. Manage, exactly, all the shipping things and we could do a little meetup as a, like, celebrate celebratory meetup yeah, after yeah, yeah. all the shipping but yeah of course 
I don't know I don't how know many fans yeah, we have I don't in know Houston. It's gonna be like Leah. I think and it's Leah and we, us yeah. and a couple of beers. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it, which so, is totally fine. Yeah, that would be amazing. That yeah. would be fun. So, is someone in uh, Texas? Someone here? Well, listening Texas to- is enormous. So. Okay. That's the thing. If we say Dallas, it's like, hey, I'm in Dallas. Sorry. Yeah. Or, hey, I'm in yeah. Austin. Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> we would have to <laughs> plan it. But, yeah. But that would, would be, be for it. that would be a ton of fun, and it would be a nice way to say, oh, we, we did it. We finished. Yes. Um. Let's see. Hmm. Cody was saying, Liad, we did not talk about Elden Ring at all while you were gone. In a <laughs> laughing emoji. And Liad said, Cody, great, because I want the Nicholas and Roslyn update on Elden Ring. So mine is a little sad because um, I haven't played in a, lit- in a while. And I'm, I'm, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm, I think I'm not playing because I'm sad that it's going to finish. And I don't want it to finish. I don't want it to finish. And um, and the cool thing is, is that I think I am not OP, but OPL. I think I think I'm. Yeah, thank you, Danny. For that. Uh, thank you. That was. That you was have great. to acknowledge my jokes. Thank you, Danny, for uh, for that. Uh, no, but I I think I'm doing well, like really well. I'm probably over leveled, to be honest. Um, I have cheesed uh, a spot that I always go to to farm. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. I describe it or is it like... You can describe it. I mean, most people that know that game know that spot. So, so. it's like a part in a mountain, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has like a risk. Uh, nope. <laughs> no, that's not that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I'm not going to say anything. You keep going. You, How you, do you say that? I don't know. I don't. This is all you, Danny. Like Nicolas, no, you can't Google it. Don't Google gonna, it. Come of on. Of course, I'm going to Google. No, it. come on, come on. It, no, what's that? Risco? No se dice así en español. I'm. I don't. Because it says crag. Because crag. I. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, Danny, keep going. I like when when you um. I, I think everyone loves that the way you say things is cool. Like, everyone just acknowledges that <laughs> yes, that's how you say. I things. mean, Google Translate, and I wrote "risco de montaña," and it ha- it has activated the <laughs> safe search. No, the te- like detection of the language. What language did we say? Galician detected. Very nice. <laughs> So, Old world. Um, no. So I'm going to describe it in a different way. Yes, that's always better. <coughs> so you go to a place. Yeah. I would say it's like a mountain. Yeah. And it has like a free fall border. Go ahead. I don't. Go it. ahead. Yeah. And there's like big headed, uh, cute, because I think they're cute. Yeah. Uh, characters like yeah. working and you have to kill them. And in the, what I called risk, so like in the free fall of the mountain. <laughs> in the risk or free fall of the mountain, yeah. yeah. You can see another part of land yeah. where there's a dragon. Okay. And you have to like uh, throw an arrow. Yeah. And then you have to run back. So it tries to run towards you, yeah. but then it falls. Yes. And then you get the money. Yeah, not quite a dragon, but yes. Okay. It's like a big, big crow demon thing. Okay, and not uh, quite. And not quite a, a risk. risk but, but you're yes. taking a risk because um, you fall from that free fall. Sometimes. I have fallen. No, not really. Beginning. I've gotten killed. No, because I remember. Oh, it's a bird. Because Tom said, "Is it the bird?" Yeah, it's the where crow you shoot thing. it with an arrow yes. and run into the ravine. Rava- ravine. I don't know. I'm not gonna. T- I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> uh, but um, no, I was gonna tell you that I remember once you fold, that you were like, "Oh, I found a super cool place to farm." Yeah. And you were showing it to me, and you fold. 
like you fall down the risk. Okay. Yeah. So I did take, I have to say, I did take advantage of that spot. Um, probably more than I should have, to be 100% honest. So I'm way, way over leveled, which is the way I love to play Souls games. I always summon people, although I never used to summon, I, I didn't have the mimic tier uh, for, I don't know, three quarters of the game. Never had it. I had like, uh, who, I, who was I using? Initially, I would use jelly. Who, who I, I think it's like super cool, the jellyfish. Um, and uh, and then eventually, I leveled up this dude that has no head and can teleport. And I thought he was like pretty good, but he was like kind of useless. And then I, I realized that a ton of people were, were speaking about the mimic and the mimic. And I was like, what is that thing? I, I, I've never looked for it. I've never, I don't know where it is. I don't care about it. But let me see what it is, and or let me see where it is. And it was like in one of those little dungeons, and I was like, okay, let me try to get this. And I got it, and suddenly I had all the stuff to level it up because I had it was so far into I was so far into the game that I could like level it up, level it up immediately to like the highest. And I was like, okay, this is like so OP. So now whenever there's a boss or anything, oh, I just call upon myself which is the mimic and we just beat the crap out of anything honestly it's like it is way way too op but i usually with almost every boss like i try to beat them by myself a couple of times and if i can i feel awesome but if i can't i i, I always summon people always summon people i think that's a really cool way of of, of playing that game it's like i'm always going to try to do it by myself but um, but if I realize that it's like, oh, this is too hard, I'm fine. I, I have no, no ego, no issues in calling people. Like, I, I really literally play those games for fun. I don't play it to try to impress any other, like anyone else. So I think actually it was a crag. Oh, that's, uh, that's a very old, that's old word. The then. name, yeah. Uh... Ye old crag. Oh, so cliff, maybe. Cliff is super... Because it says a steep, rugged rock or a cliff. I would say that's a cliff, yeah. No, but look, I, I looked for a crag. Okay. And look. I had never read look. crag. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's to me, it's like... Como un peñasco. Yeah. Mm. But I get... I think the important thing is that you described it beautifully. Yeah. I, I no, think you were not flawless. Not beautifully, but uh, Perfectly. you got what I was trying to say. Oh, always. Uh, Thumb said, it's a craggy cliff. There we go. Yes. Um, Liad was saying, did you beat Melania? I Nicolas? did. I did. I did beat her. I have her set. Um, I... Don't think I mean I had fights where I was doing it by myself that like she can a hundred percent kill like kill you in two hits. In two hits, she can totally like it seems like the most unfair fight in the world. Then I realized if you start staggering her, if you if you go at her, she you can actually, you know, have a really, really good chance to beat her. The thing is, you're so overwhelmed by her being so powerful so quickly that you don't believe that it's a fair fight. But honestly, if you just go at her, oh, that's you can actually fight her. So I was like super close, super close um, for tons of times. And then, you know, I decided to start summoning people. And I think it was like... Um, uh, the second summon that I that I did, because Samu was there when I uh, I was fighting her. Mm -hmm. uh, oh no! I <laughs> ended up like summoning somebody who was so OP, like a mage that was so OP that um, uh, I did a ton of like the hard work at the beginning at the uh, first uh, phase, and then this dude, as soon as she appeared, he blasted her with that 
like ray that blue ray is it blue or purple i i don't know that just keeps going you they can just go like do 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 and he just like annihilated her and i was like what what is this thing cuz i play melee so i never ever ever use spells or anything i just i like playing melee melee so yeah so that felt a little cheap but i gave myself probably dozens of of chances to um to actually fight her so when when we beat her that way i was like okay i guess you know fine i'll take this mm. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when i was asking if there's people in texas yeah uh pair gineros yeah pair janero was saying i can go to houston me i'm in texas And, no way. Uh Cody Winicky said I would drive to Texas to hang out with you guys depending on the timing of it all. Oh, And that's awesome. Said, I'm down for that. There And we go. Pair, so. Pair Janeiro. Mm -hmm. Was saying uh Liad we should carpool. Oh, that's awesome. I I didn't realize that. If we have like five people, that's you know, that's a table of a bar, so yeah. that would be cool. That would be super cool. Yeah. So we would meet uh Pair Gineros. Cantar de Llano. No el país, llano. Cantar de Brisa del Río. <laughs> Ay, Pair Gineros, tu corazón será mío. No, no sé. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Qué fue eso? No sé, es que estaba cantando Carmentea y se me fue. Pair. Se Pero me fue lo que así. siento por Pair. Sonaste pato. Y lo he tratado de ocultar o sea, todos estos años. El comentario incómodo. Risa, peor. Dijiste, ah, ah. Uy, fatal, sí. mi amor, fatal, fatal. ¿Cómo enamorar y perder Uy. a alguien en un segundo? No, no creo que nadie se enamoró ni con el comentario ni con la risa. Ay, Nicolás. Um, a ver, ¿dónde estaba yo? ¿Ves? Me desubicaste toda, Nicolás, pues, por eso. Cuando canto llanero, siempre, siempre te desubico. Bueno, lo bueno es que la risa fue tan incómoda que se, hasta se me olvidó el comentario. ¿Sí ves? Sí. <ríe> eh, Daniela Barrera dice, ¿Sí? hola a todos, hermosa pintura, ya que están hablando de juegos. <ríe> Espera. ¿Daniela no fue la que me dijo Coquito el otro día? No. ¿No? No, no, no. Ah, bueno. Dice, además el otro día, ayer. Ayer. Eh, ya que están hablando de juegos, han jugado el Red Dead Redemption 2. No, es yo... una maravilla estéticamente Ay. y en su historia. Sí, Daniela, Daniela. Pero, pero yo jugué por ahí, no sé, como 15 horas. Es que es lento. O ¿Cuál sea, es? A ver. Es súper bonito, es de como cowboys, pues. A ver, lo veo. Sí. Yo jugué como 15 horas. Eh, Daniela y ay, yo no sé qué me pasó ¿sabe dónde me, ata me atasqué? además súper temprano yo creo tenía que como parar un tren o estaban robando un tren y entonces uno tenía como que cuadrar con eh, el recorrido del tren para, para, para parar, hacer parar la, el, eh, el robo y yo intenté eso unas veces y yo decía no, qué mamera porque no podía, me mataban, entonces tenía que esperar a que otra vez como que el tren hiciera el recorrido y otra vez como que ir al sitio para poder uno encaramarse en el tren. O no era, no era parar un robo, era seguramente robarse, robar el tren. Pregunta. Y no. Es que creo que tú me mostraste el tráiler, pero es que viendo las gráficas es, creo ah. que es el... Pero déjame y digo. Sí, señora, qué pena. Es el de... en el que sale Gustavo Fringe como actor. O sea... No, 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 ese es un... No, ese, ese es un... Um, ese es un Far Cry, que es como en Cuba, en una Cuba. Ah, no, ya. no, no, este es de vaqueros, literal. Ah, no, no, no. Este es como vaqueros, yo no sé qué, qué año es eso. Por ahí, no sé, 1900, no, no sé, 1910, no, no sé. Eh, por, no, porque incluso este es como la precuela al primero. Y el primero lo jugué más tiempo... Eh, Daniela y, tam y no lo acabé lo, el primero lo di jugar un montón pero lo charro es que por ejemplo en el, el, el Elden Ring he jugado como no sé, como 130 horas o sea, 
estoy re mal con ese juego y estoy feliz. Pair Gineros dice, bueno, punto, punto, punto. Chao, muchachos, punto, punto, punto. Abuelo Simpson. Ya una persona menos para el meetup en Texas, Nicolás. Sí. Ya no hay, eh, no, me, no hay bar que valga. Eh, a ver. O se está? fue a arreglar, o se fue al baño sí, a arreglar. Bueno, sí, suena el timbre acá. Eh, Elaine Shukri was saying, would you recommend uh, then that I do an in-depth study of Diego Velázquez's artwork or Uf. Rembrandt? I feel like I'm constantly asking dry questions about art, sorry. Do you believe doing a follow-up course... Uh, in-depth color study will improve painting skills significantly? <coughs> I think uh, painting skills improve significantly when you paint. You know, when you're painting um, as consistently as you can. Because that's the only way that you're going to build up this, this the necessary relationship that you have to have with paint. Um... The I I would think the most effective ways of doing that are guided experiences. So it is not the same to paint alone. Like you could, I would much rather, I'll put it like this. I would much rather paint for 10 hours or 15 hours under um, under guidance that is very wise and that has experience. Um than painting by myself for a hundred. Because many times you you can't see the things that you're doing, not wrong, but that are maybe obstacles that you're hitting constantly. And that they're, they are like, you are capable of overcoming them because in essence, honestly, um, there's, you know, there's always a way to overcome things in, in art in painting, uh, particularly, there's always like things that can make it a little bit easier, but you have to know where to look for them. And usually if, if you are under the guidance of a teacher or the direction of an instructor that can kind of like clear up the way for you so you don't get discouraged or, um, or confused by what's in front of you, then those few hours that you can have with those people are so much more valuable than than anything that you could do by yourself. And I'm saying this, um, I think, when you're working with an academic purpose in mind, when you're working, you know, eventually when you decide to embark on this path that you can only embark on your own, yeah, I mean, you can you can go to people, you know, you can show them your work, you can take workshops, but most of the answers are going to come from you. They're not going to come from other people. Uh, but I think initially, yes, like the most effective way of dealing with, um, with these challenges is to have, you know, some sort of tutor, some sort of program, some sort of structure that you can follow for sure. So, and uh, oh, yes, sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, go no, because no, Al Elaine was answering. Yes. So Elaine was saying, thanks, Nicolas. The guided painting is definitely something I want to invest time in as I feel like I can see the challenges and work through them, but I don't know if they are right or wrong per se. Yeah, I think that's, you, you kind of want those opinions. Um, and, you know, if, if, it's, if there's a great p painter in front and you, for example, you trust her work and you you're a big fan of what they do um you're more prone to listen to them to interiorize what they're saying um to pay attention to act upon the uh suggestions that they they would give you and um and maybe they are capable of seeing things that you are not and that's totally fine that's what you know that's our job when we do workshops our job is to provide maybe clarity that you're lacking in some aspects. And um, if, if we're able to provide that, you know, that's, that is a successful uh, workshop, to be honest. Um, it doesn't have to be a workshop that is uh, full of just amazing painting. 
No, it has to it it it's a workshop that has to give you answers. And um and I think that those answers can be many times like honestly easily found depending on on who you decide to open the door, you know, for and say, "Hey, I want to listen to you. I want to pay attention to what you say." Um who those people are, that's up to you to decide. I'm not here to tell you like who is a great instructor, who is a bad instructor. I think that the instructors that would work for me are not necessarily the instructors that can speak to other people. Uh, in the same way that I feel that the people that choose me as an instructor, they do so because they feel that the way I can talk to them is a way in which they understand. Um, but that is for you to decide. Like the the good thing, um, Elaine, is that there's no wrong answers here. Like when you're talking about great painters, I don't think there would be like anything wrong when choosing, you know, who you're going to um, to pay attention to. And and hopefully those those choices that you make have to do with your personality and with the type of painting that they like. The most obvious one is like to see their work and to say, oh, my God, my work, her work moves me like she's amazing. For example, when I see uh, Zoe Frank uh, painting, it's like, oh, yes, like that's her that that's the person for me. Like I would sit down, shut up and listen to anything she would say because she is that good. And I want to be able to open up to a person uh, and be vulnerable to that person and say, I'm here to learn from you. Um, I feel that when Angela Sung that does, you know, her gouache paintings with, with just that beautiful management of color, I'm like, hell yeah. Like she knows what she's doing. I would a thousand percent just be here, sit down, shut up and just listen to her. Um I think that that's, you know, if Samantha, if Samantha Herring was doing, we're going to do a workshop about painting these little bags, these little plastic bags and cardboard bags. And I would sit there just in awe and say, I want to be here just looking at you paint. Um, so I don't think, you know, among people that are super talented and hopefully that they have proven that they can, um, that they are good at sharing the knowledge that they have. Because many times you get incredibly talented painters, but they're not really good at the way they share their, you know, knowledge or they they can um, make something complicated, something that, that is very complicated as painting, uh, make it sound simple so that people can understand it. Um, there are many painters that are like that. They're incredible painters, but not, you know, great instructors are great teachers. So um, if you find the people, those people that can be um, equally uh, great painters, but also you you have heard from other people that maybe have gone to uh, workshops and have taken their workshops that they and, and, and they'll say like, oh, no, this was a this was an experience like they are awesome. They are absolutely awesome. Like you know, these were, th that was the week of my life. Like it changed my life this week. Um, okay, that's a little tall, a, a, too tall of an order to change somebody's life in, in like a week's worth of painting. <laughs> but, you know, but but many times those experiences carry that weight for a lot of us. Um, so I would I would suggest that you work hard to find that that person that you wish you could, you know, uh, share your your work with and that you know that you're going to get something back that is important for you that it's going to be valuable for you and um and then yeah build a relationship with that person and trust what they're saying that's also super important don't be defensive you know if you're there with with a with an instructor and you're willing to open up and you're willing to be vulnerable um then trust them trust them trust what they're going to say uh, I know that that's tough, but you have to do it at some point. So those are the things that you could do personally, I feel. But then there's like tons of books that you can get, Elaine. There's tons of like um, 
um, online workshops that you can attend to that are that are super cool that not necessarily give you full access to uh, to an instructor, but that you're going to be working with a bunch of people and seeing what they do and um, it's going to be like a like a nice healthy environment. So um, I think you could do that too. I I always feel weird um, sharing the people that I think are very good at those because I don't want to either uh, make everyone feel like other instructors would not be worth it uh, or that um, that I have like some sort of agenda pushing, you know, um, the instructors that I, the painters that I like. So I'm always a, a little bit hesitant about saying, oh, you should definitely take a workshop with them because maybe I suggest that and maybe you take the workshop and you're like, worst workshop ever. Thank you, but no, never again. Like he was an idiot or something that I'm like, really? Oh, maybe with me, it's different or for me, it's different. Or maybe for me at that time when I had a relationship with these painters, it was different. But, you know, maybe things have changed or I don't know. So it's best that you do that research, you know, on your own and you make up, you know, your own mind about what suits you best, I feel. But um, I'm, I, I also feel that, you know, maybe in the Discord and Liat could, could, um, could say if this is true, maybe there's people there that have taken workshops and maybe you could just float that question and say, hey, guys, I'm new here, but I just wanted to uh, hear about your experiences doing workshops with um, painters. And they can give you their honest experience. I, I think their honest, um, you know, reviews of those workshops uh the way they interacted with those those teachers, I think that's the best way to to know if some if somebody is for you, if if you know taking if making this investment and taking this workshop is that many times is a really big investment for many people. That if it's something that it ultimately it's going to work for you. So yeah, but I think that's that sort of. Um, um, hard work, you have to do it on your own. Angela Song. Oh, was look, stop it. Sending some crying faces. Oh, with stop it. With unique and a heart. Oh, stop it, Angela. Why are you here? Come on. You should be uh, sleeping because you work too damn much. Um, no, Angela, I think Angela is amazing. I think Angela is amazing. I, I think proof of how good she is is how much people that you can see how much people that that are her um kind of like recurring students how much they love her um i think proof of how much she knows is her own work which is brilliant which is absolutely brilliant so what she does with warrior painters i i really admire profoundly so um again put yourself in hands of people that are respectful and caring of your time and you know good professionals and i think that you know those experiences can be so varied. Um, Amy was doing, Amy Herrickson was doing um, a workshop with, together with um, Angela and Kaylee. And I think Amy did amazing. Yeah, and you could tell because people were loving what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could tell from the work that uh, Amy was doing also. So again, good people, they respect your time. They respect the investment you have done. They treat you with respect. And they're going to make you work hard and they're going to be generous with their time and they're going to be they're going to try to explain things thoroughly. Um, I think that that's the best. So look around. Um, there's tons of places that can provide that for you. But yeah, but you need to find what works for you. That is the most important thing. You know what? Maybe what what some people can provide is like, oh, this is amazing, but this is not quite for me that like. This is this was um, let's say if, if you take something of mine, but you wanted it to be very efficient because you are I don't know let's say a concept uh, you you work in in as a concept designer uh, and you do character design for video games or animation or something and you took a painting class and you go like well that was cool but it, it was too open for me like it was a little too abstract and too open because I I think my courses are usually like super open. Um, you know, the, that's the personality that I have. So I am 
very broad when I talk about painting. And I always try to um, think, I, I try to introduce things that people would not think are, mm, are um, kind of adjacent to the exercises that we're doing. And I tried to show them that they are, you know, that there is a world of painting that may not feel like it should feed into what we're doing, but it's actually super, super interesting. And um, and maybe somebody who was looking for something that was far more um, structured and specific would say, I loved doing that, but I hoped that this would help me with my portfolio of characters. And I didn't find that here. And I would be like, yeah, no, I totally get it. Like that's, yeah, sure. That's, that makes total sense. So, um, so yeah, so be sure to like shop around and look around, ask questions. I think people that usually um, are, are doing courses or workshops, they, it's in their best interest to let you know everything that they are offering. Um, so if you look for those people and for those workshops, um, if, if, um, if they are directed by people that are, that are, you know, good professionals, they'll always be able to help you out and, and give you a hand and say, this is what we're offering. Maybe this is not for you or we're, or we're going to make it super clear as to what we're offering. So you know exactly what you're getting into. Um, but yeah, um, I could help out if you want. Uh, Elaine, just giving you suggestions, personal suggestions, but, but I, you know, I would have to talk to you to see where you are with your painting and what you want and at what stage, you know, you are, and, and maybe you want like super fundamental things. So you want something that doesn't feel advanced and doesn't feel like too overwhelming. You just want to like really, really, really concentrate on basics. Like you've, you've noticed that when you paint, it's like, yeah, I paint, but I always struggle with values. Like it's almost embarrassing. I don't even want to admit it, but I've been painting for um, 10 years and I still have a hard time with values. So I really need somebody to kick my ass and say, no, come on, like, let's, let's work on this for this whole week. So just to remind you, and just to give you a little sense of structure that, that this is something overcomable, like this is something that when we work together, we can, you know, we can make um, exercises that are going to give you, um, that are going to give you enough tools and enough, enough of a sort of mind space where you're going to realize that you can deal with these things. It's just that you need to focus on them like super, super specifically. Um, so yeah, so maybe what you're looking for and what you need is that something that can be that fundamental and that basic, which doesn't mean that it's easy. Um, or maybe what you're looking for is more something that's, um, that can help you build your portfolio. You know, you are just, yes, you want to paint, but you just want to have talks with somebody to try and figure out the, the character of the work that you want to, um, that you want to show around when you're looking for a, for a job or a gallery or, you know, a studio. So you just want to run it by, you know, artists that you respect and you, you want to have conversations. It's almost like I'm paying this money to have a com cause I've had people like this. That's why I'm saying it's like, I'm paying this money, but yes, it is to paint, you know, alongside all these like cool people that are attending the workshop. But it's also because I want to have like these moments of conversation with you and want to run things by you and want to show you my work. And I want to, you know, ask you what you think. And I want that little bit of, of feedback that can be super, super important at that time that can, you know, set me on on my ways or it can give me it's almost like I already knew the answer. But these, you know, with the, with the comments that they were making, like they're confirming <laughs> what I what I know to be true about like my path and you just needed that little bit of assure like assurance um yeah people need very very different things they seek very different things and they're all cool that's like it's awesome but you need to recognize those things first i feel um 
Angela Sang said, thank you so much again, Nicolas and Daniela. I gotta run. See you later. In all caps, amazing painting. Oh, thank you. Stop it then. Stop it. She uh, works too much, by the way. She works way too much. She's amazing, but she works too much. Oscar C. Dice, vine por la pintura y estoy mejorando mi inglés. Y un Oscarito riendo. Grande Oscarín. Um, Cosette Pineda estaba diciendo muy buenas, pero qué belleza, mis respetos. Muy querida Cosette últimamente, Hola, Cosette. ¿no? Cosette. Muy últimamente. querida últimamente. Desde no, que ya es no es no. paz, sino Pineda. Sí, ella empezó en reversa. Um, a ver. Emilio Sorni dice, ¿por qué cree que la pintura rusa del siglo... ¿Por qué creen que la pintura mm -hmm. rusa del siglo XIX sea tan diferente al resto de Europa? Porque estaban... Bueno, no estaban tan cerrados a, al resto de Europa, pero, pero sí era pues lo que uno decía como la cortina de hierro. O sea, sí era una cosa casi que insular. Era el, era el proceso de ellos. Eso no, no, a ellos como que en, en, en algún nivel no les estaba, no les importaba lo que estaba pasando en Europa. El, el, el imperio de ellos era el imperio de ellos, la historia de ellos es la historia de ellos. O sea, yo, yo he tenido la oportunidad de conocer rusos en mi vida y los rusos todos son muy parecidos en donde, o sea, el mundo gira alrededor de Rusia. Hay una historia del mundo que es la historia que le cuentan a la gente y hay una historia del mundo que a ellos les gusta como contársela a la demás gente, a la gente que van conociendo, que es la historia donde Rusia es como eh, la, la que eh, la causante de muchísimas cosas que uno le adjudica a otros sitios eh, en el mundo, a, particularmente como a otros países en Europa. Entonces... Y países cercanos muchas sí, veces. Sí, ellos muchas veces dicen, eso lo habíamos hecho en Rusia 200 años antes. O eso, es, eso se había escrito en Rusia eh, 50 años antes. O la gente piensa que esto comenzó con este artista y realmente no, era este artista que 20 años antes había, eh, había hecho esto. O este otro artista lo que pasa es que fue a Moscú y conoció a este artista, entonces después se fue a París y empezó a pintar así y ahí se volvió famoso. Eh, es súper curioso, o sea, esa... esa ese amor que ellos tienen por, por Madre Rusia es como, eh, es, o sea, es súper, súper evidente. Pero entonces eso hace que, que, que le tengan un respeto exageradísimo a, a todos los hallazgos eh, que han tenido eh, durante ese, esos procesos eh, creativos. O sea, y lo que, entonces lo que pasa en música para ellos es enorme, en danza es enorme, en pintura es enorme. Absolutamente enorme. Los pintores itinerantes son una locura. Una locura. O sea, son de los mejores pintores de ese momento de la historia en, en el planeta. Entonces, sí, por eso es que pues esa, esas academias todavía funcionan y parecen atascadas en el tiempo. Yo, de pronto, Agus estaba un poquito ocupada, pero, pero, pero son, son como... O sea, son sitios que parecen hasta mágicos porque, porque se están haciendo cosas que, que son eh, como anacrónicas. O sea, hay, hay muchos dibujos de, de la Academia hasta de Repen que uno dice, uy, eso es un dibujo de 1890. Y uno se pone a ver y es como, no, este dibujo es de 1981. Y es sí. como, ¿what? ¿Qué? O sea, ¿cómo así? ¿Por qué se, estaba ahí? O sea, ¿por qué se mantenía todo eso congelado ahí? Y es porque no pues nunca les importó abrirse a otras cosas. Ellos tenían su proceso y iban a ser fieles a su proceso. A ver, Uf, ¿no estás muerto del frío? Eh, no, pero ¿tú estás tomando qué? ¿Agua no, fría? No, ya no, se me acabó hace rato. Ah, porque si estabas tomando agua eso da... Pero no. Pero eso da frío. Está haciendo frío. Está haciendo un poquito. A ver. ¿Qué hora son? Eh, oh, den, déjame yo miro. ¿Qué clima es? ¿El clima? Adivina cuánto estamos. ¿Ahorita? Sí. ¿Como a 13 o 14? 14. 13. Sí. Pero dice 13, 14, entonces estás muy bien. Pero, lindita, Pero yo... dice... En... 13, o sea, dice 14, 13, slash 10. ¿Se siente como 10? Supongo. O sea, no sé si de verdad sea como la sensación térmica. Yo creo, cuando ponen ese. 
Pero yo lo siento en menos 10. Yo estoy acá no. congelada. Eh, Javier Ugarte Espinosa dice, ¿los cursos que van a hacer son en inglés? Eh... Sí, yo creo, Javier. Yo creo porque es que, Javier, se lo digo como en experiencia, con los, por experiencia de los cursos que yo he hecho como en muchos países del mundo, incluso, por ejemplo, en, yo he hecho cursos en España. O sea, el curso en Menorca se tiene que dar en inglés. Sí. Eh, yo, he hecho, yo he dado cursos en Madrid que los tengo que dar en inglés. Mm. En, Porque ¿En Sevilla también lo diste en inglés? El curso en Sevilla lo tenía que dar en inglés. Sí. Y el curso en Sevilla... ¿Sí fue en inglés? Oh, no, lo, te, lo tenía que dar en español y en inglés. Uy, muy complicado. Sí, sí, muchas veces me toca traducir como simultáneamente todo lo que estoy diciendo. Y, y es triste porque entonces hay personas que se sienten como... Ay, está hablando, pero no sé qué está hablando. Uh -huh. eh, es complicado... Pero, o sea, yo, yo no es, o sea, nosotros, Dani y yo siempre hemos sido súper respetuosos de, de nuestra lengua, de nuestra cultura, y tanto que nosotros ni pedimos permiso para hablar en español, ni ya la gente en este canal se acostumbró que uno está hablando en inglés un momento y después puede hablar dos horas en español. Uh -huh. O sea, y así es el canal y ya. Y al que pues no le guste, pues... Bien eh, pueda, no, 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 pues sí, pero <risa> es, es que como... Sonaste como... No, 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 sino que es, es como una de esas cosas que es como, oiga, no, pues es que es nuestro idioma, entonces qué pena, pues sí. no, no lo vamos a negociar porque, porque no, no se trata de que, nos, de que alguien nos diga, oiga, por favor, en inglés, o oiga, por favor, en... No, cuando sí. las conversaciones se tornan hacia un idioma, las hacemos en ese idioma, y uh -huh. cuando se tornan hacia otro idioma, las hacemos en el otro. Eh, incluso, nosotros ya nos acostumbramos, pero para Dani y para mí... Empezar a, empezarnos a hablarnos en inglés es como ridículo, sí. o sea, es que es súper tonto. Cuando empezamos las transmisiones, no, pues a mí me daba... Ya no, ya no, sí. ¿sabes? No, y uno ya le... me siento como cómoda, no tengo problema, incluso en Roma eh, y en Menorca también lo hice. Cuando te iba a hablar eh, y había más gente... Uno por respeto por lo respeto, hace en un idioma te hablaba que en todo inglés, el mundo exacto, entienda. Te hablaba en inglés. Sí. Muchas cosas te las decía en español, pero pues porque se me sale en español, porque es que yo te veo y pienso en hablarte en español. Tú sabes que, por ejemplo, los equipos de fútbol, cuando, hay, cuando están hablando entre los jugadores, dicen, es en inglés. O sea, si tú ves más jugadores, Pobre porque tú de pronto tú dices, ay, ay, hay otra persona que habla español, entonces voy a hablar hay más jugadores, pero voy a hablar voy a empezar a hablar español en, con estas personas sí. hay muchos equipos que dicen oiga, no, cuando esté con los jugadores se habla en el idioma que entienden todos, todos. los jugadores, porque somos un equipo y porque... Ay, el pobre Luchito Sí, no sé qué hará Lucho, Lucho <risa> le toca hablar en jeroglíficos. Ay, divino No, sí. pero ya debe estar aprendiendo O sea, igual yo creo ahí que... Ahí va Yo creo que ahí va. Yo creo que no es como que pueda pues dar una cátedra en inglés, pero yo creo que las palabras técnicas que necesita entender en inglés, las entiende. Sí, entonces, sí, ojalá. Eh, pero entonces, para responderle a... Javier Ugarte Espinosa. Sí, Javier, entonces uno se empieza a dar cuenta que el mundo es muy grande, es muy, muy grande y apenas uno abre como las puertas de ese mundo con un canal, uno se da cuenta y pues usted seguramente se ha dado cuenta que nos escriben y nos dicen, no, es que, hola, yo estoy, buenos días, y hay otra persona, o sea, estamos a esta hora y alguien nos dice, buenos días, me acabo de levantar. Sí. Y, y no es, o sea, no es como que se levantó a las seis de la tarde, sino que está en, lugar, en un lugar del mundo que está en 14 horas adelante de uno. Eh, entonces se levantó a las seis de la tarde? Pues sí, sí, habría gente. <risa> sí. Ah, colombiano. Bueno, eh, sí, sí. Pero, pero entonces ahí, ahí es donde uno se da cuenta... Suena, yo sé que es charro, hay muchas veces es charro porque es inglés, pero, y uno hay veces le tiene como esa tirria al inglés, y uno no quisiera como decir, ah, me toca en un lenguaje como súper colonizante expresarme, eh, utilizarlo para poder como eh, eh, hablar con las personas del mundo, pero esa es la realidad de nuestro planeta, que en algún sitio tenemos que como encontrarnos y pues ese lenguaje termina siendo, el, termina siendo el punto de encuentro entonces nosotros honestamente cuando, cuando 
decidimos hablar en inglés es, es por eso, no es, no, es por, no es por como, ay, dejen de hablar inglés, me dan este par de tontos ahí Pues hablando. además no es como haciéndonos, o sea, yo le dije risk al risco de la montaña. Sí. O sea, con esto lo que estoy tratando de decir es que obviamente a Nicolás y a mí, aunque Nicolás tenga un acento súper neoyorquino, a los dos, y tú Ay, me lo me has dicho, resto. a los dos se nos facilita mucho más el español, pues porque es nuestro idioma. Yo ayer estaba revarado, Pero... ayer por al final... Como así, yo Estaba ayer te tratando dije... de explicar algo y estaba de un varado yo. No, y yo te no, dije ayer... No, yo decía que estoy buscando, que estoy ayer tratando de con decir. Mi... Yo creo que fue el... Ah, es que yo ayer también tomé el cold brew. Bueno, por haberme tomado eso, estaba como toda hiperactiva, pero como ida. Mm. O sea, estaba muy activa, pero en ida todo caldo. lado. Ida por un caldo. No, fatal. Sí. Y... Eh... No, y yo ayer te dije como, uy, no, o sea, a veces empezaba a hablar y mi cerebro era como, decía una palabra en inglés y se me apagaba todo el resto de palabras en inglés. Entonces me demoraba y me demoraba. Pero pues lo que tú dices, nosotros también hacemos el esfuerzo porque sabemos que para muchas personas que hablan otro idioma que nosotros no hablemos, eh, el inglés puede ser como ese punto medio. Exacto. Eh, y Javier Ugar te dice no me reten porfa lo entiendo y algo manejo algo me manejo en inglés y una carita sonriendo no oh, bueno pero lo que sí le puedo decir Javier es que al igual que en los talleres que hemos dado cuando hay cuando se tiene que dar en inglés pero por ejemplo hay una persona que habla español el trato personal que habría en esos cursos que daríamos o sea esto todo es como en un futuro uh -huh. eh, el trato personal que existiría, pues se puede hacer en español. Sí, o sea, que eso ¿sí igual se hace en los talleres claro, presenciales. Claro, Entonces, claro. puede que alguien hable español de como que sea su lengua natal y diga, no, pues es que yo quiero hablarle a usted en español, aunque entiendo en inglés lo que está diciendo. Y hay otra gente que es como, no, no entiendo nada, pero no importa. Ahí más o menos me, como que me busco mi manera y cuando hable... Como de tú a tú es en español. De tú a tú. De tú a tú. William Felipe dice... Por ejemplo, Hola. William Felipe se acaba de despertar. <risa> William Felipe puede decir buenas y no es como Elaine que se está despertando en Australia. <risa> William Felipe se está despertando <risa> no, pero el pobre... porque lo despertó Oye, la lluvia. El pobre William Felipe uno después dice que por qué no vuelve. Él es, hola, y tú eres, pero por ejemplo. Pero es que... 6 pm y se acaba de sí, levantar. Yo, no sé, estoy un poquito digno. <ríe> ¿Con la ausencia? Con la ausencia. No, pero ha estado eh, pendiente, constante. Se me hace un poquito tryhard. Ahí como, ay, sí, vi ay, este video. Ay, qué grosero, eso estuvo grosero. Sí, tiene que ganarse otra vez como su, su sitio. Willy Pipe. Uy. Mira, <ríe> William Felipe dice, hola, ¿cómo van? Uf, está genial. Y una carita llorando y unas manitos de... Ah. No sé, todavía no. <ríe> ¿Qué está haciendo William Felipe ahorita? Qué ¿Y cómo también. le dicen a William Felipe? Eh, K.K. Rose dice... Despiértese, le dicen. <ríe> ¡Levántese! Mi amor, no grites, que acuérdate que el micrófono... La mamá de William está gritando <ríe> más duro, mi amor, créeme. <ríe> K.K. Rose dice... Está haciendo mucho frío, literal, Dani. Ando con mi saco vija. Ja, ja, ja. Porque estoy congelada. No, estás tibia. La saco vija. Eh, no, yo no tengo mi saco vija. Y eso que tengo manga larga y el chaleco, pero sí estoy muy congelada. Eh, a ver, where was I? Nicolás Martin. Ya. Yeah. Was saying, what a joy to see you painting. Hello from Montreal. Hello, Nicolás. Um, It's always weird for me to say Nicholas. You can say Nicholas. Well, I don't know. Well, because you don't know if it's Nicholas or Nicholas. Uh, how's it spelled with an H? No, like yours. Oh, Nicholas Martin. Oh, so I'm going to say hello, Nicholas. Yeah, Margo. When we were talking about Texas, eh, que cuando estábamos hablando de mm. Texas, yes. dice en Texas. En Texas. Hay un par de personas más que en Canarias y una carita riéndose <laughs> y dice. 
¿Sabían que una de sus, sus ciudades, San Antonio, fue fundada por Canarios? No empieces. No. Pues no, no sabía, no pero no, no, no empecemos ahora. Familias canarias que fundaron San Antonio, Texas. ¿Qué es esto? Juan Leal Goroz, hijo de Antonio y María Pérez, ¿Sí? nativo de la isla Lanz... Uy, espérate que esta vaina... Letra blanca, me tocó agrandar, porque mira cómo se veía. Mira ahí. O sea, no, un tigre. Sí, gracias. Un tigre blanco. Tigre blanco y letra blanca, no, pues gracias. Mm, toca decirle a la gente de Canarias que... <risa> que esa... No, es Rancho, Texas. Eh... Y María Pérez, nativo sí. de la isla, Lanzarote, 54 años de edad, alto, cara alargada, barba gruesa, complexión escudo, ¿Qué? nariz con filo, sesgo en un ojo, barba no. y cabello negro, ojos gris, claro. No, eso es todo no, lo que dice <risa> eso es todo lo que dice pensé que me iba a hablar de esas descripciones pero me encantó bueno pero pensemos Vicente Leal hijo del anterior y Catalina Rodríguez hijo del anterior sí, y eso Catalina suena Rodríguez como... como un insulto esa vieja es hijo del anterior no me la traigan acá bueno, hijo del anterior y Catalina Rodríguez, nativo de Lanzarote, 18 años de edad, estatura media, ancho de espaldas, cara larga, sin barba, nariz aguileña, ceji junto, ojos de gris claro, no, cabello sí, negro no. y rizado, cejas negras y complexión escudo. ¿Qué es complexión escudo? Complexión escudo. Porque complexión es... es el, la, complexion. Pero no es como el tono de piel, supongo. La complexión... Pero complexión escudo y mira, sí. Me sale un escudo, escudo complicado. Capitán América, sí. sí. Pero a ver, tratemos de, de tener como... Mm. Eh, racionalmente entender esto. Pues de pronto están hablando de la forma de la cara... No, 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 no de la complexión escudo, sino del por qué ah. hay canarios en, en, ah. en San Antonio. <risa> Yo ya iba a decir, de pronto sí. parece un escudo, entonces acá eh... hay baja en triángulo. Sí. No, pues tiene sentido, o sea, si, si españoles llegaron a México, pues tiene sentido que esos mismos españoles o que esas mismas familias hayan sido las que... Pues es que México era toda la parte sur de Estados Unidos, sur, norte... O sea, la parte central sur de Estados Unidos, central y oeste de Estados Unidos. Entonces, ¿tendría como sentido que esas fueran las personas que estaban allá? Sí. Pues mira, la intro de esto es... La siguiente es una lista de los 50 miembros de las 15 familias más 4 hombres de celibato que dejaron Cuatlitlán el 15 de noviembre de 1730 y que partieron hacia, por aquel entonces, San Fernando de Bexar mm. para fundar San Antonio de, Tex de Texas el 1 de agosto de 1731 mm. a la memoria histórica de estos héroes. Uf. Pero mira, bueno, acá me dice todos los nombres. Ya voy llegando al 50. Mm. No, la familia decimosexta, no... ¿Y qué estás buscando? ¿Que sean canarias? No, no, no. O sea, la razón por la que llegaron, o sea... Ah, pero ahí te están diciendo. Pues se fueron. Pues sí, pero razón, razón. Pues por explorar, no sé, por irse. Por ir a buscar nuevas tierras, por ir a... Pues eran padres, o sea, ya te están diciendo de una vez por qué se iban. O sea, había religiosos, o sea... Querían encontrar nuevas... Nuevas regiones para extender eh, la palabra de la palabra de Cristo para después eh, 250 años más tarde hacer que un papa vaya en silla de ruedas a pedirles perdón porque mataron niños indígenas mientras los trataban de endoctrinar fin gracias sí terrible todo eso fue pucha iglesia oye pero me me dio risa Pensar en la manera en la que describen. O sea, justo complexión. Sí, espectacular. Este. 
Nariz plana. Uno, uno salía con ese papelito como, uy. Sí, no, no pues. No, pues gracias. Sí. Yo aquí tratando de meter barriga y es como, hombre, más bien pesado. Sí. Mira esto. Eh, An Antonio Santos, hijo de Simón Santos y Ana Rodríguez, nativo de Lanzarote, 50 años de edad, más o menos, medio altura, ancho de espaldas, cara redonda, complexión escudo, nariz grande, ojos negros, delgado, barba y cabello negro, gris y bastante desperdicio. ¿Qué? Eso dice. No, pero ¿qué es eso? Barba y cabello negro, coma, gris y bastante desperdicio, coma, de bastante cejas desperdicio. negro. Además, cejas negro. ¿Pero qué quiere decir bastante desperdicio? Es como, ¿Será ah, que tiene pedazos las... calvos? Lástima. Como pedazos no, pues, llanos. Gracias. No, ahí. Gracias por pensar en desperdicio y pensar en mí, <risa> linda. Gracias. No, mi amor, no. Sí. No, a ti no te hace falta nada. Eh... No, yo me podría quedar acá horas. Cara grande. Sí, qué mame era uno nunca haber tenido problemas con su cara y llega a un nuevo país y cara enorme. Sí. Cara incómodamente grande. Sí. sí. Cara un desperdicio. Sí. <risa> pues, sí. eh, a ver qué dice estos. Nariz con punta. No. ¿Qué significa a uno nariz le dijeron con punta? toda la vida que tenía una nariz divina. Yo sí. toda la vida creyéndole a mi mamá que tenía una nariz divina. Nariz flaco, dice este. Ay, no, en serio me puedo quedar acá horas. Sí, creo que en eso hemos mejorado. Además me encanta... 50 años de edad, más o menos. Más o menos. Es como gracias, tengo 28. Sí. Está acabado. Acabada esa persona. Eh... Sí, porque 50 en esa época era un re viejo. Sí. Uno estaba para morirse a los 50 en esa época. Sí. Mira este. Ya, perdón, la última. Antonio Rodríguez Moderos. Muchos Antonios, ¿no? Sí. Mederos, perdón. Sí. Hijo de Juan Rodríguez y María del Carmen Rodríguez. Sí. Nativo en Gran Canaria. ¡Oye! 18 años de edad, más o menos. ¡Viva Canaria! Medio altura, ancha de espaldas, complexión clara, enfrentada con la viruela. ¿Qué? <ríe> la nariz plana. Gris de ojos, pero enfrentada con la viruela. Llegó con gripa Cabello para la y foto. Cabello castaños, qué? lunar en mejilla derecha. Llegó sí. con gripa ese día. Sí, enfrentada con la viruela. ¿Y usted cómo se siente? No, enfrentadísimo. Estoy, estoy enfrentadísimo oye. con esta viruela. Eh, William Felipe dice, jajaja, ja, ja, está rancio hoy Nicolás y yo echándole piropos. Estoy trabajando, a veces no me puedo conectar porque estoy animando cosas y me toca colocarles música, entonces no lo logro. Oye, si el pobre William Felipe teniéndote que explicar que tiene que trabajar, Nicolás, para sobrevivir. Yo no le creo. No, sí, discúlpame, pero <ríe> ¿no le crees que trabaja? Es que... Ay, JM las, las mentiras que ha dicho William. <ríe> ¿Qué? J.M. Esteves dice, sí. hola Nicolás, un saludo como siempre, qué inspirador ver su trabajo. Muy amable, muchas gracias. Mm, Emilio Sorni dice, mm. una pregunta. Sí, señor Emilio. Cuando haces el underpainting de una pintura grande, ¿usas liquid u otro tipo de medio? No, yo antes lo hacía con, con trementina, honestamente. No, no hacía nada extraño con, con medios. Y me acuerdo que usaba trementina... Con un poquitito de mmm, barniz de amara. Una, un poquitito para que se agarrara la superficie. Para que cuando uno la fuera a pintar. El medio que uno estuviera utilizando para pintar encima. No fuera a levantar la, la trementina. Mm, Rebeca Caridad. Sí. Was saying, I just showed up and in all caps gasped. When I saw the painting at this stage. Seems like she's coming off the page. Face first. LOL. Thank you so much. Um, Grace Kale said, long time no see. Such cool paintings as always. Very inspiring. Hey, Grace Kale. So, 
Nice to have you here. Happy to have you here. Happy to have you. Happy to have you here. Uh, again, with us. Mm, Cabus Kes was saying, Hi guys, I just get home after a long day working. This day I missed this day I miss here a lot. But try to catch up with you on next day. Feeling I can't be engaged same as before. Anyway, glad to have a chance tonight. Oh, we're happy that even if you can't uh be here as you as much as you wanted to, Kevin, yeah. you could join us for a little bit. It really means a lot to us and also always as you were saying the good thing is that you can catch the videos later uh so that's a big plus of having the videos up on youtube yes mm. a ver. let's see Olga Maria Benninghoff. I don't know who that is. Your mom. Oh, right, right, right. Was saying amazing painting. Thank you, me Olgis. Hola, Olguita. ¿Cómo estás? Eh, Valdo Davino was saying Davino Brasil. Siempre acompaño você. Para Benz. I think I did a terrible. Oh, that was for... like the worst. <laughs> Portuguese I that you've know, ever I, attempted. I had my ma mouth yeah. like this. Davino Brasi Brasil. No, that started Brasil. wrong. Bra no, what? No. I don't know. You so asked yourself it. that question. So, Davino Brasil. Go ahead. No, no, no. Siempre acompaño você. What? I'm not doing anything. You try it. You try it. I'm not doing You're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Uh, so happy to have you here, uh, Davino. Mm, obrigada. I don't know. <laughs> no sé qué decir. Yeah, you're doing good. Ay, tú tampoco sabrías. Ay, tú, you're I'm doing not doing good. anything. I'm not saying you're anything. You're doing good. I'm not saying anything. Um, a ver. Let's see. Uh, the vaccini was saying, question. Yes. What do you think about all the AI stuff going on right now? Mm. Uh, example, Dali, etc. Yeah, I like it. Do you think there will be now even less chances to learn, to earn money with art? I'm interested in your opinion. Thanks. Oh, no, I don't think, um, I think if anything, AI is going to, Uh, provide tools for artists um, and it's going to be better and better and better and better um, especially for artists in like uh, movie industries um, uh, and uh, video game industries um, I what Unreal is doing the new Unreal Engine is um, is actually pretty amazing what it can do with um, with AI and compositing, you know, if you feed textures into it and it starts like creating, for example, when it does cityscapes and, and um, the, the way it creates those cities is just incredible, absolutely incredible. So I, I don't think we're, we're, I don't think we can see the point where those tools can work by themselves. I think they always have to be curated Um, you can kind of tell why it has to be curated because when the thing just does things by itself, I think they're interesting images, but I don't think they're particularly, you know, fascinating or, or they are, um, anything that would compete with what human beings that have intent and, and have worked really hard at trying to, um, understand what it is that they're trying to say and how to amplify it and how to use a medium to its most like potential. I don't think we're there. I don't think those things that, you know, AI is doing um, can can compete with with um, curated um, images and works of art. But I do think it's a it's like a glimpse into the future. It's like the beginning of something that's going to be enormous and fascinating. 
I really do believe that for sure. Um, but I think, you know, the what's what's probably going to be closest for us is just using those um, using all that software as a uh, as a tool. And it's going to make tons of jobs like super efficient. And that's wonderful because there's not going to be as much crunch or as much burnout and things are going to be just wonderfully kind of accessible to you. And there's going to be libraries of, of materials and uh, textures and objects and, you know, all these things that you're going to be able to access like so, so easily um, that it's going to be super, super cool. But yeah, but I, I don't find it super, you know, in terms of, of image making, I don't find it super interesting. In fact, I, I, um, I still feel that there's something um, very artificial about the way it it kind of like AI kind of stitches an image. Oh, well, like it has the same feel. You can, you know, you can show me, I bet you, you know, without being like super, super educated on this, but just like, you know, tangentially me looking at a lot of images that people post, uh, uh, you know, about feeding their work into AI and when what it looks like, I assure you that you can show me something that somebody did, you know, digitally and and then something that, you know, um, AI would composite from from them feeding their own work into it. And I think I could tell you 10 out of 10 times, which is the AI. I think I, we're still there. And I think if we're still there, then it's not great because we can tell. We can tell that, you know, this is something that a machine is like spitting out. Um, a software is spitting out, like a program is spitting out. But I'm sure there'll be a day that, you know, you can feed so much information into these algorithms that they can start configuring things that are far more complex than what they're doing right now, like immensely more complex. And I think that day it's going to be super cool to look at what they're doing. And I don't know the questions. I think we're going to cross that bridge when we get there, but I don't think we're quite there, but are we headed there? Yes, for sure. Like are certain industries headed there? Oh yes. Are they happy to be heading there? Yes. I think it's fascinating. I think it's absolutely fascinating. So I I love it. I love when art pushes forward. And the idea of forward doesn't mean that the art that it's produced is better, has to be better. <coughs> but just the fact that it's forward is what makes it fascinating. J.M. Esteves mm -hmm. dice una pregunta. Sí, señor. ¿Alguna vez ha tenido interés en no. entrar al mundo ah. del concept design. Uy, quisiera. Creo que lo realizó un par de veces, pero ¿por qué no continúe en ese camino? No, quisiera, pero eso es otra vida. ¿Quién es la persona? Disculpen. JM Esteves. Ah, ¿cómo está? Eh, no, usted sabe, pero usted sabe esto. Pero, pero sí, es, es un mundo que me hubiera fascinado, pero yo, yo creo que será otra vida. Yo creo que será otra vida. Usted le ha dado muy duro a eso y es muy bueno. Pero, pero para mí, no sé, esa vida yo creo que ya, ya pasó. La disfruto muchísimo, muchísimo como observador. Pero, pero no, yo creo que ya, ya es un poquito tarde para mí como profesional. Ya, ya es como un poquito tardecito. Rubén Cantorán, who's saying hi, Nicolás and Danny. Hey. From Los Angeles. Uh, Los Ángeles. Mm. Admire your work. Thank you. While watching you paint, I began using Soren palette and have found it satisfying. I just finished a painting of my daughter. Hope That's I wonderful. can share. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. So this is my Instagram. If you want to, uh, you could share in a DM a photo of the painting and we can check it out here right now. Or if you have your own Instagram. Just send it uh, to Danny so yeah. that we can well, check it out. Well, but it's easier when they send me the specific painting. Oh, yes, They yes, want me yeah. to see. Yes, also. So I don't have to be like yeah, trust Danny scrolling. With that. Yeah, trust, yeah, yeah, Trust Danny with that. Um, ay, mira el pobre William Felipe. Oigan, no, ¿cuáles mentiras? What? Y una carita triste. <laughs> William Felipe, este es como 
la manera de Nicolás de interactuar siempre. O sea, sí, es demostrar cariño. Es como mostrar que William Felipe le cae bien a Nicolás, porque cuando le empieza a molestar mucho es porque está cogiendo confiancita. Entonces, eh, no sé si eso es bueno o malo para el pobre William Felipe, pero creo que eso es lo que está pasando. Pues para País Llanero cogí mucha confianza y se <ríe> sí. fue corriendo. corriendo. Oye, ¿y se fue en serio? Corriendo. País Llanero no volvió a comentar después de eso. Se va a mudar de Texas. Bueno, punto, punto, punto. Chao, muchachos, punto, punto, punto. Me voy a mover de Texas. Me moví de Texas. Me moví de Texas. Uy, no, estoy mal del frío. Ahí busqué ahorita. Dice sí, que señora. estamos en un saquen 11 grados. Bueno, pues eso no es tan grave, mi amor. Ay, ¿Qué? Yo tengo no. mucho frío. Pues tienes frío, pero 11 grados no es tan grave. Para mí lo es. Para mí lo es. A ver, miremos. Es que país llanero. País mm. llanero ya. Conocimos el límite de país llanero. Oh, so here we have it. País so llanero. Says, Hi, Danny. No, no, no. Ah. Here's the painting of my daughter, said Ruben. So, let's open it together. Oh, let me try to fit there so we can open it. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's, nice. that's really yeah. cool. Good job. Good job on that. Very nice kind of muted uh, palette. Very, very nice. I mean, I'm all, I've always been... Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Good job. Dude, good job with that. It's a great palette. I, I've always, I mean, I, I sound like a broken record when I try to speak about the, um, uh, what I consider to be the benefits of working with this palette. Mm -hmm. I not, I know that Scott Waddle, who is a very, very capable painter, he, he works quite differently from what I, the, the way I work. Although today I'm not making that, um, that argument, uh, very, very evident because This is probably a little bit closer to how he works, even though I can't do what he does. Um, but Scott Waddle did a video saying how um, not that the uh, uh, a Zorn palette is useless, but he, how he was saying that it's difficult, that it's very, very difficult. And um, but he was like he did a video and because it's YouTube, you just put like a, a catchy Uh, title on that video and it gets like a ton of views because it sounds slightly controversial. I mean, it, as as controversial as artists discussing how um, useful a four color palette is. But um, but in reality, it, I mean, we we tend to associate this with Zorn. But if I can speak just a tiny bit um, about this palette, remember it. Yes, it is Zorn. Yes, we, we kind of shorthanded as Zorn, but it really has nothing to do with Zorn. I mean, it is something that's way bigger than Zorn because it's something that has like its roots in um, high Renaissance, like Renaissance and high Renaissance and Baroque painting. It is like the fundamental palette of Baroque painting. Um, We are very lucky. And I think when we were in Italy, right, um, we saw paintings of people holding palettes. And I was like saying, yes. hey, look, this mm -hmm. is this is what they had. We I saw mean, a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's you know, a good good number of paintings of people yes. showing their palettes, which is like the most wonderful kind of X-ray into what was the um, the the understanding of color at the time, like the uh, philosophy of color at that time. Um, having those palettes as proof is is wonderful. But yeah, a four-color palette has nothing to do with Zorn or with him just wanting to be, to simplify the act of painting. It has everything to do with like a way of understanding painting and understanding the construction of relationships in a painting. So it is very hard, but it's meant to be hard. It's a palette that is going to teach you how to paint. And teaching you how to paint is not supposed to be easy. So, and the fact that it's hard may put people off, but that should never be the way in which we um, measure that palette. And is it a perfect palette? Of course not. It's it's four colors. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Anything that's four colors, it's it's going to be always limited by its own. 
um, uh, by its own boundaries. I mean, its own natural boundaries. So of course you can't do everything with a with any four color palette. That's insane to think that that this is a four color palette, but there's other four colors that are like great. I mean, I hope that we've done enough exercises, you know, throughout the, you know, what is quickly going to be three years of our channel. Yeah. Um, we've done enough exercises to to give you guys an idea that we have we have been willing to put ourselves through challenging our palate and, you know, seeing it as like exciting exercises where you, you know, where you try something out and you're working outside of, you know, your um, comfort zone and you're trying to construct paintings in ways in which you hadn't done paintings. And, um, you know, we would do those things with the hopes of, of learning about, you know, those palettes, not only those palettes, but ourselves as painters. Um, but what I what I have gathered, you know, throughout all these exercises where you're, you know, trying to expand your understanding of color and of palettes and philosophy of palette of the uh, construction of a palette is that they are all limited. They all have characters like they palettes have personalities and you can't find like a perfect palette. You can just the best you can hope for is to find like to be accepting of the personality of that palette so that you can take the most advantage that you can, you know, when working within that palette. That's what you have to do. But when you start comparing it with like, hey, here's the painting I can do with like 10 colors and here's the four color palette version of that, it's ridiculous. Like you can't compare those two because it's, you know, it, it's pointless to compare those two. Um, what I think Scott does acknowledge is that it is a palette that it has um, where interpretation is part of color mixing, where you're going to have to have to interpret a ton of what you're seeing. And that should never be a bad thing, I feel, because I think at the core of painting is interpretation. I mean, you're looking at, let's say you're working like representational painting. You're like, that's the basis of your work. So you're looking at nature and you're trying to, I don't know, feel, uh, express how you feel about what you're looking at or, you know, mimic nature in some way. Um, you're never going to be able to reproduce nature. Like, that's not the point of painting. The point of painting is not to, like, put a painting right next to nature and feel, have it feel seamless, absolutely seamless. Like, oh, where's the painting? It disappeared. Oh, my God, you did a one-to-one -one translation of nature. That's amazing. Well, TikTok videos with yeah, but, a thousand million yeah, views. Would yes, say. but no. Come on. Yeah. No, okay. but I wanted to do the comment because right. it's just like... Because if we think, if we for a moment think that that's what painting is about, then... No, I, would, I know, wouldn't paint. Hundreds of years of painting... Yeah are useless because they yes. were not about those things. And not I want to clarify, of course, it was a joke. Yeah, of I course. Saying. No, no, I get I it. Mean, I get it. No, you get it. But I, I think everyone, people. I think, yeah, no, I know. I think everyone got what you were trying to say that sadly, that this is something that's very attractive. So people think that surely that that's a more like advanced way of understanding color when really it's not, it, it really isn't. But I will always, always champion the virtues of working within a, a, a very finite palette, you know, a palette that unashamedly shows its boundaries, like it carries its boundaries, you know, right on its shoulders. It, it just, you know, when you see it, you see the things that you are able, are going to be able to do and the things you're never going to be able to do. And it's almost like you have to be okay with that. You have to. Like the, the, the proposal that the palette is, is telling you is like, are you going to fight me or are you going to be like, are you going to sort of give in and work within me? And you could fight your palette as much as you want. It, it's going to be trying to swim uh, against the current for as long as you want until you tire and until you feel that what a stupid way of trying to get from point A to point B. Or you could say, you know what? I'm here to do this. Like, I am up for this. I'm going to put all the, you know, beliefs that I have in terms of color aside. And I am going to truly believe 
that the construction of a painting can rely entirely upon color relationships. And you you are going to be willing to play. Like it's almost like you saying I am I'm good, you know, I'm good for this game. I I am totally in the right mindset. I am, you know, I'm willing to put whatever ideas of, you know, color of what I thought I knew about color, I'm willing to put those aside and I'm willing to put this uniform on and I'm willing to play. Like, you know, coach, put me in because I can play this game. Like, I can totally do this. If you want to fight it, the palette is going to give you a thousand reasons, super obvious ones to say it's not enough. It's not nearly enough to do a ton of things. But if you concentrate on the things that it cannot do, then you are being blind to the universe that it can provide for you. So I think part of painting, a very wise part of painting is to teach yourself never to feel um, angst for the things that are not there, but always just say, kind of like give in and put your hands down, put your arms down and look at what's available and say, let me recognize what you can give me and then I will show you how I can, you know, within within those parameters of the things that you can give to me, I'll show you the things that I can do, you know, with you. And I think that's a beautiful way of, of approaching a palette. But sure, there's always going to be somebody that says, no, it's limited because it can't do this. I don't, I'm not saying that's what Scott was saying. Actually, his video is far more, um, it's far more... It's far deeper than what that, you know, very um, um, kind of catchy, eye-catchy uh, title can make you believe. No, he's he's a very capable painter. He's a very solid painter. So he, he, he understands what he's saying. Um, but um, ultimately, what I, what I understood of that video was that it's just a tough palette. You know, there are other palettes that can give you simpler alternatives or easier ways to get to um, interpreting, you know, different scenarios. Uh, and I would say, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. But like painting, I think painting, even at its simplest, it's very hard, very, very hard. So it serves no purpose if somebody tells you, no, this is, don't do this because maybe it's too hard to do. It's like, no, let me at it. Like, let me, come on, let me go. Let me, let me try this out. And I feel that that's what a four color palette can give you. Like the chance to say, okay, this is clearly, clearly handicapped, but let me see what I can do with this. Like challenge accepted. This is awesome. And this is just, this is going to be about me, like understanding fundamental of a, a, a simple fundamental of painting, which is like, by itself, these things are nothing, but it is up to you to organize them, to configure them in ways in which they can say skin and flesh and bone and express through that. And that can be so powerful, but you have to be up for it. Like your mind has to be up for it. As so, as soon as you pose like the the most minimum, minimum amount of um, like objection, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So anyways. I, I just wanted to uh, say that a little bit. And you guys can can um, can check um, Scott's video because I, I do think it's fun and it's cool. And he's he's a pretty funny dude. Um, but um, but you'll see that it, there's there's no like in the end, the message is not like, oh, this is crap. Like everyone has told you that this is a good palette. But honestly, this is like pure crap. No, 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 no. It's just that, you know, he thinks that there are easier ways to get results that don't, you know, push you, you know, through the mud when trying to, to make, um, relationships in a painting, which is, you know, kind of like what, what a four palette, four color palette does. It just, it, it really, you, you feel your brain having to kind of reorganize the way you thought about color. And that, again, that to me is fascinating. So, 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 um, I'm gonna go because I, I need to paint this edge so it doesn't look too hard. 
So I'm going to do that, and I think we're going to be done for today, Perfect, I feel. Perfect, yeah. Um, so, Eve Rebecca Frank. Caridad was saying, you use ultramarine instead of ivory black? No, so I have ultramarine in the palette, but no. This color that I've been feeding into my mixes throughout the whole session, and you can tell, there's no blue in there. Like, my yellows would look greener. Like, my green grays would look so much greener. Um, no, so... I, what I'm using is um, titanium white, yellow ochre. This is a yellow ochre pale, to be specific. Windsor Newton yellow ochre pale. Cad red, which is between like a medium and a light, I would say. And ivory black. Yes. Which is a very blue black. So maybe that's why you're thinking that there's blueness in there. But no, no, no. We haven't used, um, we haven't used any blue. J.M. Esteves dice, es cierto, en digital la utilizo muchísimo, casi siempre reemplazo el azul por negro, dicho de forma, entre comillas, tosca. Y uff, qué genial estos videos, es muy agradable un espacio para hablar de pintura. Qué chévere. Eh, Rubén Cantoran, which was uh, the person that showed us the painting of their Yeah, daughter. very good. Good yeah. job, I thought. Was saying, thank you so much for looking. No. I have been imprinting for years. The amount of colors produced in four colors is incredible. Oh, yeah. This translates to paint, I feel. Yeah, totally. Mm, País Llanero. Mm -hmm. mm, entonces no se fue. No, no, no. <laughs> Ahora ya te da miedo responder algo, Nicolás. Pues no sé, es que tuvimos un momento íntimo y, y fue más bien incómodo. Pais Llanero dice, the painting is looking good. Hey, Nico, what's, <laughs> what is the purpose of the underpainting? Is it just resolving values before the final painting? Um, so, yes, it's, it's supposed to, like, um, give you an idea, to, to introduce the idea of tone uh, into the painting in a, in a highly specific way. Um, kind of instance of picture making. So when you're doing the your first layer, you're thinking of drawing, which involves composition and design. Let's say that that's ultimately what you're trying to figure out in that first layer. Um, so drawing is something that seems, you know, all enveloping because in drawing, you are drawing the structure of that uh, head, You're drawing the angle of that head. You're drawing an expression on that head. So there's a gesture. You're drawing, you know, all these like um, little waves uh, uh, of hair that have rhythm. Um, you have um, decided how to um, place certain shapes uh, in your in your uh, in the ratio of the substrate that you had that you have chosen so there's so many composition design elements to that first layer that it can feel overwhelming to be super super honest when you're thinking about what my picture looks like like what is my picture going to be about what does it look like like that can be really really tough to decide um when you sit down and when you say oh i'm just going to like eyeball this thing and I'm going to go straight to paint. That, that's very difficult. Um, but what you what you want to do is since it's very difficult, since those ideas tend to be very difficult, again, overwhelming, it's better to, well, it's better, quote unquote, to compartmentalize them and say, I'm going to deal with you first. So no, no thought of like brushwork is going to be uh, entering this, All, all this thought process that's going on in my first layer. And then my second layer, it's super easy because you say, I'm going to introduce the idea of value. So now I want to see what value does for my picture. Like, how is value aiding me in the, um, in the telling of this story? And if you don't think that value can tell a story, um, look at, and I'm just going to say this because we were there, but look at the calling of St. Matthew. Look at Caravaggio's calling of St. Matthew. That is how value tells a story. That's exactly why we think of value, not just as a way of um, communicating the three-dimensionality of form, but as a tool to tell a story. Like It is a very, very, very powerful tool that can come to your aid when attempting to tell a story. Um, and to tell a story doesn't mean that there has to be like this narrative, this um, very obvious narrative in your painting. 
Um, no, no, no. A story can be told through shapes, through through rhythms, uh, through uh, gesture. It doesn't. It doesn't have to like literally be um, the illustration of a written word. So, um, so we do that with uh, with that underpainting. You know, we're trying to uh, uh, place those shapes of light and dark on top of our drawing and seeing how that ultimately can have a play, like they can ultimately play together. Um, I was having issues with some of the darks and, and that's how I started this session saying, I just saw my underpainting, my, you know, my, my drawing as soon as I, I, I saw my drawing and I liked it and I saw my underpainting as soon as, as we finished yesterday's session. And I was like, oh, this is not working. Like, I don't like the shapes of dark that are surrounding uh, Christina's face. So I got to change this. And um, I made that decision very early on to to adjust those values close to here in particular, because I really didn't like how they were uh, framing the uh, the portrait. I thought I thought they were very um, strong. They, they were very, very strong. And it, they just weren't working on on my benefit. So I had to adjust that, which maybe for people seems like a small adjustment, but honestly, it was really big. It it meant going from a painting that was bothering me to something that I'm like, okay, that's better. To something that was clearly, clearly bothering me to something that I was like, okay, that's a lot better. Like I can deal with this now. Um, and um, And now we're dealing with color. So now we're building upon all those things. So ideally, even though the um, all the layers are speaking about very different things, like each one of them seems like a universe, like a completely different universe altogether. Um, what you need as a painter is to have them come and, you know, gel um, and coalesce into what ultimately it's going to be your painting because you decided to tell the story through painting. So, you know, that is what you're going to be um, uh, configuring by the end. So uh, right now, the introduction of, of color and, you know, how those masses of color have also character and can also have rhythm because masses of color are not just like bits of color. No, they, they are placed you know, with a with um, certain broadness, or 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 they can be very staggered, or you know, they they they're, they can be very soft, they can be very sharp. Um, so they also have their own character, and the idea is to have like all these variables. Like sometimes they feel like an infinite amount of variables just coming together, um, helping you say the picture that you wanted to say. Uh, that is at the end, what we want. We want to be able to feel like, yes, you know, all the decisions that I made, every single choice that I made, like Danny has emphasized that about the paintings that we've been making lately, how it may be hard to um, identify at times, but there's so much choice um, present in in every single little bit of the um, making of the painting, there is so much acknowledgement of, of hey, this could have gone, you know, 20 other ways. And I chose this one as the one that was, the one that's gonna help me the most say what I wanna say with my painting. Um, and it, it ultimately is about how committed we are with those choices, like how much we believe that those choices have to be um, easily uh, visible for the viewer when they're looking at, when they're kind of like examining and, and um, traversing through the painting. So, yeah. So it is, yes, um, a, a way of isolating layers, but it, it goes far beyond that. It's not just about layers. It's also about like the thought process that goes behind those layers and how we can make it a little bit easier for ourselves if we give ourselves like a, a chance to see them a little like a little more mm, abstractly when we say, okay, I'm not supposed to think this separately. 
from this, but you know, the way um, technically this layer is constructed, it's giving me the chance to, to see it um, and digest it a little bit easier. Eh, y País Llanero uh -huh. dice, no, el momento íntimo no fue incómodo, jajaja, ja, ja. yo ya me lo presentía. <risa> y una carita como de reojo. <risa> um, Leslie Cavazos Garduño. Gavazos Garduño. Dice, I love the sorn palette. Ochre is my favorite color. Chef's kiss. It's my yellow. Like, if I have to, I think other yellows are beautiful. I certainly understand why they're so attractive. Um, this is sounding like so weird. No. Like we're dating a color. No, it's not uh, sounding weird at all. But um, I adore ochre. I mean, that's my yellow. That's that's uh, that's what I, that's the yellow that I see in my world. Like other yellows, I feel almost like asphyxiated by them. There's too much. Like yellow is one of those colors that. I've had to struggle a lot and I've had to force myself to try to paint with because I know that I naturally just reject it or, or feel kind of overwhelmed by it. So the paintings that I've done of yellow with yellow, they're usually paintings that are, um, it's just me saying like, okay, let's do this. But, uh, but it's because I know myself and I know that if I don't push myself to do it, it, it would be a life of fear with this color. Um, I don't wear it. I don't think I, I've ever worn. I mean, to me, for example, red is too much. But I'll wear like a Liverpool like shirt. Like I can do that. Like shirt? Well, it's a, it's a shirt. It's a shirt. jersey. Yeah. Um, but yellow? Like think about it, Danny. When have you ever seen yellow on me? No. Never. Like mm -hmm. anything. Joke. It could be a joke thing. It could be... Like, when have you ever, ever seen yellow? No, I'm trying to think about it, but no. Yeah, no, it's just, it's too much for Maybe me. Maybe in one of your caps. Not even, has, no. Like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? There's one. What? Uh, I think the one that has like a van or something. A van? Yeah, the one that's white with black. I... It has like a yellow something. I don't. Oh, it has like red, yellow, yeah, and black. Yeah, but I mean, I was doing yeah, that like example. Yeah, like a little logo thing so with like a I was tiny doing bit of yellow. That yes. example to say that it's just like a tiny little thing yeah. in it, but no, you don't use it. So. Yeah, no, I'm I'm scared of it. I'm I'm horrified of it. Mm, I use it a lot. I yeah. like it. My father said that there was a um, uh, saying that I'm probably, I don't know how to remember... I don't remember how it goes literally, but it's um, el que amarillo se pone a su belleza se atiene, algo así. Eso no rima. No, pues no es, no es una, <laughs> no es Rafael Pombo. O sea, Pero, it's like a saying. It doesn't have to. Se pone el que, el que amarillo se luz, el que amarillo, mi mamá se lo sabe. Pues acá dice... El de la, a, a su belleza se atiene. El que de amarillo se viste, ¿Eso? A su en belleza. su belleza confía. No, no, no. El que de amarillo se viste, a su belleza se atiene, algo así. Bueno, es lo mismo, o sea, es lo mismo. Sí, sí, sí. Y yo, en, la verdad, creo que eso es cierto. Yo no puedo, yo no puedo ponerme, ponerme nada. No, no, no cargo ese color, no tengo la personalidad. El que de amarillo no. se viste, a su belleza se atiene. Eso, no sí ves, sí ves. Eh... Sí, yo no, no, no tengo, no tengo la personalidad para algo así. A mí me parece muy chévere, digamos, una chaqueta impermeable amarilla. Preciosa. Y a ti, chévere. y tú, tú puedes ponerte lo que quieras. Honestamente, tú eres como, tú cargas colores súper bien. Pero mira que yo antes no usaba muchos colores. No sé si te acuerdas. Sí, tú eras negro. Sí. Yo me convertí en tú. Como yo usaba puros, como los que les llaman básicos. Sí. O sea, yo usaba blanco. Gris, negro. Café no usaba. No. No. ¿Y ahora? Todos los colores. Me parece súper chévere usar ropa con todos los colores. Um, dice... Cacaito decía, el que de amarillo se viste en su belleza confía, algo así. Bueno, pero todos creo que conocemos el... Eh... Y Leslie Cabazos dice, él usa amarillo en su belleza, confía. 
Bueno, Leslie ahí... Y Leslie dice, yo tampoco uso amarillo. <risa> <risa> eh... Y País Llanero dice, well, now I gotta go return a yellow jacket. <risa> El regalo que nos tenía. <risa> Eso era lo que te había comprado. Sí, no, no, sí. no, pilas. Pilas porque se acaba y la relación. La relación no ha empezado y ya se acabó. Bueno, yo creo que me va a tocar alejarme y dejarlos como sí, a los Danos dos. un minuto, por favor. Sí, por favor, porque está como... Tú te pones nervioso. Mm, muy. Él se demora en responder, no sé. David López dice, hola Dani, hola Nico. Primera vez que llego al directo. No saben todo lo que los veo sin estar en directo. Qué chévere, Nico ha sido una gran influencia en mi proceso. Sus dibujos y pinturas son maestras en sí mismas. No, muy bien. Una amable. pregunta. Sí, señor. ¿Qué consejo le darían a un recién egresado de artes visuales que tiene el sueño de vivir de su obra y producción? Gracias. Eh, ¿David está aquí o en... o en... sería chévere saber eh, dónde está David? Eh, ¿Aquí como en Bogotá? Aquí en, Bogotá, aquí en Colombia o en Bogotá, sí. Uh -huh. Uy, David, esa pregunta es súper compleja, ¿no? Y, y sabes que sí, creo que influiría mucho el lugar en sí, donde eh, esté. Lo pregunté también por eso. Sí, o sea, sí, sí. Porque las, las posibilidades que tiene el artista joven colombiano, pues tristemente no son las mismas que tienen eh, otros artistas en otras partes del mundo. Pues o incluso por lo menos dentro de Colombia, no en todas las ciudades, en todas las eh, regiones, exacto. las posibilidades son las mismas. Tienes Entonces... toda la razón también con eso. Eh, no, y, y digamos que en, en, otros, en otras ciudades o en otros países se puede por lo menos contemplar la idea de que uno puede vivir y puede uno tener un trabajo y el trabajo puede ser cualquier, cualquier cosa, pero uno tiene tiempo suficiente y tranquilidad suficiente como para, para trabajar su obra. O sea, uno dice, ay, llegué y tengo eh, viernes, sábado y domingo y porque el horario es relajado no siento que me estoy matando trabajando sino que llego a mi casa y quiero hacer mi pintura o mis dibujos o mi ilustración en el computador o lo que sea. Ese tipo de sitios existen en el mundo. Eh, entonces sí es, sí es muy distinto, eh, digamos, lo que pasa aquí en Colombia. Aquí en Colombia es difícil. Es, la, la realidad es que es difícil. Es súper difícil. Porque puede que haya como escenarios que le abren puerta a jóvenes. Eso existe. O sea, hay galerías para jóvenes... Eh, hay talleres que se abren como también como colectivos para jóvenes, eh, hay premios para jóvenes, mm. eh, hay, o sea, hay un montonón de aceptación de lo que es el arte joven y de la energía que trae el arte joven a lo que es como, digamos, este circuito más grande de arte que hay en Colombia. Eso es 100% cierto. Lo que pasa es que que existan esas cosas y vivir de ellas son dos cosas totalmente distintas. Sí. Totalmente distintas. Y yo creo que uno puede, como muchos artistas jóvenes que hacen unos esfuerzos súper bonitos, uno puede insertarse como en, esa, en ese circuito del arte eh, eh, colombiano y pueden, ellos van a exposiciones y, y son, eh, eh, hacen parte de, 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 de exposiciones colectivas que hacen en esos espacios eh, y van a premios y uno los ve como constantemente en, en, en ese tipo de, de escenarios, pero, pero eh, si uno les pregunta, pues igual el esfuerzo es gigante, igual tienen que rebuscarse todo el tiempo, eh, eh, todo, o sea, cualquier cualquier poquitico de plata que, que, que necesitan se la tienen que rebuscar y eso es lo que es muy duro uno quisiera que fuera que el mundo del arte fuera más justo y que fuera incluso más eh, benévolo con personas que están comenzando que son eso es lo que es un artista joven y por artista joven pues sí seguramente me refiero al artista que es joven en edad pero también artistas jóvenes son los que acaban, o sea, han tomado una decisión de vida después de un poco de años, como le pasa a mucha gente, que de pronto profesionalmente estaban viviendo otra vida y dijeron, no, yo siempre quise ser lo que sea, siempre quise ser escultor y, y hasta ahora como que tuve el coraje y, y me fui de mi trabajo y ahorita estoy haciendo mis esculturas y quiero, quiero vivir de esto. Ese también es un artista joven, o sea, esa persona puede que sea más vieja, pero es un artista joven. Eh, entonces, eh, realmente es, es difícil, es, es bien difícil. Eh, yo trataría de, 
pero esto no es ni una receta para nada, ni, ni una respuesta para una gran mayoría de gente tampoco. Pero yo trataría de tener algo que es súper complejo de tener cuando uno es joven y es tener como seguridad de lo que uno quiere hacer. Eh, ¿Y por qué lo digo? Porque pues, no sé, o sea, hay, hay artistas que uno a veces los conoce y son artistas jóvenes fantásticos y uno decía, uy, esta persona pinta increíble y uno los ve 10 años después y dicen, ah, no, yo no quería ser pintor. No, 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 yo no quería eso. Yo, yo estaba en ese momento, estaba ahí como como metido en la pintura, pero no, 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 yo quería hacer otra cosa. Y entonces uno dice, uy, o sea, esa es como una, eso es una realidad de lo que significa ser un artista joven, o sea, que hay veces las cosas van a cambiar, pero lo que más le puede beneficiar a uno es que uno tenga como algún grado de certeza sobre el tipo de artista que uno quiere ser y el tipo de profesión que uno quiere tener. O sea, si uno quiere... Eh, trabajar en galerías, ¿qué significa eso? O sea, si uno quiere Como que la obra... Como el tipo de camino que quiere Exacto. uno tomar, sí. Si tú desde el comienzo dices, no, yo soy una persona... Yo, por ejemplo, desde muy joven dije, yo quiero vivir de vender mis pinturas, punto. O sea, a mí no me importa que eso lo miren bien, mal, mí, no me importa, no me importa nada. Para mí sería un orgullo vivir de vender mis pinturas, de poder... Uh -huh mostrar mis pinturas y que la gente les guste y me dé plata por ellas, o sea, que, que alguien diga, oiga, eso que usted hizo me encanta a mí y venga, aquí le voy a dar plata para que usted pueda vivir y hacer más de esto, o sea, ese era mi sueño siempre, como que la gente me diera, yo al principio decía, lo que quiero es que la gente me dé suficiente plata como para que yo pueda seguir haciendo esto que me gusta, o sea, yo no quiero volverme multimillonario, yo no quiero nada, yo quiero es suficiente para seguir trabajando en lo que me gusta. Ese era como mi motorcito ahí al comienzo cuando yo era joven. Eh, pero yo tenía claro que yo quería hacer eso. Y entonces cuando uno tiene claro eso, pues uno empieza a buscar cuáles son las galerías, quiénes son las personas que compran, cómo es el mercado que maneja esa galería, el tipo de obra que se vende, qué, cuánta obra, o sea, cuando hay una exposición, cuánta obra es la que normalmente se vende, cuánta plata es la que normalmente se maneja, como que se mueve dentro de una, en una exposición, ¿Qué tiene que hacer uno como para poder acceder a, esa, a esos eh, espacios? Yo tenía eso súper claro y yo trabajé para eso, para poder llegar como a esos espacios. Eh, y cuando uno tiene las oportunidades, cuando por fin le dicen a uno, listo, usted tiene una exposición individual en tal, eh, el próximo año, pues uno se mata, o sea, uno se mata trabajando para... Nada le va a garantizar que usted va a vender todo, nada, ni siquiera la, va a vender la mitad, ni siquiera si, si hizo 20 pinturas si va a vender una, nadie le garantiza nada, nada, nada en este mundo le va a garantizar a usted que todo ese esfuerzo se lo van a recompensar, nada, o sea usted tiene que, si entró al mundo de las artes uno tiene que saber que nadie nunca, ni por pesar, ni por nada le va a decir a uno, mire tome está bien le doy plata porque usted trabajó mucho. Pues sí que tampoco, perdón. No, no, me... no, dale, dale. Meto la cucharada, pero que tampoco va a ser algo estable. Nunca. Todo el tiempo. O Usted sea, le puede ir bien un que año. Que es como, sí, entre a esta cinco galería, años pero fatal. eso no significa que esa galería va a ser como el, el lugar seguro de ahí en adelante. Exacto. O, o, uno, o uno conoce a un galerista y dice, listo, tengo mi, tengo mi cajero de por vida. O sea, tengo la persona que le voy a traer pinturas y me las va a vender. y me va, O sea, yo traigo una pintura y él me da efectivo. O incluso, o sea, si uno dice, listo, tengo un show que va a ser mío, uno no sabe si va a vender o no, no va a vender. nunca, nunca. Entonces sí, nunca. como usted que puede esa llevar, incertidumbre siempre está... Usted puede llevar a todas las personas que usted ha conocido y haberles hablado de lo que usted está haciendo y usted lleva a sus tíos, a su abuela, a todos los familiares que... Los amigos de su familia que tienen plata, los que no tienen plata... O sea, usted lleva a todo el mundo a su exposición y puede no vender nada, nada. Puede, o sea, la gente puede decirle, ah, está divino todo, felicitaciones, qué maravilla, qué chévere que esté pintando. Y usted después sale, o sea, y van 300 personas a su inauguración y se acaba la inauguración y se tomaron todo el vino y no compraron nada. O sea, y uno tiene que saber que ese es el mundo que uno escogió. O sea, uno tiene que saber que eso es. Y es súper fuerte, súper duro, porque enfrentarse a eso es súper, súper doloroso. Entonces, cuando uno toma la decisión, uno, se está, uno está aceptando todas esas cosas, todas, todas. O sea, usted está diciendo, estoy aquí para lo bueno, que es cuando me vaya bien, y estoy aquí para lo malo, que es todas esas veces que me va a poner a dudar, que no voy a tener un peso. O sea, yo muchas veces he contado esto, y esto no es mentira. O sea, la gente tiene que entenderlo. Yo, yo siento que yo he sido un pintor 
al que le ha ido muy bien y he sido muy afortunado en la vida, pero cuando Dani y yo nos conocimos, no me sobraba un peso, nada. Dani me invitaba a almorzar. Dani era la que me sacaba pues que a almorzar. Pues igual, de nuevo, no tiene nada de malo. No tiene nada. Lo pero único que estoy diciendo es que es yo no... No te sobraba, ¿no? Sino que... No, me faltaba. Cuando te entraba el pago, exacto, sabías que con eso ni siquiera te alcanzaba para cubrir las cosas que No, querías, yo tenía... O sea, yo estaba desesperado cubrir. por vender cosas porque... Porque mis gastos y mis gastos, ni siquiera, ¿cuáles gastos de...? O sea, ahorita yo me compro juguetes ahí como un niño chiquito. No, pero en ese puedo. momento era... En ese momento yo tenía pagar nada. Pagar a muy fair. En o ese sea, momento yo era como... como gastos básicos obligatorios, no, no tenías la manera no. de... No, y fue porque cuando conocí a Dani, estaba yo en un momento ahí coyuntural súper fuerte, que era que estaba dejando de trabajar con una persona con la que había trabajado como siete años que era esa persona para mí. Yo le llevaba pinturas, él me daba plata. O sea, era súper chévere la relación. Era súper básica, sí, simple. porque yo alcancé a estar cuando... Tú lo conociste. O sea, yo lo conocí sí, a él, sí, pero sí. creo que ya era como el momento de quiebre. Sí, sí. No, no duramos mucho después de eso que sí. eh, en, en terminar como esa relación. Y la relación terminó por plata, por cosas de plata, por pagos. E incluso antes de esto fue... Eh, de eso, o sea, cuando tú empezaste a darte cuenta del quiebre fue que empezaste a decir... ¿Qué hago? O sea, claro, porque yo estaba... me tengo que pellizcar y tengo que hacer algo distinto porque es que no me está alcanzando la plata. Claro, porque estaba, y me perdonan, estaba cagado del susto. Mm. Estaba cagado del susto porque no tenía nada. Yo no y tenía... porque además tienes obligaciones que no es como... Porque yo creo que es muy distinto, digamos, yo en el momento en el que nos conocimos, mis obligaciones eran... En ese momento, afortunadamente, yo estaba estudiando y a mí, mis papás nunca me pidieron un peso para pagar cosas de la universidad. Fui muy afortunada en eso. Yo trabajaba para mí, para lo que yo me quisiera comprar, para comprarme cosas de la universidad. Pero tú tenías muchas otras obligaciones que no es que tú puedas decir, no, bueno, esta, este mes no voy a salir a comer a algún lado, no. No, es que era... había pagos que tienes sí. o tienes que pagar, son yo, obligaciones. Yo me había como separado un año antes de, de conocer a, a Dani, pero yo siempre he respondido, o sea, yo adoro a mis hijos, mis hijos mm. son como, o sea, la, lo más grande que tengo en, en mi vida, digamos, mi vida como individuo, no mi vida pareja, que es mi vida pareja, pues somos Dani y yo, y es lo más grande que tengo como pareja, pero mi vida como individuo son mis hijos y, uy, mm. por Dios, yo me muero por mis hijos. No, yo... y además, a ver, yo digo, no es solo que adoras a tus hijos, sino que eres un papá muy responsable. Siempre. Muy, muy responsable sí, con yo, todo. Yo no concibo no darle a mis hijos todo lo que les pueda dar en mi vida. O sea, uh -huh. matarme por ellos, trabajar por ellos. Entonces, cuando no me estaba alcanzando nada para... Eh, de, de, o sea, y, y nada en términos de nuevo de lo que necesitaban ellos, yo estaba que me moría. Yo decía, pero ¿qué hago? ¿Qué hago? ¿Qué hago? Y, y la decisión que tomé con ayuda de Dani era como la más estúpida de todas, que era como, ¿y por qué no tratas de hacer las cosas solo? O sea, ¿por qué no solo? Pues incluso lo que tú has dicho, yo te dije, ¿y por qué no bueno, aprovechas no... la plataforma de Instagram? Sí. Bueno, y solo, solo, o sea, el solo no quiero que se, se tergiverse a, a, um, sin Dani, porque pues obviamente todo esto eran cosas no, que no, no, pero... eventualmente terminaron como en nosotros trabajando claro, nosotros claro, pero juntos. en ese momento yo no estaba siendo parte de esa ecuación. Sí. Porque es que ahorita, ahorita este trabajo es tuyo y mío, y tú sí. y yo nos sostenemos con este trabajo. Pero en ese momento yo tenía mi trabajo, sí. y tú eras el que estaba buscando un trabajo para poder pagar los gastos que tenías y todas las cosas que tenías. Entonces, en ese momento, nunca me va a sentir mal cuando tú hablas de ese momento y dices yo, porque es que en ese momento el que se estaba quedando sin la persona con la que había trabajado hace mucho tiempo eras tú. Sí. El que necesitaba la plata para pagar el colegio de tus hijos eras tú. Como que eras tú, tú, tú. Y en ese momento, pues yo me acuerdo que tú estabas en un, en un lugar como súper complicado donde Difícil. decías, es que ya no sé, no sé... No sé dónde golpear, no sé dónde pedir, no sé... Sí, porque todo, o sea, me había como acostumbrado a, a las cosas que tenía enfrente, como... Y los años, o sea, incluso me había acostumbrado como a lo poco. Entonces, si la universidad me pagaba, decía como, no, pues está bien. No me pagan bien, pero pues bueno, es mi trabajo. Y yo respeto mi trabajo y, y pues todos los trabajos son dignos y estoy aquí como quedando mis clases y... Y aquí pues tengo que quedarme y, respet y como respetar y honrar el hecho de que soy profesor y ser profesor es una cosa súper bonita. Y entonces tengo como que 
Como que yo siempre sentía, uno de artista muchas veces agacha la cabeza y así las cosas estén mal, uno dice, no, muchas gracias, no, pues sí, gracias, y no, sí, 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 mm. o sea, uno, uno como tiende... Como que todo es un favor, todo, todo, es todo un el mundo regalo, le está haciendo. Yo es... todavía siento una necesidad súper curiosa de agradecerle a todo el mundo que me compró una pintura. A todo el que me compró una pintura, yo siento que es como, oigan, de verdad, muchas gracias, o sea, yo sería como de los que les da la mano y no se la suelta y es como, gracias, gracias, no, pero pues gracias, con no. esto alimenta a mis hijos y gracias. <risa> pero le doy la mano y no se la suelta. No sé, no, no sé, no... yo estoy hablando de País Llanero, sí. pero, pero <risa> sí. la, esa es la realidad, o sea, la realidad es que va a haber, todo esto lo estoy diciendo no como por, ay, sientan pena por nosotros, no, por nosotros, no, porque nosotros nos hemos matado trabajando y pues la vida fue muy, muy querida con, con nosotros y, y nos terminó yendo muy bien. Pero, pero hubo momentos donde yo estaba súper perdido. Con todo lo que me fue bien en mi carrera, yo estaba súper perdido porque yo no sabía qué hacer. Yo, no, yo decía, yo no tengo nada más. Como pues que no incluso, tengo salidas. Incluso lo que tú dices de el estar perdido, después tú y yo decidimos hacer este proyecto. Sí. Pero lo decidimos sin ninguna certeza de nada. Nada. Podía y haber yo sido... había renunciado a mi trabajo. Sí. Estábamos ya viviendo los dos juntos. Sí. Entonces, tú habías renunciado a tu trabajo, yo sí. renuncié a mi trabajo, estábamos viviendo juntos. La peor idea del mundo. O sea, <risa> la, el peor momento para y tomar dijimos, un riesgo. Hagamos un canal de YouTube. Sí. Sí. <risa> sí. Pero, pero es ese momento de incertidumbre. Y digamos que tú puedes hablar de eso en varios momentos de tu vida, pero... Yo cuando pienso en ese momento a mí me daba muchos nervios y yo decía, yo confío en lo que vamos a hacer y confío en que la razón por la que lo queremos hacer es muy chévere. Y eso, lo difícil a veces es que no porque lo, la intención de uno sea buena, significa que las cosas se le van a dar como uno quiere. Entonces siempre estaba esos nervios de decir, no sé si esto vaya a salir, pero pues igual le tenemos que meter toda porque es que esto no era algo que pudiéramos decir no. Eh, vamos a hacer este proyecto como lo pensamos al principio y como lo hicimos al principio que eran cinco videos cada semana editados y que a la vez yo dijera no, yo voy a tener otro trabajo y tú vas a tener otro trabajo no, imposible, es Porque que no nunca nos... hubiéramos tenido ni no el tiempo, ni tiempo, la energía, ni nada exacto, para hacer no nos eso. daba el tiempo para tener fines de semana mm. entonces no nos iba a dar el tiempo para tener otro trabajo pero son esos momentos de incertidumbre donde algo dentro de uno le dice no, pero es que esto es más fuerte porque yo Sé que lo que yo quiero hacer y mi trabajo, o sea, mi trabajo quiero que sea este y mi futuro quiero que sea este. Y yo creo que tú y yo nos enfocamos en eso y trabajamos durísimo para crear como todos los videos. Pero que era están chistoso, en el canal. es como, Dani, ¿tú sabes editar videos? No. No. Y yo no, pero y, yo aprendo. Y yo era como... Y yo ¿Y he para... hablado enfrente de una cámara, no, nunca, yo... me muero, me cago, o sea, yo no sé, yo no puedo, sí. no puedo. Sí, sí, sí. Y es como, listo, perfecto, listo. estamos... Listo, y tenemos los tenemos... programas para editar, no. Nada. ¿Y cámara? Ay, Más o menos, va a tocar comprarla. Consigamos la cámara, listo. Y bueno, ¿y cómo vamos a hacer? Porque sí, la pintura, pero ¿y qué? Que es de... Pues tocará hablar, ¿cierto? O ¿cómo se vende? Y listo, tuve que irme a... a... Literalmente tuve que irme a Estados Unidos abrir una cuenta a organizar todo para poder que pudiéramos recibir la plata por, por si vendíamos sí. alguna pintura. Y no, y además después es, bueno, pero tenemos que tener una página. Y tú no, pues yo tengo una página, volvámosla a la página del canal. O sea, todo fue de decir, no sé cómo, pero estoy dispuesto a aprender cómo porque hay algo que quiero, que es lo que tú decías, que yo creo que es súper importante uno... Así, en el momento todo esté súper nublado, uno tener como las, la mira en algo. Sí. Como decir, es que voy a pasar como toda esta tormenta porque yo sé que esto es lo que yo quiero y yo sé que vale la pena como todos estos dolores de cabeza por los que voy a tener que pasar porque eso es lo que quiero. Pero la realidad era que todas esas cosas las podíamos tener claras y nos podía haber ido como un culo. Sí, Qué pena también. De nuevo. Que eso es o lo sea, podíamos haber decía. dicho como, hola a todos. Este es nuestro canal de YouTube, bienvenidos. Sí, y, y después era blog, mi mamá dislike, comentando. Mi mamá, como, o la gente como mamá, pésimo. De mi mamá. Sí, pésimo, Coquito, estás pintando horrible. Sí. Coquito, se te Daniela, suena horrible. Es esa edición? No se ve nada, se ve solo tu calva cuando pintas. O sea, hubiera podido ser mil cosas que eran lo peor, que hubiera sido como... Y, y yo le decía a Dani, Dani, tenemos que, o sea, creerle a esto 
así no lo vea nadie. O sea, tenemos que seguir pintando y seguir haciendo videos como unos idiotas. Pues es que teníamos que si creernos nos una nosotros persona o si nos para que mil. alguien más nos creyera. Sí. Porque eso no era... O sea, primer video... Yo me acuerdo subimos el primer video y yo estaba súper asustada. Sí. Porque yo decía... Lleva 20 minutos publicado... Tiene ah, mi sí, like. refresh, refresh. Tiene mi like, tiene mi like. Y yo estaba súper nerviosa porque yo decía, no, las cosas de edición. Y tú hablaste divino. A mí ese video todavía me encanta porque creo que ese video habla de como esos nervios parezco, del principio. Parezco secuestrado, yo, yo lo <risa> he dicho mil veces. Además, tú fuiste Hola, divino ¿cómo porque están? hiciste como un script, mm. como ideas de lo que querías hablar. Y luego de los nervios no viste las ideas. No pude ver nada, no. Pero era como... Um, ah, so sí, I no, no, secuestrado Me obligaron Una reunión familiar que me no, obligaron a hablar muy lindo Y a mí me parece muy lindo como poder revisitar eso Y decir Es que, o sea, estamos acá ahorita Y ese fue el inicio de todo sí. O sea, y esa cara tuya de Como incomodidad, nervios Culillo era, 100% todo. Pues eso era lo que, en lo que estábamos tú y yo Estábamos sí. en un apartamento tú y yo viviendo Los dos sin trabajo los dos con una idea de hacer un canal de YouTube de pintura. Mm, todas desde todas ceros. opciones que suenan magníficas. O sea, sí. o sea, todas opciones que uno dice, sí, voy a cambiar mi vida por esto. Sí, sí, sí. No, eso, entonces, eh, independientemente de donde uno, del momento en el que uno esté en la vida, mm, esas, ese tipo de cosas necesitan que uno diga, o sea, es que no estoy haciendo nada ajeno a lo que es la naturaleza del mundo del arte, que es que no me garantiza nada, nada. O sea, el mundo del arte está como, es súper como atento a caerle uno encima y a pisotearle el resto de sueños y a meterle el resto de dudas a uno en la cabeza y a hacerlo sentir a uno que no vale nada. O sea, ese es, el mundo del arte es súper es bueno para hacer que uno se sienta como un ser insignificante. Pero nunca que le dé a uno como claridad o fuerza o coraje o cosas así súper chéveres. No, eso es jodidísimo. Encontrar eso en el arte es difícil. O sea, toca trabajar resto para encontrar ese tipo de cositas. Entonces, eh, lo, que, lo que sí diría es que por más, por más de que parezca, parezca que uno, uno está como viviendo una vida como exitosa o que no, no, no tiene que lidiar con muchos problemas... La realidad es que la, la apuesta que uno está haciendo constantemente con su propio arte, con las cosas que uno quiere decir, con los proyectos que uno tiene, la apuesta siempre es casi que todo o nada. O sea, es muy raro como conocer a alguien en arte que sea súper tibio, que diga, no, pues ahí yo quería hacer pinturas, pero como que no, y ahí vendí como tres, pero estoy feliz viviendo. Y es como, no, eso... O sea, es, es muy difícil que, que... Lo que más oye uno es como un compromiso enorme, o sea, gente que de nuevo le apuesta todo, le apuesta a todos, le mete todo, le mete todo y está diciendo, pues sí, o sea, si me estrello y, y me rompo y me quiebro es porque, porque no se dieron las cosas, pero pues... Pero por lo menos le di mi 500 Sí, no, no quiero nunca sentir en mi interior que, que no le metí todo lo que le pude haber metido, o sea, sí. que, que me faltó fue porque yo quise. Entonces, yo, yo diría que eso es como lo lo más grande, o sea, la, la lección más grande que le puede dar a uno la vida es, es esa, como que hoy está, y, la, y, es, y es cierta para, para este momento nuestro, por ejemplo, a nosotros nos va muy bien ahora, pero, pero eso todo se puede acabar, todo, todo esto se puede acabar en, en nada, en, en un mes, todo puede cambiar, todo. Y pues que incluso dentro de lo que es nuestro canal ya han habido cambios. Sí. Porque lo que tú siempre dices como de estar en constante cambio y estar como pensando cómo puedo acoplar esto a mi vida, pero cómo también puedo hacer que esto funcione. Y que siga. O y sea, que y siga, exacto. Como que se desarrolle, que siga. Uno tiene que estar súper encima. O sea, exacto. no lo puede... Uno no lo puede coger el momento donde uno no vendió nada y necesitaba plata. O sea, uno siempre tiene que estar anticipándose a ese momento donde las cosas no pueden funcionar. Sí. Y siempre, siempre estar adelante de... O sea... Me está, esto está súper chévere y nos está funcionando. Bueno, o sea, chévere, tómese dos segundos como para, para vivir en ese momento y disfrutarlo. Y lo que sigue es, usted tiene que estar pensando en ese 
próximo paso, pero no porque sea como una cosa incans, como un, un no, que mamera, es que el mundo del arte entonces es, es, una, es una cosa agotadora porque no nos da respiro, no, sino que si usted quiere siempre estar como, como listo para esos momentos que pueden ser difíciles, para esos momentos que no funcionan, pues necesitan que usted anticipe esos momentos, necesitan que usted esté súper, súper listo para cuando lleguen esos momentos, porque eso es lo que le enseña a uno la vida, esos momentos van a llegar, o sea, siempre van a llegar, nadie, a nadie nunca le va bien todo el tiempo, todo el tiempo, por más de que le hagan a uno creer eso, a nadie nunca le va bien todo, todo el tiempo, todo el tiempo no, o sea, uno tiene momentos donde uno le va súper, súper bien, yo tuve momentos muy joven cuando me estaba yendo súper bien, y después tuve momentos donde todo se allana y después tuve momentos donde se me acabó todo. Entonces, esa, es, esa lección de vida es importantísima. Pero no le sirve a uno de nada esa lección de vida si uno no hace nada. O sea, si uno no aprendió nada. Y, y lo que yo aprendí es que toca estar adelante de las cosas. O sea, uno tiene que... Si a uno lo cogen las cosas como... O sea, si uno está trabajando y uno dice «Uy, se me va a venir una temporada difícil». Y uno dice, y uno todos los días se levanta y dice, uy, sí, lo que se viene es difícil. Y se va a dormir y después se levanta, uy, sí, lo que sí. se viene es difícil. Lo que se viene es difícil. Y uno pues no está haciendo se nada. Viene es una avalancha. No hizo, exacto, y uno no hizo nada al respecto. Pues sí, pues, pues tenía razón de que era difícil, pero usted no hizo nada. No hizo nada. Solo se quedó como dándose la razón. O la vida le va a dar la razón como diciendo, oiga, sí, si era difícil, pues usted es una hueva porque no hizo nada. No ajustó nada, no buscó otras alternativas, no se rebuscó nada o no agachó la cabeza y dijo, no, este es el momento en donde me toca buscar ese otro trabajo porque este no me está dando, pero no me importa, o sea, voy como tengo un plan a largo plazo y sé que voy a salir adelante y este es solo para, para aguantar este, este momento que va a ser difícil. Eh, eso, eso para mí es importantísimo, importantísimo. Pero bueno, no sé si estamos como hablando mucho y además íbamos a terminar hace... Eh, no, pues, horas. te cuento, Cuéntamelo. Eh, ya acabo de revisar sí, señora, hace pena. un tiempo que este, después del video de las 24 horas, es el live stream más largo. ¿Qué hemos hecho? Vamos para 5 horas. What the sí. F? Sí, tú has estado eh, lorito parlanchino hoy, sí. mi coquín, pero yo feliz, yo siempre feliz de escucharte. Y piensa que el... el eh... Podcast que hice con John era más, más largo. largo. Sí. <risa> bueno, acabemos ya entonces. No, so, no, 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 pero no te estoy tratando de. Ya, ya, no, ya el culo sí. lo tengo cuadrado. Sí, ay, qué pena, se le bloqueó el micrófono a Nicolás, no sé qué pasa. Sí. Listos. Bueno, eh, voy a leer rápido. Yes. <risa> a ver, dice eh, David López, que era quien hizo la pregunta. Sí, David, es como, no, dice, qué pena. Vivo en Cali, estoy a punto de graduarme de artes en la Javeriana Cali. Hice dos semestres de intercambio en Javeriana, Bogotá. Sí, de verdad que gracias, amigos. Siempre que puedo pregunto consejos a les maestres porque nunca sobran. Siento que ine inevitablemente este proceso se trata de mucha resiliencia uh -huh. y perseverancia. 100%. Nicolás, cuando pueda comprarte una pintura voy a dormir con ella todas las noches. Eso Sos suena re friki, eh, David. <risa> eh, David, eh, País Llanero gracias. y Nicolás. Un threesome fantástico. No, three, Nicolás. Eh, Emily Painting Elk said Emily. gracias and a flower. <risa> y Camila Ogorman dice, eh, a mí me pasa lo mismo, porque otros trabajos no tienen ningún problema en cobrar y una como artista siente que están haciendo un favor al comprarte una obra. Sí. Y después dice, qué alegría que funciona el proyecto, muchos corazones, y dice... No pareció que pasaba eso en el primer video. Siempre dieron una imagen re profesional. Yo me imaginaba que Dani tenía conocimientos de cine o algo. No, no. O sea, ni de, éramos... ni de estudiar cine ni no, de películas. Todo, todo era cine, pegado con babas. Nada, se, yo, sí. sí, todo era. Un trabajo increíble muy hicieron hechizo. siempre, dice Camila. Muchas muy linda, gracias. Muy querida. Y eh, lo había dicho Irving hace un rato. Y sí, creo que era la manera de decir llevábamos bastante, Irvin dice wow, ¿qué tal chicos? aún están en vivo, ja, ja, ja. me ocupé un rato y aún siguen sí. que desocupe tan sí, hijo de sí, madre, sí. y Kakeiro dice estuvo tremenda la conversación, quedó increíble Coco, y Muy dos lindos, abrazos gracias. dos aplausos, y yes. es que me estoy saltando 
Eh, Sofía Centurión dice, ay chicos, yo estoy feliz porque llegué a saludarlos. Está quedando increíble la pintura. Acabo de llegar. No, Nicolás, ya cogiste la No, 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 dos segundos. Acabo de llegar de la Facu e hicimos un, entre comillas, dibujo en espacio con alambre. Estuvo súper interesante. Ah, es estuvo muy re interesante. Sí, esos son re bonitos. Y dice, qué bien que empezaron y qué suerte que me encontré con su canal. Qué lindo, gracias. Sofía. Es súper valioso su trabajo. Muy querido. Entonces, bueno, con eso... Eh, nos despedimos. Sí. Yes. Ah, bueno, y JM Esteves dice, gracias por contar esos momentos, Dani y Nicolás. Qué pena si no leí el resto de comentarios, pero es que me conozco a Nicolás y ya vais a cambiar de brocha y a seguir. Entonces, eh, con 4 horas 49 minutos. Yeah. Eh, nos despedimos de este live stream. Yes. So, thank you everyone thank for joining you. us. That was a, a long Spanish uh, session to close it. But, yeah. um, but, yeah. but there that's were us. also very long uh, English uh, parts yes. of it. A lot of Spanish, a lot of English. Yeah, always. We always mix it up. And a lot of talking. Yes. Well, that's a, that's a textbook um, OPL. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Again, remember, if you haven't subscribed, you can don't, don't uh, look at me, subscribe, uh, don't. <laughs> subscribe to our channel. Yes, please. And if you want to, you can ring the bell so you can know when we're live. We, we don't okay. know why today there was... Um, It was not working, but, but I trust have to the bell. say... Yeah. Trust the bell. I have to say there's a lot of people saying that it's been working great for them to know that we're live because we always, we always try to be here around the same time. We try. But emphasis on around. And so, try. And try. Yeah. So, um, Nicolás, you... You're painting like a, little, a part I, that you <laughs> weren't even. No, no, because I, you know, I was very curious to see how this gray would uh, fit into the uh, the rest of the painting. Mm -hmm. If it would look good or or just kind of out of place. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious. Uh, yes. So. Um, mm, yeah, but no, go ahead, because I don't want to cut you, Nicola Chito. No, 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 no. So that, let's leave it. Yeah, that part is weird, but I don't care. I mean, let's leave it. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Again, thank you. Um, if you're new, we'd be happy to have you. Happy to uh, have you. Here with us. Mm -hmm. We do live streams Mondays through Thursday. And um, we have Instagrams. That's Nicolas Instagram. And this is my Instagram. And we have a web page, our painted so, oh My God, you've been talking like, oh, I mean, yeah. you've been saying goodbye no, for like now, three now hours. Now I can Jesus talk. Jesus Christ. Now I can talk after my your. My God, can we just like say goodbye? And after your 10th monologue. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us, and we'll see you. I, fe I feel like I could be like a perfect villain. You know how they talk too much and then they kill them because they just, you know, talked about the plan. Everything that we're doing. No, I think now you're showing that you've started talking nonsense because <laughs> you've been talking for a lot. So, again, thank you, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes.